Okay. We are rolling live. Give me a idea if you guys got me, if you have me loud and clear, if you can hear me. Trying to get Eagle on here as well. Eagle Eye Shooting. He's on his way home from a job. Andy gave me the third thumb. Killer. Yeah, it looks like um, Eagle Eye may be in and out. I have a couple invites out there, so I don't know if Uncle Jim is going to be out and about, but this is what we're doing, folks. We're just going back over. I had a couple issues with my scale not reading it was drifting really bad so what i did was i went in and i uh took pure uh windex that is got a hundred percent almost ammonia in it and i spray it onto a paper towel and i wipe everything down on the inside of my scale the load sensor tray, the inside, everything, the pan, anything that touches. And basically, I've been watching it for about 10 minutes here, and it's been on zero. So we're going to go ahead and recalibrate it. Take the pan off of there. Go ahead and hit zero. Get this cow weight out. Hold down the calibration button till it says cow 50. Put that weight in the center. Hit the cow button again. Not touching nothing. Boom. Hits cow 50. Let it stabilize. Pull the cow weight off. Go ahead and re zero. Put the, the pan on there. 106.6. The cow zero. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. All right. Now grab a piece of brass. And we should have this already full. That yeah, looks pretty full. See how much this is going to fill this little baby bad boy up right there. Little micro bullets is what I call 223s. Okay, 25.1. Now what we'll do is... Oh, man. A big pain in the balls. Let's get this. The, the, the thing here is to have everything in like a an area that you can like I'm gonna this is cramped for me, so here goes the damn hell from scale. What happens is this freaking vent right above me here is enough to just piss a man completely off. It starts blowing down on my scale. So it's a tenth heavy, 25.3. That's acceptable behavior. Twenty-five point 
25.2. Let's see. I vibrate it and throw it on here a little bit. So it's right there at 25.2. So it's right where it needs to be. I was getting really worried earlier. My scale was going all over the freaking place. Now it's not. Now it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing. And what I'm doing is I'm just going over here and I'm putting a bullet in it every time. You know, that way I don't have a bunch of cartridge cases sitting with no bullets sitting in the top of them. What I do is after I get the bullet started into the um, casing, I'll back off of it, give the cartridge casing about a quarter turn, and then go all the way back down nice and smooth and slow till it stops, and then nice and smooth and slow until the handle is all the way in its upright position, not stopping one continuous movement. That way your bullet stays concentric and does not walk around in there or wobble or do anything goofy which looks pretty good right there and then we'll go ahead and throw a medium heavy crimp on it like i do all my ar-15 cartridges because let's put it this way if you're shooting this uh, a rifle round out of an ar-15 it's a very violent loading cycle for this gun. So any of your direct gas impingement guns, like your Mini 14, um, your M16, all of those guns are super rough, violent even to say on loading. Okay. All right. Go over here and just, good Lord, knock about 30 things as I come down here. Let's see if that thing's working. Holding steady. Sometimes that little varget, she likes to jump. Okay, so what I don't like about this setup right here is I'm so cramped on this right side.
Yeah, that's kind of crazy. That thing's jumping around an awful lot. We'll stop it there, and we'll see what this thing is going to tell me right here. And this thing's jumping all over the place. And I'm not liking that. I'm trying to see, yeah, there's definitely air blowing down right there. 25.1. As soon as I take that up, so it starts moving. So we're gonna. A perfect charge. Okay, now I'll see what we're going on. Yeah, I just checked myself out there for a second. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gents. Let's go up in here. Give it a little touch. Then go down. Turn the case a quarter turn. Go all the way down one smooth stroke. Stop, hold it, back it off one smooth up, not real fast. Tell you if you'll fill the bullet. Withdraw from the seating stem and just keep going some one smooth action. Now, why it's still in there, turn your turret to the factory crimp die. Run it up in there. Give it a little factory crimp. Always bring it down. Turn it a quarter. Run it back up. Give it a little squeeze there. Nice little squeezy deezy. Give me an overall length here. I should be, I'm trying for 220. 
2204. So I'm four thousandths long, and that's how I've been on every cartridge. This um, bullet seeding competition, Redding seeding die, is one of the best in the business. It just keeps knocking them out. So let me see who's out here in the audience and see if anybody's asking for anything. And that's uh, Uncle John, Aab, West Covina Dodge. Hello, brother. What is going on? Andy, 79Z28. What is going on, my brother? Ladies and gentlemen, Vanessa. Hey, girl. You guys just hanging out watching me be stupid, loading some 223 Remington. Yeah, I had a little bit of an issue with my scale earlier. It was jumping all over the place, so I wiped it down with some 100% um, ammonia. And basically... It settled down, <clears throat> stopped walking, and <clears throat> so I'm just trying to drop. I'm using Varget powder, and I'm dropping. Well, I'm trying to drop 25.2 grains. That would be the ideal, Shh, the ideal. But with everything going on right now, I'm 24.8 in here. And it's probably because the Varget is getting a little bit light in the... Uh, powder dispenser that's okay we will pull the uh, little trickler over here and we'll trickle a little bit down in here All right, little trickle out of the way there. See how much powder we got in here. We have 25.1, which is a tenth of a grain short, so we'll just snake this in over here drop a little bit of there we go not much didn't need very much at all and it looks like we got 25.2 the master blaster all right 25.2 that's what i like to see And we're dropping another bullet coming over here. Guys, we are using Hornady. They're in the description on one of the videos, but they're 500 packs of Hornady 55 grain full metal jacket with a cantalure boat tails. The same bullet they use in the M193 military cartridge round I'm a big fan of that round because of its velocity and its able its capability of piercing light armor 
even though the 62 grain has a tungsten steel penetrator tip, I have noticed out of a 20 inch barrel AR-15 that the 55 grain bullet shot out of a 1 in 12 rifling twist rate will actually penetrate more plate steel than a 62 grain penetrator will. out of a 20 inch barreled gun 20 inches versus 20 inches going in there for a little little squeezy deasy a little factory crimpy and then you can run your fingers right down the sides of this thing and it's as smooth as butter and you can see that that's a sexy bullet all right let's see take a peeky just loading up see is Let's see what's going on. Put a large hammer on the bench and give the Yeah, we're just reloading a little bit of ammunition. Right now, I'm just weighing some charges.
I thought somebody was going to jump on here so it wouldn't be like me just sh talking shit to everybody, but I guess that's the way everybody wants to be tonight. It must be get a little piece of ass Friday night. I don't know how this is going on here. Yeah, 25.2 on the dot. This is taking forever. It's like I really want to be uh, seating bullets and just, you know, using a powder dispenser. This is too much like precision ammo. This is what I need an RL 1100 for. I could just pour bullets into a big old dispenser, pour cartridge casings into a big old dispenser, and just start cranking. That's what I want to be doing. I mean, this is fine for bolt action rifle rounds that I'm going to, you know, be shooting one hole at 100 yards. But for plinking ammo, this is driving me freaking nuts. But it is funny when these guys go to shoot this stuff down at the range and they're like, that shoots better than my my uh, um, gold medal match, um, federal. And I'm like, yeah. Boy, that, that's a whole lot of red in that table. Am I muted? For an like Crank, you see this video. Too much red for him. Hello? <laughs> What's up? That's up, Echo. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Jesus, okay. man. My, I guess my headset was uh, not on. Well, believe uh, that shit the whole time i was talking like an idiot <laughs> i say that's, that's a whole lot of red in that table don't, don't let crank you see that <laughs> what's up everyone we all love cranky you all know that what now what's a, what, what cranky don't like red nah, you don't like <laughs> it hey. especially when it's got an l e e on it <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I've never met you, Eagle Eyes. Good to see you. Hey. I'll speak to you and say hey. I oh, appreciate it, brother. Hey, good to meet you, man. Yeah, good to meet you. I'm out here saving the railroad. Boy, he's getting Crack Creek all day long in the Arizona heat. 
Mm-hmm. Not home right now. Yeah, I hear it gets hot out there. Yeah, well, you know, Eagle Eye, he uh, he models for the railroad. <laughs> he does the billboards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where we're going with that one. <laughs> no, he does all that that publicity type work, you know, with the bathing suits and the the wit with the water wings. I get the skinniest sea string possible. I jump right on that billboard. Yeah, I want to see. It. Yeah, I want to see something, big boy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's let's get let's get in the reloading shack. AKA the he shed. So, what in the hell was going on earlier? I don't no. know, man. Did I miss something? No, I, I don't understand why when certain people are trying to dis I, I don't know. It, it, maybe when certain people try to explain something, and I and I and I've and I've caught myself doing this before, so it's not like I'm ragging on anybody. I'm just telling. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when people go to explain something, they make it ten times harder than it needs to be. Right. We have a bunch of people on a panel of different viewpoints on how to do something. It can get confusing. I think what we need for folks that are trying to get into this whole this whole art, so to say, hobby. Is to have somebody all on the same page with the same subject because throwing a bunch of information out there. I mean, I've done it. You know, we're all the same. You know, I guess boat. You throw yeah, a bunch of yeah. Out there. You go know, just confuse anybody trying to get into this hobby. So keep it simple, stupid, right? That's what I've been told. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, reloading is actually pretty simple to most folks. Mm-hmm. They're only shooting out the five hundred yards or seven hundred yards. You don't need any of that. What do you call it? Science rocket stuff to get into. Get yourself a cheap press, reloading right. manual, and a good mentor. You're good to go. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. That's what I have noticed. Let's see. Why is this thing? Let's see here. How many I got a charger. Plug that in. Hmm. Let me switch over to my laptop. All right. What are you doing, AR? Uh, getting over here on your chat. I was pulling it up under a YouTube side to see how many you got watching. But oh, I got I got the big three. You got three? I, I well, maybe I lost them. I'm trying. I at least got one because I, I think I'm signed on watching myself. Well, you know, I like to watch myself. Gives me hours of entertainment. Okay. Now I'm in the side chat, the YouTube side. Okay. Six watching. Four are watching, she says. I see six, but that may have changed lag time. <laughs> What's up, Vanessa? Hey, Miss Vanessa, what in the heck are you up to in this evening? I don't like that side. It's lags. I don't like the yard stream side. Where did I go? Yeah. What are you looking for? I'm looking for the yard stream thing. It's just friggin' browsers got so crazy. I'm trying to get back in it. <laughs> Here, hang on a second. It shows only two open. What the crap? Did Kenny fall out? I'm not sure. I I think I fell out <laughs> here. No, nah, you're still there. Yeah, I know I'm still here, but the browser just you're, I got the tabs just... open in the bottom. Yeah, it's not even there in the Streamyard backside. Even though I'm talking to you, it won't show up on the friggin' taskbar down here. Hold up, top. Here you go. Now I got it. Whoa! Come here, you rascal. That's... Is that okay. thing trying to get on you? Is it trying to get you? It's got oh, weird yeah. lately, man. It ain't because I'm not. Uh, granted, it, it's. I've been on Google, man, for probably eight years now, maybe ten. And I've used Chrome for a long time, so I'm pretty so, familiar with it. Kenny's on his uh, phone. He's gonna try to get in on his uh, his um, laptop because uh, it gets on, a I'm little. 
I'm gonna go out a minute. I'll be right back. Where are you going? You going to Seven Eleven? Get me, a, get me a Slurpee. Yeah, I'm gonna go take care of business. I'll be right back, and I'll right. sign back in with a link. Hang on. Give, give me, a, give me a Slurpee. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, putting these bullets in. That's all I can do, fellas. Get a little start on her. Give her a little reach around. Get her going the other way. Let her stop wiggling like a 12-year-old. And get that thing in. Here we go. Nice, smooth, all the way to the bottom. Stop. Hold it. Come back up. Nice. Little release on the bullet. Keep going. Smooth. By the numbers, and we'll go ahead and roll it over here to that factory crimp die. Give her a little, little crimpy poo. Pull her out and give her a little feel. She feels good. She feels good. Now these were going all two two o four, so we'll see what this one's at. Two two oh two. Oh, let me get this thing. Two two oh one five. So I must have got it a little bit closer now. Yeah, I must have dialed it in on just a little tiny bit to get me in that little bit of Barbados shellacking. All right. Oh, no, 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 no. I just had a huge boo-boo. Yeah, it's starting to get tiring, I think. This is, I just made a little moose steak. A little moose stapa. Nothing major, but nothing I want to do again. So what we're going to do is... Dump some powder out of here. Then what I got to do is go back and I'm going to have to vacuum all this shit. Yeah, that was a catastrophic, almost, almost a complete retard maneuver there. It was almost a complete failure. What a pain in the ass that was.
Yeah, I know. I'm like, is there even anybody watching? Six watching. I had a huge... Is there anybody in the side? Probably not. Uncle Jim's probably trying to be like, hey, dude, you're... I'm like, yeah, I had a big spill of some powder. Uncle Jim, I'm trying to clean shit up. Link, bitch. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I thought I sent you one. All right, hold on here. Let me get you. Let me get the the big man a link here. Let me see here. Compose a little message to All right, Uncle Jim. Coming your way, sir. Hello. Sorry. No worries, dude. I had a huge catastrophe. Never catastrophe. Nah, it's just a, a an inconvenience. An inconvenience. Awesome. So, the topic tonight: two twenty three reloading. Right? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. All right. I saw you doing some brass brass prep, and you're you're talking about going with the um a Dylan like one ten or eleven hundred. Well. If if I was wanting to turn out large amounts of plinking ammunition that I would consider decent enough quality to where I'm not going to have, you know, a bunch of just a, I'm not going to have a bunch of ammunition that's not going to function the way it's supposed to. Right. Right. But I mean, the thing is. Do you really need that much ammunition? Uh, is it a waste? It, it, do I? It, it, I mean, am I gonna shoot that much? It's just all these things I'm thinking about. I would say that 223 cases, clinking ammo, is probably the most time-consuming ammo to make because of the primer pocket issue. Yeah. So you really want to mitigate the fact of being behind that damn press and bust out that ammunition as best as possible, as, as accurate as possible. So I personally use the uh, the Lee um, Pro 1000 or the Auto Breach Lock Pro. The only thing missing on that is a primer pocket swager. And that's where the uh, Lee APP press comes into handy, or specifically the ACP press. I can swing down and show you guys. The ACP actually has a uh, spring loaded collet, which is another $65, $70 investment. But honestly, right. it's tremendously sped up the process of processing 300 blackout brass, processing 223 plat brass, 9 millimeter, all the all the brass that you just want to get out the way, get it all processed, press your clinking ammo. Um, you know, Somebody that's new in the reloading, I don't recommend going into a progressive press or going into that process until you're, you're confident and knowing that you can get the steps of powder charge in your case, primary in your case. And, uh, either one of those two could give you a cash drop, well, not a cash drop, but a, a big issue downrange. So they're trying to get a squip out of your gun or, <laughs> or figure out like, why your ammunition ain't going off and you're at the fire so I guess we go over some tools that you're using so I see you got a, a turret press oh yeah I've been using a turret for years man 
It's just an old school favorite for the 223 cartridge. Yeah. I mean, 100 rounds within, what, 40 minutes or so? Yeah. Yeah, as long as you don't make huge powder spills all over the the place. Um, I, I got that, that mech. I got that mech sitting here on the floor. Awesome. You know, I haven't touched mine in over two months now. <laughs> Why? I've been using this uh, different press from Harold's Precision. I'll show you. Oh, you, you caught me eating breakfast with AR again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uncle Jim's yeah. on here, too. Yeah. This is a turf press that I'm using from Harold's Precision, but that's mostly because I reload a lot of the uh, bolt action stuff. Why are you using a turret instead of just a single stage? I've been trying it out um, to see if it speeds up the process of loading. Obviously, I'm building a crap ton of rifle, so 6mm, 6 Creedmoor, or 6 millimeter Creedmoor, 6 GT, 6 Arc, all of those cartridges. If I could put the size and dies all in one turret, have it all yeah. set up, it really speeds up the process. So that's why I'm using it right now. But the Mech Marksman Press is by far, uh, it's got the best mechanical leverage and consistency out of that press, out of all the presses that I have. Hmm. You tell, you tell uh, I, I eat breakfast with a <laughs> grease rag, <laughs> towels. I just said pot stickers. Hey, Kenny. Hey, AR. And hey, buddy. Hey, hey, hey buddy. buddy. <laughs> you had pot stickers. I fucking love pot stickers. They're delicious. Oh, yeah. That's the closest thing to Chinese around here. Yeah. I just ate sausage and egg. Kenny, what did you have, you sweaty monster? I got uh, I got Costco chicken nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. Costco's got some good pizza. Costco's got good food. I mean, as far as their steaks and their fish. Costco's got enough food for two boys that I have in my family. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. You know, Costco sales is number five in pizza sales in America. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Costco's about, what is it, dear, an hour away, hour and a half? We don't have a card, but she mm -hmm. goes with her friend. Mm -hmm. I knew the CEO and his family. I got good stories. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw the uh, manager there. Uh, I don't remember what Larry was, but uh, back in the uh, 2003, a car, his wife a car. Kitty's yeah, the, the son as the CEO was a little bit of a handful. <laughs> uh, Liberal company, but uh, I don't. Uh, wow, I don't know if they're liberal, but you know, they typically they donate. Yeah, I think they typically donate a lot, but uh, they, they keep it kind of quiet. Seem to. So. Dead. He passed like away. It. Oh wow. Who? Ah, uh, my wife says he's dead now. Hmm. I I do their house every couple months. Yeah. Hmm. But the son was a handful. He. He coughed up some pot from smoking out his window in his bedroom and stuck it all over my paint job on his window. Because <laughs> it was oil-based and took all night to dry. Oh, that sneaky little sucker. Oh, yeah. Oh, Wife yeah. is awesome. Wife was awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know, Echo. I hate I hate making two twenty three ammo. <laughs> <laughs> it's a chore, and it's a pesky little round. It's almost mm -hmm. yeah. I just I just buy it by the case when it's cheap. Mm -hmm. 
You won't get the accuracy, but it does what it does. Mm -hmm. I got a cat. One oh nines, you know, you can find SS one hundred nines at Walmart back in two years ago. Sucks now. How about four hundred and twenty round, four something rounds of a green penetrator? One hundred twenty five dollars shipped, free from uh, Midway a few years ago, a couple years back. Yeah, um, I actually got a pretty good plunking load with the. Uh, I guess for me, it works out on my gun, but for a cast lead bullet, the Lee bullet, the fifty five grain cast lead with H three twenty two at eighteen grains. That shoots fairly fairly well for me. How hard is the BHM? Um, at least eighteen. Yeah. The uh, water quench will weights. Um, obviously, if you powder coat it, you want to let it sit for. What I do is I let it sit powder coating for an hour, which uh, when you mm -hmm. know, hardens the, the lead a little bit, then water quench afterwards. So I get upwards of twenty to twenty one BHM right away. Wow. Hmm. Echo, have you heard from Willie Bullet Man? Willie? No, not today. And Jamie was trying to, thought he was going to jump in the chat, and he never did. And he didn't come in the backside either. Yeah, I don't know what the hell happened to him. Hmm. Sometimes shit blows up at Willie's house. <laughs> with the new baby and stuff being there and all that. I could imagine that's just a nightmare. Yeah, I've seen the baby. Video. <laughs> what was that? What? Squeaking? Oh, you got a squeaky chair? Oh, man, I want one of those. No, it's a, it's a mop. I'm mopping my shop. You're mopping in a live chat. I want to speak Yeah, to of course, man. I got, I got, I got gunpowder spilt. Oh. I need to get it up so that I don't have a a problem. What? It, what is this? A janitor's? <laughs> Dude, listen, listen to old Jim. That's a good one. Jesus Christ, he's like, what is this? A janitor's chat? <laughs> They're gonna, are you gonna show floor floor scrubbing and cleaning? I'm like, on the, for the next for the next hundred rounds, we're gonna wax. Let's see that mop. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna wax, and I'm gonna show you guys footwear for cleaning. Appropriate footwear. Hey, at least I don't tell you what you have to talk about. Otherwise, I'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my oh, God! How vagina is that? Where is Jaina? Where is Jaina? He's got a job to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh well. Sorry. So what have you been? What have you guys been up to today? Anything? Got this barrel blank. I got to go turn, but I keep getting called out for work. I'm not even supposed to be on call this weekend. Mm. Mm. Oh. Me, I'm trying to stay out of the heat. I, I, I popped a few shots, and it's just too hot. I don't know how Kenny does it. <laughs> yeah, how, hard, yeah. how, how, how hot is it, Uncle Jim? Where you at? 100. Oh. 99. Yeah. yeah. But it's a dry heat, but who cares? Yeah. It's hot. Yeah. yeah. That looks good. What is that, Kenny? Three. It's going to be a 308, but I, I started oh. turning it down. But here's an hmm. AR 10 barrel that I've done now. So you're going to make it skinnier profile? Looks nice. Yeah. It's a 24 inch. Hmm. So, target crown. Hmm. I even managed to get the Excalibur logo right at 12 o'clock. So. <laughs> yeah, my nine is sideways, but I like it like that. Yeah. So, first AR-10 barrel I made, 
I got a. Uh, I got to work on um, Tats next at 358 Winchester. That's going to be a. That's going to be pretty interesting to get that on the AR10 working. Okay, I have a question for you. Yeah. Three three oh eight on the AR platform compared to the others that need the larger, you know, larger frame. I had to get the last part. It's kind of hard to hear you, Jim. I don't know if it's just me. It's probably me. Okay. 308 AR platform versus the others that need the larger frame. So 308 in the AR platform versus the others in, in a larger frame? That need or re require a larger frame. 308 still holding up against the other guys? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it do that. And that's one of the arguments that I always catch people stereo off. I um, I always tell folks that the 308 is a capable cartridge, and everybody's jumping on these freaking bandwagons like the 6 Creek more or the 65 Creek Moors and all that. And I ask them, well, what's the furthest you shot with the 6 Creek or 65 Creek Moors? And none of them ever say, they're like, oh, I only shoot 700 yards. I'm like, well, what do you need a 65 Creek more for and then? Yeah. They're like, oh, it's a better cartridge. I'm like, the 308 ballistically keeps up with a 6.5 Creed more in the wind with the right bullet. You are just wasting your barrel and wasting your time with that cartridge. If you're not going to use that cartridge to its full potential, there is no need to go at anything past a 308. If you're not shooting that's past exactly, the down, That's yeah. exactly what I've told people the years. Besides, a 308 will do anything that these other calibers will do up to a certain yardage. And it's just a little harder to shoot out at a thousand yards than one of these super BDL BLD bullets. But with the right time behind the trigger, you can make a 308 do anything a 6.5 will do. It just takes more time sitting there learning. Well, and that's the thing. So here, here's the benefits on a 308 it's a more forgiving cartridge to reload. There is absolutely tremendous amounts of reloading data out there. There's mm -hmm. yes. technology like the 185 burger juggernauts. There's the 200 grain burger, uh, the 200 X's, the 168 grain ELDs, the 170, any of the Hornady line. All of those work very well with Varget, and there's just known powder charges for it to work. The 65 Creedmoor, let's look at that. The nice thing the 65 Creedmoor is a barrel burner. You will get mm -hmm. roughly around 1,400 rounds to 2,500 rounds, depending how you load your ammo. So most people usually shoot a 140 grain ELD or a 140 grain projectile, 4350 powder. And it, why I say it's a barrel burner is because 4350 powder holds its high peak pressure within the first you know milliseconds of firing, which just erodes the throat. So that stated, it's actually a picky. If you look at this statistically, what people are loading 65 Creedmoor with, it's a very picky cartridge. There's usually about two to three powder charges with. 4350 that worked very well for folks. Reloader 16 is another powder, but it's not, you know, again, maybe one or two powder charges at work. So the trade offs are really miscanal uh, with the 6.5 Creedmoor. Like I said, you, you, you burn your barrel out 1,400 rounds. In an AR 10 platform, if you use it as an AR 10 platform, you're going to be way past your mag length within about 1,000 1, rounds to about 800 rounds. So that's been my experience with that cartridge. So. Yeah, that's that's why I ask because I like to keep it simple. 308, you got whatever bullets you ever wanted, and the brass is easy. And yeah. it, is there something that will annihilate it versus just have a 308 and get her done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, six five three four. If you really want to do it, if you can shoot six, if you're able to shoot past 1200 yards, that's where the six five three four will come in handy in the wind. We're talking about full value, 50 mile per hour crosswind, three o'clock or nine o'clock. That's where the six five creep work comes in. Yeah, that's not me. I'm more into uh, chewing with it. <laughs> no, no. I, I would say if, if you just want something that's easy to load for, easy to have fun, to go practice your fundamentals of shooting long range, the 308 is going to give you a, all of that and more. It's just a proven round. It's easy to load for, like I mentioned. Um, you could, I don't think you could burn out a barrel. You get bored of your gun before you burn a barrel out. Yeah. So, yeah. That's why I don't like a Creedmoor. I like a Creedmoor 6.5, but 
it burns the barrels out. So I, I backed off of it. I'm not going to buy one. I don't think. Yeah, I thought about getting it, but mm -hmm. I have 308. So why, mm -hmm. you know, do another die set and everything? You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, there's so much reloading products out there for 308 as well. Like right now, 6.5 bullets are hard to find. Like at least like specifically the 140, 147s that are that are meant for the 6.5 three more. They're they're hard to find right now. The 308, you can shoot anything from a 140 grain to a 200 220 grain, and you can find those all day long, left and right. At least for me, I can around here. Yeah, I got 500 rounds of uh, 150 grain Hornady here, 308. Gotcha. Uh -huh. I have interlock. Well, I can't remember now. It's been so long. I looked at it. West Covina had a reply. To yeah. yeah. Let me see. If you can call oh, he's it. got a go gauge. Oh, hell yeah. yeah. I'll take that. What's he got? He's got 358. What, you know what? Uh, West Covina, honestly, um, keep it because when I when I got your reamer, I rented your reamer right now. It's, it's coming with the gauges, so I won't need it. Hunting around, but still a uh, 150 grain. So. Yeah, I've got. I'm it. really curious. Honestly, I don't know what kind of gas hole he's going to need to get that thing to function the his uh the ECG. So we're gonna we're gonna work up small to large. To make sure this thing cycles. <laughs> What's up, Gage Junior? Yeah, I was supposed to be helping um, Alaskan Ballistics do a 22-250 semi-automatic barrel out of a uh, AR-10 or LR-308 platform. Yeah. He oh. Some Unless I got I, the wrong guy. He didn't reload, does he? Yeah, he reloads. Oh. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a little, little cool cartridge out of the AR-10. Yeah, that's what I told him. I'm like, you're going to have to push the pressures. The other to nice get it. thing about 308 is your bullets uh, weight. You can go all over the place if you got a 1 in 10. Oh, yeah, you can go from, what is it, 85 grains all the way up to 240? Yeah, and, yeah, that would be pushing it, but yeah, 200. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I, I love the 308. It's just, I had a couple firearms that did not want to shoot the 308, and I'm finding out it's the barrel. So, folks that have to have luck with the 308, honestly, it's probably the barrel. Yeah. It, because what I've found is that most um, 308 um, rifles, you can find something that'll shoot in them. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. I like 308, personally. Yeah. Yeah, well, oh, I still like, like got six. But that's for hunting, not long range. I've got that one too. Yeah. I got six. No, I'm uh, I got to start building what, what we call, well, out here we got these something called Accurized AR matches. So, um, we got the heavyweight class, which would be the AR 10s, and then they got the uh, AR 15s. So, I'm trying to get the six arc going in the AR 15. And it and in the 308, um, I need something to mitigate the recoil. So I'm looking at maybe a six Creedmoor, or to stick with a 243 Winchester. So, yeah, that's the only reason why I'm doing it. But I should, that's just because I could spin up another barrel like it's nothing. Yeah, the 308 does kick a little more in the ARs. Yeah, that's the one one drawback. You know, and I'm honestly debating about if I can figure out the bolt system, put the six arc in the 308, because then you don't have magazine restriction on cartridge overall length. And that might be something pretty interesting, because realistically, the six arc is a 308. Hmm. It's not a little better. 
Oh my God! Echoes using pledge. He's hey, listen. <laughs> hey, listen. I on, clean. Hey, listen, Uncle Jim. I know when they put all that glitter in your <laughs> shop. You cleaned for days and then you cleaned again. <laughs> I know you did because you're like me. Yes, and it stills around. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that back then. And it probably still pisses you off when you come across a piece of glitter. You're like, son of a bitch. Who did that to you, Uncle Jim? <laughs> I, 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 I it was Ark. Uh, oh, okay. It is impossible to get rid of. Yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. The best one's when the uh, a wife opened up Uncle Jim's Christmas card. <laughs> Years ago, you'd be in a club, you'd see girls have it on their breast, that glitter <laughs> sprinkle right there. <laughs> no, she's. She looks at me, she's like, one of your friends are a complete asshole. <laughs> I'm just laughing. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. uh, I'm sorry, it had to be done. No, with. no, it was worth it. I wish I caught it on video because that would have been epic. Uh. Oh, oh man! We gotta do more of that, Jim. You know what? We gotta get Tim back. Tin Man or Tim? One of them's gonna get fart for two. Or um, yeah, one of them's gonna get fart bomb for sure. Yes. I'm just gonna mail him like a yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna mail him like an encapsulated like skunk skunk sack. Right when they open it, it rips it open, and that's right there. You get a full blast of it. <laughs> yeah, where you can't get like it's spraying out at you. Like you can't, you you if you try to put your hands on it, it, it just doesn't help. It just spews everywhere. That's the kind of stink we need to get Tin Man with. <laughs> <laughs> Something where he's got to take a day off of work. <laughs> just to air out his basement. Yeah, you got 10 on. I thought about it. I mean, I do have a 3D printer. You know what he's going to say, though? You know what he's going to say? He's going to he's gonna be like, you know, I have to bring the baby down here, and it stinks really bad, guys. And, you know, my wife said a couple things to me about, you know, the fact that, you know, we got to bring the baby down here. <laughs> he's going to be like, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> Did you hear about Willie moving or coming here? No, he ain't moving. He's buying too much. Oh, okay. I heard tonight he was coming to Georgia at uh, Kyle. Um, I think Willie's having problems with his wife. Mm -hmm. And I think he was saving money to move to Georgia. And he spent a bunch of money on that CZ. And he bought uh, that rifle and... He he's just basically what happened was I think he realized he didn't want to lose, leave his wife and his son and his his grandbabies and all that for some reason you know he says I'm gonna stay here mm -hmm. so then he's been saving all that money to move and he just went and spent all that money on stuff for himself you know he's like. I'm not going to move, so I'm going to not spend this money. Uh, well, it's probably like I'm going to spend this money on me before other people spend it for me. Yeah. Kyle said he called him, said he was coming to Georgia. Well, he may be coming to but visit. Not. Yeah. That's what I was but I don't think he's living down there. Right. Yeah, he, he wants to get out of California, but you've got to be tight. You can't be buying stuff all the time. Yeah, you got to be able to save money, and Willie's not a good one to do that. Right. Yeah, I tried to tell him, but, uh, you know, it just is what it is. So you, you got to save up. I mean, the CZ's a moving truck, okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, it, you got to just save your money. Yep. 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 We saved enough money. I even had a sign made on the gym on the back of my U-Haul truck that said, California, right in the back of it. <laughs> it literally has said it on the back of it. So. Yeah, here, here's the okay. That was, that was worth it. That was 320 bucks to have that sign made. Wow. 
Okay. Yeah. I, see, I put on there. Yeah, free California. Y'all could have Newsom. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's the thing, Echo. When he was doing his trip up to the shoot, he's like, wow, I get into Utah. He was in southern Utah, and people are flipping us off and everything. And he says, I think it's the California license plates. And I'm like, oh, I, I'm like no I know. kidding. Are you crazy? Yeah, I was telling Jim, I was like, hey, man, people are being like, they're like, they're like yeah. thinking that we're a suspect or something. We're just so going I, to I, Yeah, I tell them to get a piece of cardboard right now and write down, we're not from California and stay yeah. out the back of the window. Oh, mm -hmm. dude. It's the way when he said that, I pulled into a gas station. I think it was in St. George. If somebody had that list, literally labeled that on their car, says, we're not Californian. This is a <laughs> rental. <laughs> I was laughing. <laughs> I was laughing. I was like, this is awesome. Uh, that was so funny, but then later people were nice and everything. When you were yeah, yeah. I know. Mm. That, when we broke down over there in Park City, or had that wheel bearing go out, and we pulled into the shop, and you can just tell that everybody's on California, you know. <laughs> yeah, so. that was like a. To me, it did not sound like fun. That was a terrible trip. Yeah, I just wish things rolled a little better. <laughs> like, uh, I guess that's, yeah. uh, but uh, my main goal was to, to stop at Jim's house the first night to have fun, but I only made it all the way to Bravo. So I rolled into Bravo around 2300, and uh, Taco texted me. He's like, you still awake? I'm like, yeah, we're in Bravo. He's like, oh, we're at. We're at. So I gave him the, the K away. He's like right down the road from him. So. He stopped by for like 15, 20 minutes, snuck out of the house. <laughs> snuck out of the house going like he's going to sleep here to see a girlfriend. <laughs> it was funny. So uh, he stopped by. So I, I was able to meet him for a couple, of, at least 15, 20 minutes. So he, he stayed there. But uh, rough trip, that's for sure. I know if I'm going to do it again, I'm going to have my own damn RV that I, that I take care of. Yeah, did that guy, uh, you know, you know, you came home late. Did he charge you any extra? Or did you no, no, he was off? actually, uh, he's super cool. I mean, he's very nonchalant. The, the funny part about it is that that RV was scheduled to be rented out the next day. So I gave him a list of everything that was off. I'm like, we're, we're, uh, who's renting this? And they're like, oh, we're, they're renting it for like 4th of July or like July weekend or something. And like, where are they staying at? They're like, oh, here. It's a, and I'm looking at the weather. I'm like, it's 120 degrees. Just so you know, the front AC unit does not work. And that's going to suck for them. So he was scrambling. But um, he honestly just doesn't know what's going on with his RVs. His no. Mechanic, does not so, know. So he didn't, he didn't charge you extra because it was breaking. Oh, no, no. I gave him the bill. I gave him the bill to the wheel bearing and everything. I was like, hey. You know, this is what we paid. You, know, you got a brand new wheel bearing in there. It's four hundred some dollars. So that was that. cheap. Yeah. yeah. No, that that was actually cheap because had you broke down on the side of the road somewhere and they oh, had yeah. to send out a mobile truck, that would have been about six hundred and ninety dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah, and that yeah, that was a thirty-three footer. It wouldn't even make it up my driveway. It takes too wide a turn. Yeah, that we literally broke down going down Park City on like second to last exit right there before the ski, uh, ski resort. So we were able to get off the exit right there. And we looked over and there was like a was a, a big old tire or something right there. So um, that worked out, man. That was just a blessing, I guess. <coughs> but four hundred dollars later. <laughs> Well, at least he didn't uh, give you guff. That's good. That's good. Yeah, then I, mean, I still, <clears throat> still freaking getting over this sinus cold or whatever we caught, man. It was pretty bad. Yeah, that, uh, did, that didn't sound fun because it was 100 here when you were coming through. Your air conditioning sucked. Wheel bearing. You had a tire with low air. You yeah. had three. You had a baby and two other kids in the car, yeah. and then and then she got a fever, and you had to find medicine at a store, and a yeah, three-footer. 
Yeah. And, uh, trying to get to your match. And then your match, it was all muddy up there in Wyoming. Oh, yeah. And then you come back and it's 100 degrees again. <laughs> yeah. Man, so, yeah, that was bad. Yeah, she caught the fever on the way up there. And my wife's like, I don't have a thermometer. So, St. George, we stopped and went down the main road. And I'm looking at these. Um, I mean, it's like a historic style uh, town, right? So everything's hanging low. I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, I'm dodging freaking tree branches left and right going down the main main center road. <laughs> and go through the go through the Walgreens, and I just pissed everybody off as I turned in there. I obviously took up like two spots. People are trying to get out of there. So um, that was fun. I mean, regardless, of, you know, we just made lemonade out of lemons. We still had a great time. You know, passed by Barnes Bullets. I almost stopped there just to check them out, but then I thought about me hacking and coughing, everybody's going to scream COVID, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, luckily, I didn't get sick till like, the last day of the match. Like, I started feeling it during uh, during that match on the last day. Yeah. Still managed to kick ass and uh, catch up the two teams. So we made some good good time. Yeah, I wanted to try that pistol. I never shot one of those with the spring rails on it and everything. What what are the Infinity? What are they called? Oh, the SVI. Yeah, the uh, SVI Infinity. That's uh, Strayer Voice. Infinity. Yeah. And, yeah, Strayer Voice is a company, and I stands for Infinity. That's a. I'm telling you, man. If you think you, you think you shot a really good 2011 or 1911, you gotta try this one. Or try one. Try an SVI. That is a whole different ball game. Oh yeah, STI Nighthawk Custom. Oh dude, yeah. There's um, there's another company out there that this is what Ray was using on um, X-ray. He had something called a Akai Customs. That's A C A I, and everything's all um, a machine billet and everything. That's just as, I, I honestly probably a little bit better than the SBI. And that's a, yeah. I say I think roughly eight thousand dollars for that pistol. Wow. Yeah. Eight eight grand for a twenty eleven. <laughs> um, I think the the guy that, that uh, gave me this one or sold me this one um, told me back in the day, I think in the early nineties is when he bought it. He he spent like, over two thousand, which is quite a bit for a twenty eleven back in the nineties. Yeah, the funny thing is, uh, Nighthawk is uh, guys that left Wilson. You know, to do their yes. Stuff. Uh, we we started carrying them as a dealer, right? So we had dealer pricing and everything. And the first ones we got, we had to send back. They weren't uh, functioning right. No kidding. Yeah. Okay. So, so Pat commented, at least he didn't have to tear your shirt up. And um, I'm not sure if you follow Rich Channel there um, uh, on the gym or Echo or AR. Um, Rick is, uh, he, he knows the, is your six covered. Middle of the match, the dude had a code brown. He had to go drop, he had to take a, take a fat dude during the match. So ran in some bushes, ripped his shirt up in, in pieces to use that code <laughs> Uh, <laughs> where is uh, Pat? Where is Pat? Get him on here, baby. Yeah, get get Pat on here. Yeah, Rick is honestly one of the one of the most humble people ever. He's super funny, man. He's a he's a great guy. Uh, I was yeah, I was surprised how fit he was for his age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the X ring is the uh, the Asian guy I was with. Um. That man can freaking run. I mean, I was full of gas. Me being in the 30s, I was struggling to keep up with him. Oh, so the guy in the bushes was a different guy. Yeah, the one the one that ripped the shirt, that's Rick. That's one of his good friends. Okay. I see, yeah, I yeah. saw the story on that. Yeah. 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 He shot that match, too, with uh, Hugo and uh, Joe Brown. I mean, it happens to the best of us. It almost happened to me. Oh, dude, I, I, dude, yeah, I, I've I've gone into a um, a Seven Eleven before, 
and bought a cup of coffee and a donut and I was driving my tow truck and this was back in the 90s and th there was something wrong with the coffee is all I could think you, you I took I took a big drink of the coffee and it hit my stomach and about the time it hit my stomach it was like someone flushing a toilet and I was like I looked up and all I I just had this look of like total fear on my face like I'm gonna shit myself and the lady behind the counter she knew that look she's like Do brown door back of the thing and i'm just running i made it back there pulled my pants down and dude i don't know how your butthole knows but it's like your pants no just clear your butt and like your ass just makes contact with the toilet surface and it's like an explosion <laughs> and you're like oh yeah. my god it happens, man. Like I said, we're all human. Mm. Everything we eat, it all makes a turd. But uh, no, just to share that story, I mean, he's just there's no shame about it. But it just it made a good story. So uh, I really applaud Rick for, for sharing that with us and making a making a good lab chat. But um, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm really I don't know. I got my 300 blackout working again. By the way, Jim and uh, Echo. What, what was wrong with it? So, the first barrel, you remember how it was like stupid fast? Like when I shot that on a full auto? Over okay. Gas. Over gas. It, it literally sheared the uh, barrel extension. I mean, it literally, there was like, the barrel extension got chewed up. That's yeah, the, the actual lugs and the extension sheared off? Yeah, actually, I don't know if I yeah. Have so. I bought a new one and I've been tuning it. I finally ended up dropping an H5 buffer. And that's what fixed all of the issues. Oh, okay. okay. You know what I would have recommended you do too? Is run a flat wire spring. Yep. So that's what I got in there right now. I got a flat wire spring from JT. Yep. Um, it's got a H5 buffer. And then what I'm. What I found out is I have a cheap bolt pair group in it right now. I think it's something from Palmetto State Armory. That one will will fully cycle, but if I drop in like an arrow precision or a JP bolt, it doesn't cycle all the way. I don't know what the deal is. So there's something inside. I never took the gas key off of a bolt pair group, but there's something inside there has more tolerance, allowing the gas to, to cycle or, or less tolerance. I don't know. Okay, so hold on, hold on. The gas key itself is causing restriction to flow. Yeah. Yeah. So if I use another bolt carrier group, that won't cycle. There's only one bolt carrier group, which that gun likes now. Okay. Huh. So if you change carriers, but use everything else, it, it, it functions. But with yeah. that one carrier, it doesn't. Yeah. If, if I, um, any other bolt carrier group will not function on full auto. It will function on semi-auto, but not full auto. Yeah, it's not an M16 carrier. It's an M16 carrier. It's an arrow precision, but it just short short strokes. Like what it, it's not doing. They yeah. don't have the right weight for the dwell. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, they what they've done. What, okay, see, they're based out of uh, Washington State. And I, when Aero Precision first started making receivers, they made them for other companies only. Um, they did. They still, I think, do Palmetto State Armory, but I don't know if they, for sure. But the bottom line is what I'm getting at is they made a lot of receivers for a lot of companies for a lot of years, and some of the stuff that they had to abide by were state and local laws in the state of Washington that are completely anti-gun. So it, for them to be a manufacturer and manufacture AR-15 receivers, they have to be made so that they cannot be um, uh, molested or transformed where they can take a full auto fire control group 
this started actually with Colt back in the days where they tried to change pin sizes and all this BS to make their guns, their auto guns, not interchangeable with their semi-auto guns. Yeah, it's just um, definitely something different on that whole carriage group, like you're saying. So the one that I got, I think it's some cheap name brand. I, th I think it's from Florida. It's um, Daytona Tactical or PSA, one of those two. Daytona Tactical. That mm -hmm. sounds like this guy's that I knew from about eight years ago that used to do <clears throat> gun shows. I've been on their website. Yeah, they're, they're, they're there in Florida. I know for sure. Yeah. I forgot, I forgot where it is. <clears throat> well, Daytona is Daytona Beach. I don't think they're in Daytona, though. I think they're a little bit, a little bit more south or something. Hmm. I'll look it up. I don't know. They, they got cheap, like, uh, AR uppers right now. You could get, like, a whole complete AR upper for, like, 230 or something like that. Yeah, that's cheap. They're, um, I don't know. They get the parts, obviously, from overseas. So they're not the best quality parts. Or they get the parts from one of the main distributors, which I'm actually a... I, uh, I call it a, uh, oh gosh, a distributor for him as well is Omega Tactical, which is Davis in Defense. So Davis in Defense and Omega Tactical are, are the same company. Hmm. Yeah, I've been on Davis. So they got some uh, uppers sometime that's reasonable. Yeah, yeah. They, they get all their stuff from Omega Tactical. What's the matter? Davis sends their system. I'm in company. here. You want to come in here? I mop the floor. You can come in here. It's clean. Come on. <laughs> here, kitty, kitty. <laughs> here, kitty, kitty. But, uh... Come on. <clears throat> yeah, I'm still waiting on some freaking reamers. I thought I got the damn AR reamer for the 6R last week, but it, it was just my replacement. Um, bolt plug reamer. But uh, pissed off a lot of people in that video, though, Jim. <laughs> um, which video? That that latest one I did about just doing load development and pretty much calling everybody out that saying they have a they have a half oh. inch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Their, their six arc shoots half inch. I'm like, huh? It's funny because I got a proof research barrel, I got a Elijah barrel, I got a Shaw barrel, I got a couple Saxon barrels. I have. Wilson Combat made one. I got one of those. I I got 27 barrels in the six arc. I've actually given away about uh, gave away eight barrels so far, and none of them ever shot that good. And uh, okay, so the consensus is works great in a bolt action, but in an AR you want a shorter chamber, right? Yes. So here's the issue with that that cartridge. Um, the free bore, from what I measured. Is usually jumping around 100 to 120 thousandths. That bullet leaving the tip of the case mm. to engage in the lands is 100 thousandths. Wow. And everybody wants to, everybody wants to source out or say, oh, the Sammy Spec is only calling for 60 thousandths. I'm like, yes. However, if you look at the Sammy Spec, it's going off of the case net. So from here to whatever the lands are, 60 thousandths. They are correct about that. However, on a reams chamber, it is always roughly 30 to 40 thousandths excess of what your trim length is. So if you actually trim this to the specified trim length, which is actually, this is a good top topic for 223. You could trim your brass to, say for instance, 223, 1.75, right? You throw a bore cam in your chamber. Throw that piece of brass into your chamber, chamber it, and throw your bore cam. You'll notice that you got a crap ton of room before that uh, from the leading edge of your brass to the leading edge of the chamber there is going to be roughly 30 to 40 thousandths more room and they do this for reliability and they do this so um they can accommodate various manufacturers and also your incompetence of reloading if you're a reloader you just forgot to trim the brass it doesn't create a what they call a bore obstruction like what happened to the 300 the 350 legend when that piece of brass goes into the 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 free bore area and doesn't allow the bullet to release and cause a catastrophic failure. So that's why they do that. So with that stated, 
Forty thousand is the top of sixty thousand. What does that equal? One hundred thousand. So <laughs> that is too much free bore for that bullet. Uh, this cartridge is one hundred percent jump sensitive. It's not. It's not powder charge sensitive. It's very jump sensitive, and it likes to be around twenty thousandths to fifteen thousandths of bullet jump, from what I've seen for accuracy in a bolt gun. Mm. Which is right about where everybody runs ten thousandths to fifteen thousandths off the lands. Yep. So, and I've proven this. I mean, I can literally build a loader right now, go twenty thousandths off the jam with an AR of my AR barrels. And go out there and put out a consistent 0.6 inch group. The caveat is my cartridge overall length now is 2.320, 2.350. That's not mag length, so it makes the AR a single fed cartridge. Uh -oh. So I've already I've already proven the fact what the problem is. You know I've done numerous testing. I, I can make the six arc work on a on a uh, AR, but you're single feeding it. So shorten the chamber so you can run them in the mags. That's the idea. Exactly. So you shorten the freeboard, which I ended up doing. So I ordered a custom reamer, and what I had him do was omit the freeboard. So basically, all it's going to be is just the chamber that's going to cut, and all of this is going to have lands right to the tip of that. And then I ordered a a six millimeter throater, which means I could actually set the freeboard exactly where I want to. So that's what I'm waiting on, and I can show folks that. Yeah, you have your free board, which is probably going to be around fifteen thousand to twenty thousand. What I'm what I'm estimating it's going to be, um, and then once I have that measurement, I can send those measurements off to Dave Manson, tell him, okay, cut back the note the, the neck area x amount of uh, inch or thousands of an inch, put the free board at this, and I will have a AR specific modified six arc reamer that is not semi spec but will work with. I'm hoping hand loads. And I'm hoping with the 108 ELDs, but if it doesn't work with um, factory ammo, it is what it is. You just got to be a hand loader cartridge, you know. Interesting. Yep. So <laughs> I don't think folks really realize that though. When you're when you're going off uh, listed trim length or advertised trim length, you're really trimming a shit ton of your brass back that you really don't need to. And um, like for a bolt gun. If you want to accurate or um, you know kind of take advantage of the accuracy of that cartridge you really want to maximize uh, how much case support you have over that bullet so if you have for instance a 308 um, instead of it what, what's the trim like 2.005 i believe top of my head if you measure your chamber and let it grow and grow and grow and see exactly where it is with the bore cam to where it's just at the edge and come back five thousandths, you'll find out you usually have twenty-five to forty thousandths more, or twenty-five to thirty thousandths more of neck that you just allowed yourself to expand and give that much more uh, support over the bullet. That all that that allows you to push the bullet out further, increases case capacity, so you can you can achieve the higher velocity nose if you want to chase that, um, and also helps improve your concentricity of the bullet. Yep. Two 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 point zero zero five. And then what I do is I'll go two point zero one five or two two zero because you still got that much space. Absolutely, yeah. That, that's I think that's what I set mine to is two point zero one five. Belt fed, yes. West Covina, one day, I have I have the licensing for that. I could definitely do something crazy like that. <laughs> Pat. Pat. <laughs> Don, you're not, he's saying he's rambling. No, there's only nine, nine on board here, so. You're one of the lucky few to hear some good, good information. AR took his glasses off. That's a first. Uh, I do it from time to time. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've I seen him on the live chats quite often on the uh, Georgia Shooting Connection. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm becoming a regular on there, it seems. Yeah, they don't, they don't like me no more, so they kicked me off. Huh. <laughs> I don't think those guys like me anyway. It was a little bit better thing tonight. There was more interaction with the uh, people, more questions yeah. answered. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I had a couple friends join that chat and they were just new into reloading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the only thing that chat made them do was give me a freaking million phone calls afterward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. So, uh, what I started doing actually over here to help out with new reloaders is uh, mm -hmm. we host a uh, reloading class. We have a, um, CCW class, and then once a month, I'll, I'll help host the reloading class and the AR building class. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Yeah. Go through the basics of reloading. Mm -hmm. Echo's got a sauna cleaner that looks like the Harbor Freight, but it's not. Ooh. Oh, excuse me. I laid down this evening and was going to take a nap before you went live earlier and I couldn't sleep. MCK uh, in the house. Yep. MCK down there. I got to click to see the chat. What's going on, MCK? Hey, MCK. Yeah. Yeah, freaking YouTube uh, mm. took my subscription off of Echo's channel, so I had to resubscribe mm. to him again. Yeah. Mm. I've... Somebody's calling me. Who the heck? Oh, Willie's calling me. Hang on, guys. Oh, I've I've found that, and then also you don't get hey. notifications to reply. Hey, are you still up? Oh, yeah, you know I still haven't got my bolt gun back or my lever gun back, Jim. Oh wow, from Rossi. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna say screw Rossi. Rossi is horrible. There are no more this is. It's right. not bad. Yeah. It's like Taurus, it takes forever to get service. Yeah. Well, well, he's coming on. Yeah. Well, how long has it been now? Almost six months? Wow. And that's just a screw, right? Just a screw. It's all it is is a freaking screw on a, on a barrel band. And it's oh taken us six God. months to replace that. Yeah, you should have turned your own. In hindsight, yeah. I surprised you know, Willie called me. That, that's kind of where I suck, though, Jim. I, I don't know how to remove screws and stuff from little items like that. I'm not that skilled yet. Yeah, that's a bummer. I should have just friggin' shipped it to you, man. Echo, hey. Willie will be on in a minute. Uh-oh, we lost AR. Just now we clicked. We did right. the Uncle Jim click. No, I didn't even touch it. I think that was. <laughs> My hands were down here. <laughs> mm -mm. Echo, can you hear us? No, he's cleaning the house now. Oh, okay. no, 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 no! I can hear you. I had myself on mute. Okay. I was. I accidentally uh, clicked on you, Ar, Ar, and you said Willie was coming in. Did you yeah. send him a link? No, he. Uh, uh, he didn't ask for one. He just said, I'm coming on. Uh, uh, he must have there. one, so it, yeah. he should be showing up. Let me see if I, I, hope he, I hope he texts me or says something because he they hide down in the, the yeah. lower. He just called me. That's kind of surprised me. Yeah, he was calling me too, but I was on the toilet. Okay, let me, let me forward. Let me see. He had some coffee. <laughs> yeah, I had some coffee. Let me tell you. <laughs> can't we put the link? We can put the link in the side chat, can't we? I can send it to him. Tell him, okay. tell him to chill out. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm working my magic. As long as it doesn't have gunpowder involved, I shouldn't make a mess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. oh. Oh, man. Oh. I think I ate too many chicken nuggets. Mm. It's 110 in here, Jim. Are we Jeez. Good God. Yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. 80 some degrees in here, and I'm sweating. That knocked me out. 
<laughs> yeah, a little ridiculous. I need to put a split unit in here. I have one of those floor AC fans, but they it keeps cutting off this com uh, compressor because it's too, it's overheating or something. Yeah. Yeah. You, you need more um, <clears throat> more um, compressor. Yeah. Well, I think uh, the biggest thing is I never insulated the ceiling. So all that cool air just running through. Is that a is that a metal building, Kenny? No, it's a tough shed, but it has the uh, aluminum uh, backed uh, fiber board or whatever. Oh, okay. I got lucky. I picked this thing up for a lot for pretty cheap before all the wood prices went up. Ooh. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired of the heat. Bring on fall and winter. No shit. No, we no, haven't I even. The heat. We haven't that. even hit our hot part of the year yet. August. Once uh, August gets here, it'll be over a hundred, and it'll be a hundred percent relative humidity. Yeah, that's when we start cooling down a little bit. This is the hottest month. You know how cold it is in Georgia right now. 72 degrees. Holy shit, that's nice. Yeah, it's just comfortable. Echo, Very comfortable. I was w worried about you during the hurricane because you were doing a live chat and then you didn't do the chat and I'm like, oh, his house went. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was um, on the front porch. I had a, a, the computer going in the shop I had my cell phone because I can't stream with my cell phone because I don't have a thousand subscribers. So I had my computer on with my cell phone running remote into it, standing on the front porch. And as soon as I made it outside the door, the whole house went totally black. And I was like, son of a bitch. Well, I had to find my way back into a totally black house from being totally black outside. Dude, uh, it, it, it was a mess. Hey, Pat wants, Pat, so, wants yeah, send Pat, a link. Pat wants a link. Pat wants a link, too. Good Pat. Yay, Pat. Damn, everybody's wanting to hang out and party. All right, hold on. Yeah, let me, let me jump over to my, my yeah, stinky I just, bobs. I just asked Willie, do you need a link? Okay. Willie says he needs a link. Pat needs. He mm -hmm. might as well just post it on the side. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that's what I should do. It's easier. Mm -hmm. But then I'll get a troll or two. <laughs> oh, dude, I don't know yeah. man, what it is, dude. There's there's a crap ton of trolls lately. They'll go on my damn videos too and start saying, "Oh, you don't know how to shoot an AR." So what the hell does that mean? Learn to shoot an AR before you try showing us groups with an AR. I'm like, what the hell? Because wow. because ARs are that harder to shoot than a bolt gun, right? <laughs> um, MCK says you can check in later if you can. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing I got to I got to send you one of those too, Jim, to try out the. Uh, Diamond Tech, a Trigger Tech Diamond Series, AR Trigger. I've heard of those. Oh, my gosh, dude. That thing is the best trigger I've ever felt in AR, and I used, I have never felt anything. It get, so to give you an idea, it's a two-stage trigger. The first stage could go down all the way down to four ounces. The second oh. stage could go all the way down to eight ounces. So you, you could bump fire the hell out of the thing like it's nothing. Okay, two stage I like when they get light. Yep. Uh, single stage can be they just crap out on you. Yeah, so yeah, no, I, I would never I do that. All, yeah. I run all two stage. Yeah, uh, this if, is a true positive limits. engagement two stage. So it, it doesn't even use a hook system for the second stage. It, everything is all positive on the front sear, so it's completely wow. stable. What, what what do those cost? What was that? How much do those cost? Um, 
my cost would be a hundred and sixty-eight dollars. They're usually at two hundred and eighty bucks. Okay. Wow. So they're, they're up there. Okay. Yeah, that's well, they I want yeah, one. But yeah, they're close to three hundred bucks, but one hundred and sixty-eight mm -hmm. makes it kind of manageable. But for what it is, I don't know any other uh, trigger out there besides I think the Bixby and Andy, a Bix and Andy one. Hang, hang on, guys. Do you hear everything being repeated? No. No, no Willie. No. Somebody's right. got a hot mic. I'm gonna or sign you... out and I'll come back in. Hey, make sure you you don't have you're not uh, two. That's what he did. He had YouTube playing and he signed in. I've seen the interior of that Diamond Tech uh, Trigger Tech, uh, Kenny. Yeah, they got a special series also, which is around uh, I think uh, 160 bucks MSRP, which gets all the way down to a you know, pound and a half, which is that's what most people like anyway, a pound and a half. Mm -hmm. So, but um. The reason why I love that trigger is that it's the same, the same exact feel as my bolt guns. Wow! But you would, you would love that trigger, Tim. I gotta send you one. No, no, too expensive. Don't do it. It's free. I got one for free. Wow. I still. <laughs> I, <laughs> I won it on the um the IDPA match out here. Wow. Yeah. Don't worry about it. That way you can try it out. No, too expensive. Hang oh on to it. I got top five on the uh, IDPA match. Nice. Of course, I can't freaking film anything there because everything's such a rush and no one wants to help out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're going to have to bring a designated friend just to film. Because yeah, you just got too much shit going on. I brought a chess cabinet. I got a chess cabinet and me doing it. So I got a couple couple of stages of filming. If I was closer to you, Kenny, I'd help you. Dude, I need some help, man. I got no other friends out here, dude. I want to do that kind of stuff. But if I bring up a match, you're like, uh, I'm too, too, I'm too scared. I got one guy that I built a rifle for, but all the way in Peoria. My friend David. Jamie was waiting on the backside for you, Willie. Earlier, yeah, and we got Pat here too. Pat, yeah, Hello, I, Pat. Uh, I, I, I talked with him already. Eli, oh. thank you. Jim, why are you hiding, Jim? You doing good? Uh, I have my shirt off, and I don't think you want a second helping of man -boo. Oh, man -boo. Did you see Willie's uh, main big shot? That's not what I would have wanted. You should be I embarrassed. Did. I, 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 didn't say, <laughs> I didn't say a word, but yes, I saw Willie's man boot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did. I said I made a comment. I could not help it but make a comment. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say a word, though. So, so Echo, um, I want to know your, your process of trimming grass. Like, what do you use? For speed brass i'll show you mine <laughs> to trim it to trim it yeah i Here's use a that. quick quick trim die okay then hold on let me let me see hold on let me let me blow you up yeah i need a screwdriver to do that too oh my Dude, i oh, found yeah. this to be one of the trim. most um unique versions of trimming your brass so yes that is a laminate piece of flooring so laminate flooring Forster, uh, Forster laid trimming, um, uh, we call it press or whatever you want to call this thing, Forster, Forster laid cover. And then obviously you could chuck it on a drill just like this. So okay, it, what, you, what you do, Kenny, I have the same Forster, and that's how I used to do, before I got the prep center, that's how I used to do my 300 blackout when you're farming it. Put a 2x4 okay. along it so your drill slides on it. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, so your drill's always like level with it, goes back and forth. Yeah, and, yeah. and I have the jig still in my uh, furnace room, and I still oh, use yeah. it from time to time. But yeah, I use hey, that. Kenny. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> the Forster, baby. The Forster. And they work yeah. great for uh, neck turning. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, 
Jim, Jim's 100% correct. Is I use the uh, the prep center too with his little modified golf ball um, yeah. for trimming the brass. But the six arc and some of the cartridges that I have, they don't have that 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 pilot. Which I don't know why I don't make my own. I should just make my own pilot. That sucks. They don't make that. No, they don't have a six arc pilot right now. Yeah, the good old Forster, man. I still use it. But this is pretty hmm. fast. I mean, it's. I know, I know but take a, a take a two by four or something that your uh, your drill will lay on, and it'll just slide back and forth like a jig. That's that's how I could go down and show it to you, but that's what I did. Okay. Well, I almost did a, a video for you and put a golf ball on the end of the Forster. That way, you have something to grip it. Uh, <laughs> Where did Willie go? Uh, he got knocked off again. Yeah, that's funny, Echo. So yeah, you got the same thing then. Yeah. yeah you, you just unscrew the handle; the drill fits right on it. Right. So I picked this one up on eBay. I think for twenty bucks. Yeah. Yeah, someone someone gave me my Forester, and I'm like, all right, I'll start buying stuff for it. You know, the neck trimmer, neck turn, yeah. Right. Works. It works. The neck turner, if you do it by hand, it takes longer, but it's kind of nice because you can feel everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I have a neck turner for the three hundred blackout for this uh, for the Forester. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a nice. Uh, they've been around forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. small, I, too. I gotta cut out guys I got a doctor's appointment in the morning uh oh I forget, even forgot about it ah jeez yeah. what the mental he mental health professional yeah just a doctor rubber glove rubber glove <laughs> no just the family doctor uh, okay. uh, I should have done been in the bed but I gotta get up early Anyway, he's like, he's take like, it easy, man. family doctor, take it easy, AR. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Be Careful with right. that doctor's yeah. hands. Yeah, good. good <laughs> yeah, you too, John, Jim. Kenny, see you. Right, you too, brother. Good seeing you. Good meeting you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good meeting you. Bye. Oh, he's got a full screen of Pat now. <laughs> oh, hey, Pat, I got that server up and running. You got the, the which what? Oh, that's, uh, uh, that is HP? Yeah, so I got I got about um one two I'm looking at the bottom here of my screen. One two I got seven ESP thirty two cams all through my property running through the server. <laughs> oh nice. And then uh I, I got Call of Duty running on it. So my my boys and I were playing Call of Duty on it the other day. All right. it, the graphics car is not bad on it, dude. What kind of graphics card do you have on it? Is it built into the chip? No, it's some. Uh, it's an ATI or an NVIDIA something. That's a, a ATI, yeah, Ra Ra Radian. No, I think it's a, a NVIDIA uh, 7800, I believe. Oh, yeah. It's not bad. No. So I was going to call you, though, because um, the Windows 10, I don't know. I put it on there, but it keeps saying it needs a Windows key. <laughs> I tried the one in the back. Uh, okay, this is a one sec deal, so uh, hang on, Kenny. Okay. <coughs> so you got screens like Scarface, you can see the property and everything? Oh, yeah, dude. The freaking bunnies all left and right. I, I didn't, I got coyotes that are like roaming my property like it's a, like, you know, like we're a damn refugee camp. Freaking coyotes left and right off of my property. Well, put a remote out. control rifle on those cameras. I'm about to set up a remote control in AR so I can sleep, wake up in my bed with capital sons of bitches. <laughs> oh, Pat, how long you got to stay at work? Uh, I don't know, probably about three more hours. Ah, oh, jeez. No, I can't get really started until... Uh, these guys leave. I gotta take the car down. Yeah, you sound really muffled. What are you using for a camera? Phone? 
No, I'm using a $12 Colt 1080p uh, Chinese camera. Oh, okay. Let's see. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say, screw you, work. I am wiring off. Kiss my ass. Go find someone else. That's <laughs> <laughs> like I've had enough. <laughs> someone else could go freaking bake in the sun. It's a bullcrap. Everybody's off, you know, that's one thing pissed me off. I found everybody's out in the freaking lake and river drinking a beer, and here I am sweating my ass off trying to fix their problems. Windows Pro, he just, uh, Pat just put something on the screen for you. Uh, check your phone, Kenny. Is it me? Yeah, check your telephone. I'm just sending you text. Mute my phone. Hold on. Was it me or what are you guys trying to test? Trying to send your license key. Oh, hang on. One more time. Try now. Uh, did you leave the handguard or your AR-10 or? You I, haven't it, right? found, I haven't found a handguard yet or a. Uh, we haven't talked. I keep walking back and forth. I keep thinking, you know, Kenny ought to just turn that thing down to a pencil bar so I can get a gas block easy. Yeah, I got, I got an extra handguard sitting here somewhere for somebody. I don't know who, whose it is. So no, that's my handguard. It's uh, didn't bring a handguard. Uh, I'm gonna use it for your barrel. Uh, if, if someone needs a handguard, I'll go get them one. I guess. Hey, Pat, when uh, your little woman came home, did it uh, all come to fruition or no? Uh, yeah, I spent the whole 4th of July weekend eating crackers and cheese in bed, Jim. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. I was worrying for you because uh, you didn't you. fix the thing or whatever. Okay. Well, no, I had it fixed by the time she walked in the door. Is that <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, uh, the, the router is hooked up, but that router sucks. It's completely locked up. Can't do anything with it. So I'm gonna put my own router in anyway. And uh, and after I roll off and towel off, I'm gonna tell her kick this thing back to the cable company. Not before. <laughs> 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 All right, that's good. That's good. So now she's in Texas right now um, with one of her girlfriends. Um, wow. Yeah, this is, uh, she's, being, she's being a good friend. She had a her girlfriend had a double mastec mastectomy and uh, just got the fake movies put in and they're going to see her son. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm free all weekend. I got rid of the girlfriend's daughter 
Zoe is out of the house. I'm all alone, and I thought to myself, you know that all that lead I got from you, Kenny? I'm gonna smelt that up uh, this weekend. Get it into ingots. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I was gonna ask you also, man. I don't know if you're. Uh, while I was trying to plan something out in Vegas on my birthday, the, the week of the 17th, if anything's available out there. Um. The answer is, uh, yeah, I'll put the request in with a little woman tonight. I don't think anybody's out there. So, uh, yeah. except you might have to rub elbows with Sylvia, but let's take it to downstairs bedroom. Okay. Yeah, the week of the 17th. Okay. I'll text you. Thank Basically, you. There's, a, um, there's a match out there that, I'll, that I'm going to try to attend to out there at that uh, health gun range it is prs match i'm gonna try to go to that one and then they have obviously my wife wants to go see shows and all that i'm gonna create there's another thousand dollar weekend okay well yeah you're uh you're welcome there's uh the worst case is the little woman hasn't gotten a job yet and she'll be there but uh okay. she's already had two interviews she's sick and tired of vacation so uh it'll probably be no problem Okay, awesome. Hey, my AC's working. Hell yeah. Whew. Finally. Oh, uh, that must be nice. I can feel the cold, colder air. Yeah, I just got 80 degree blowing at me. Yeah, nice. I don't know how you do it, Kenny. I, I went out and shot five rounds with the cell phone. And it was <laughs> it was boiling hot. You said screw that. <laughs> yeah. So no, I'm a tropical type. So it's in my blood, but I love the cold weather. That's the funny part, dude. I could be in North Dakota the winter time. It doesn't bother me much. So do I. I love winter time the best because uh, yeah, no people trip me out. Is yeah, they're all tripped out because within about a couple of weeks in North Dakota, I was in Minot, I was it three years ago in uh, St. Vincent, which are like 10 miles away from the Canadian border. That's how far north, north I was. And dude, about two weeks later, I'm in freaking shorts and, and, uh, and slippers going to the uh, gym when it's negative 40 outside. <laughs> wow. All right, you're going to have to come up and visit in the winter then. I definitely want to make that happen. I, I'm going to bring my snowboard. Snowboard Devil's Corner is going to be my bitch. Show Uncle Jim how to break his hip on a snowboard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I will make Devil's Corner my bitch on that snowboard. Oh, yeah. You can teach me how to use a snowboard. I'll get one at the thrift store. <laughs> Next time you see Uncle Jim, he's grown his hair out in the long poo and he's bleached it blonde and he's all drinking beers and smoking weed and 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 he's snowboarding professionally he's got like he's got like you know what do they call those where they put like the the little um the where they they take the hair and they they take the long hair and the the girls at school braid it and they put the little the little things in it yeah dude yeah that's, That's gnarly, what Uncle Jim needs. Gnarly waves, dude. Dude, yeah. that would be hilarious. <laughs> but that was like eight, nine, nar, nar. <laughs> uh, oh, I, you know, the fact that he still say, does it on a on a sled, I give him props. Yeah, a lot of people say, "Oh, how do you stand the snow?" I love it. I love Absolutely the snow, man. Absolutely love it. I'll Absolutely take it over nice. this heat any day. Oh, my wife hates the snow. She's she's a total California girl. Do you know what sucks? I called the propane company, and uh, I, you know, said them. I I told them I need a fill up. Usually they'll have a sale this time of year. And I said, "What's the price?" And they said, "Well, <laughs> with with uh, your you know bulk and discount, it'll be like one fifty nine." And I said, Biden. And he's like, yeah. He's like, yeah. 
Biden screwed us. The guy's like, uh, the price keeps going up and up. It's usually like a dollar, you know, a gallon. And uh, he, he, I, all, my first words were Biden. And the guy's like, yeah, I know what you're talking about. We can't even get our surplus. Uh, so he said winter could be iffy. So you might want to stock up now and the price keeps rising. And then we'll top you off right before winter. But he says, I'm having a hard time getting a, a bulk. They always have a bulk of surplus, you know, for the winter. Right. And he's saying supplies are even down. And and then we started talking politics and shit. It was awesome. It was awesome. Well, the thing is that more and more people, even people who voted for Biden, are starting not to like him at all and i think it's so funny because oh it's backfiring big time yeah they, they they were like oh my gosh why is the economy shitty why is gas prices going up why 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 do we have inflation yeah. well why did he give away trillions of dollars oh why why is every country our uh, bitch now yeah it's yeah. it's like that uh, and, and Pat, I heard the, wait, Pat, I heard that California wants to legalize uh, psychedelic drugs, and I'm like, that's all they need right now. <laughs> yeah, that's all they freaking need. Oh, my favorite California news lately is if I have a female penis, I can go ahead and walk into the women's locker room and wave it, wave it around as long as it's a female penis. <laughs> It's cuckoo, baby. It is cuckoo. But yeah, when I when I saw the psychedelics, I'm like, oh, that's gonna make traffic even better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not like they're not already doing it. It's just they won't go to jail for it. Yeah. Uh, but no, it's already insane. I'm, I'm the drive home. It's like. You know, I get PTSD after my drive home. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, some someday, Pat, you can retire to the other house, and it's all good. Well, that's what's pissing me off. Damn Nevada and the, the no eighty percenters law. Mm. So I, I got rifles now that are legal in California, but not legal in Nevada. Are you kidding me? That is crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. So what 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 did Nevada ban? Uh, unserialized firearms. Oh, uh, so basically they want you to put a serial number on it and pay the registration. Now, the big thing is, I mean, with, uh, with this, is that uh, if you put your own serial number on your firearm, they're calling it a, uh, a counterfeit serial number. Yeah, I, I saw that law come to play. Screw them. Don't, don't even freaking abide. Yeah. So oh, I don't, it won't make it work. It's been a couple years. It's fucked up. Excuse my friend. Dude, this Thompson Center Cup is a LRR, LRR bolt. Super easy to take apart. Uh. Yeah, that doesn't make any goddamn sense. I don't understand. It's not supposed to make sense. But they're screwing with us. That's what's going on. The you know, hookers are still legal. Got 
Yes, I am. Yes, I am. All right. Rebarreling all kinds of things there, Echo. What, brother? So I'm rebarreling all kinds of actions now. Oh, you are? <laughs> yeah. Thompson Center Long Range Rifle, the LRR. It's basically a TC Venture. Yeah. Dude, I'm pretty impressed. The bolt, the bolt's friggin' beefy as hell. Look at look how beefy that bolt is. And it's it's pretty smooth. Oh wow. Yeah. Six, what caliber is that? It's gonna be a 308. Oh okay. But. 60 degree bolt throw. Super smooth. Oh. Two up two upgrades we're doing on this one. Did, is that a friend of yours that bought that gun stock and you're just building him something out of it? Yeah, someone reached out to me. I think he's from um uh, from Virginia. Virginia. Oh. We're going to throw on their precision recoil lug on there. And then we got this, uh, where's it at? Oh, yeah. It's freaking truck axle over barrel. <laughs> <laughs> truck axle, literally. Ah. So. That, that looked good. Good old honking barrel. Who makes that barrel, Kenny? This one is Douglas. I've been yeah. having really good luck with Douglas and um They make some good stuff. Yeah. I'm more of a cut rifle person. I kinda of believe more in the cut rifle. Douglas is a button rifle. They're kind of a hybrid. So they are button rifled, but their carbide button, how they pull it, it actually cuts the metal too. So it's kinda of weird. It's kind of a hybrid, two step. But uh, even with all the crap that's going on, I could call Douglas right now. And right on the deadline, every two weeks, on two-week mark, they will ship out a barrel that I that I had designed. So they, they have been my go-to lately. Excalibur's good barrels. I had really good luck with them, but they are 18 weeks on the back order. Yeah, it's just unacceptable when you have people yeah. waiting. The hell in the hell are we supposed to stay in business? You got 18 freaking weeks to get a barrel? It's stupid. Yeah, that would. I don't have $65,000 to drop down on freaking 200, 300 barrels. Like yeah. Like most people do. Yeah. That's, see, that's that's how they get you. They, they try to get you into these contracts where they require you to buy 25 barrels right off yeah. the bat. And you're yeah. like... Well, I can't afford that. Well, somebody else will. And uh, you're just like, well, you were a small company once. Why don't you help another small company get started? Right. Sometimes yeah. that works. Sometimes it doesn't. Yep. I tried these guys out. So. This, this barrel shot like dog crap so my seven psalm is once again on the back burner <laughs> that thing's been uh, uh just, just hanging out in the back area for many moons yep i got a uh, here i am sitting on um what do you call it? Uh, who's, who dies of these? I got a $200 die set right now for the 7 Psalm that I can't even use. Uh, Short Action Customs, they made a, uh, they, they matched the reamer for me and the brass and made my own custom pulling size and die, which now I know how to do that. So I'm making my own dies now. Save you a little money. Yeah. The only thing that I need to figure out is the um, is how to 
polish up the uh, inside of the die a little better. That's going to be a wet polish. It, it, that's I guarantee a wet polish. It's it's going to be done with water and an abrasive, almost like a lapping compound. Okay. Something that you would cut jewelry with, polished jewelry. Okay, see, I was going to ask you that because I what it looks like a mirror finish to me still causes uh, scratches on the brass, and that's what Wesky Bino was saying too. It's definitely a a finishing touch you got to do. So, like a two thousand yeah. grit, grit sandpaper and, and water. We'll yeah, it's it makes it's almost like a lapping compound, but it's it's even smoother than that. Okay. And basically, um, what they do is they'll go in and they'll hit it with that, and it's like the final thing that they do is the polish. In most um, uh, dye manufacturers, will polish the body and not polish the neck very much so that the neck when the the neck area is a little uneven so that when you're pulling the brass out of the die the neck doesn't stretch cuz it's a little bit rough there so it's not making contact like it does on the body i got gotcha. you huh Okay. Well. Well, you know who you need to talk to. Me and you need to do a chat with with um. Wayne from Mighty Armory. That'd be great, man. Because uh, I know they they well what they're saying is that they don't even use sizing reamers, which I know they could do that with uh, Termax CNC. So they have a single point cutter. A really fine single point cutter that is going off on profile. Um, there's six millimeter Creedmoor die. I have, I have, I got their die, and it's got two uh, too little neck tension on this one. So I use it still, but it's still too it's too little neck tension. Jim go? I don't know. I'll check to see if he dropped himself out accidentally. No, I don't have anybody else. Unless Jim hit me up with a, a text, maybe. Let me see. Where's my goddamn phone? I don't even see my phone. Warm Coke. Oof. That's tasty. Thirsty, though. <laughs> Where the hell is my phone? I got my, uh, Blue Game CT press all hooked up to the case feeder. Uh, my bench is a disaster right now. I don't want to show that. <laughs> oh, I'm looking at your guys' OCD bench. I'm like, you guys aren't even reloading. There's no way you guys are reloading. <laughs> All right. Come back, dude. I didn't see that you got kicked out. I wish Tanky was on here so I could show how fast his, how fast his ACP press is. Here, I'll put it on top of the uh, Coke can. There we go. Ready? I'm, pr I'm priming cases. This is what I'm doing. Okay. Good old 41 primers. How the hell do I get down to Alright, did I get 
Uh, okay. God. Are we back? Yes. Thanks. God, I'm retarded. I didn't realize. Somebody let me know if Jim or anybody gets kicked out. Uh, I was hounding you and everything on the phone. Uh. My phone was in the bathroom. I didn't realize. I'm like, where's my phone? <laughs> I'm like, I bet somebody video was calling me. Next to your coffee. <laughs> yeah. So that's the ACP, and it's good for priming, huh? Yeah. So it doesn't like CCI 41 primers. It tends to flip it over. But yeah. it's, it's really a feel thing. Like, if I feel like it's going in tight, I know for sure that primer is uh, upside down or something, you know? Huh. So, but it does like every other primer besides the 41s. I don't know. Something's different with the 41s. Yeah, the 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 uh, cup is harder and thicker. That's what it did. See, that's what it does. It puts it on the side, so it doesn't feed as well down the. Tube. No, but the C the CCI um, 450s work really well. I'm just I'm all out of 450s. I got nothing. I'm using 41s. Uh. But, but I just did literally 30 cases right now within a minute. So. Can't beat that. ACP press for the win. And can you feel it? Yeah, you can, you can feel the, the primers, how they go in. And every single one, I'm not joking, is like within one thousandth or one ten thousandth of primer seating depth. Huh. So it's very, it's very accurate. Cool. Cool. Uh. I love the I love the thing. I don't know. It works well for me. Yeah, I gotta try the swager on the APP. Yeah, I can send you that. I, I don't. I'm not, I'm not doing a lot of uh, you know, 223 cases right now. So. No, I'm just, I'm just gonna wait till there. Everything gets back to normal. I, right now, I'll just use the prep center to do the pockets gotcha yeah yeah so the 41s um they're a harder cup i think it's because they're using what zinc or something um it's something like that. They're made for free float rifles with yeah. free float firing pins. For slam fires, yeah. Yeah. I'm getting like stupid crazy SDs though out of it. Like I'm like in the fours and fives with this cartridge. So it, it's weird because you switch over the primer. It's crazy how much a primer really affects your powder ignition. Because if I, if I go to like CCI 500s, um, or whatever, or 400s, uh, they they jump up the SD to like 12 to 20. Huh. Oh, yeah. The 450s get around 8 or 9. The 41s are, are for some reason a better a better primer for this cartridge. And then uh, my Savage has got pretty, uh, a pretty wide firing pin hole so if I go with a softer primer it tends to kind of get a primer cratering or, or a hole punching effect yeah I like it to get a little press Boom. 
done. And that is 25 cases. Ready to go. Jim's going to lose it on my, my dirty reloading bench. <laughs> no, my, mine's kind of messy, so no. Oh, boy. I got like seven different cartridges right now all over this bench. Yeah. But but I do have, uh, always got to have that thing labeled. Yeah. So, number one thing, if you have a, relo a dirty reloading bench, if you do anything anything other than uh, than this, so you don't remember anything other than this, label your freaking powder on yeah. your hoppers. <laughs> yeah. Because what I will have, happen... Uh... Yeah, I, I have uh, paper sleeves. You know, you tape a piece of paper together, a little ring, and yeah. the, and then I put it on top of my powder when I put it back. So every time I put the ring on whatever I'm using, yeah, it slips on and off. So the folks don't know why. It's because when you get a jug like this, and you're like, oh, let me just throw this powder back in here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ba boom bad, bad, yeah bad. you see that price right there you just lost 250 dollars yep <laughs> that would be bad you just made some of the most expensive fertilizer yep i got uh you, you need any more of this stuff jim i got 20 pounds no i'm i'm good i'm good i appreciate you finding me some yeah i haven't done blackout for a while i need to you need CFP? Mm -hmm. You need any of this powder? I got like. No, I'm uh, good. I'm good. All right. Thanks anyway, though. I got a bomb in here. I got to get rid of this stuff because if the ATF agent comes in here, they're going to be like, holy shit. <laughs> how many. How, what are you allowed to store on property there in your state? In my county, I think it's only 20 pounds. Yeah. So, uh, and, and I think it's 20 pounds of um, black powder or what they consider ignition powder. So I, I think smokeless powder may be, uh, may be um, allowed. Mm. I, I, I'm just not sure. Well, you can always put them in five gallon buckets and market something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, my main thing is um, I did a smart move and got it out of my house. Yeah. So. No. You don't want, you know, a lot of folks, I guess, really don't consider this, but dude, you never know, man. You, you got something that sparks or something in your room that goes off and you have all that powder and you're sleeping, dude. That's huge. You, you, uh, you ain't getting fast. out of that. Yeah. You'll see how fast your, your house will light on fire. Yeah, powder and primers. Yeah. So, um, you know, everybody that's hoarding all these primers, and I notice a lot of the guys that do that are over there in South Carolina, Virginia area, all the uh, really humid states. They're storing these powders in, like, their basement or whatever, let the humidity just kill them. So, all of those wasted primers and humidity. Oh, yeah, dude. You... you you got to be careful how you store your shit. Yeah, we're lucky it's dry here, so. <laughs> I'm looking at AB's comment. 224 from 9 millimeter cases? I could definitely build you a 22 TCM rifle there, AB. If you want to get stupid, I could do a 2... 22, 22 Lapua, Lapua. That's a real cartridge there. I could have heard of that. The what? A 22 Lapua. 22 Lapua. Never heard of it. <laughs> Somebody made it, dude. It's a 22 caliber. 90 grain AMAX out of a 338 Lapua case. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. 
Don't you yeah. think that's going to erode the throat quick? No, no, that's not a barrel burner at all. No? No, it, it's, it's not. You'll get like maybe 200 rounds. I mean, that's a lot of, a lot of ammunition. You you only need to shoot you only need to shoot that once. What happened to Pat? I don't know. What's that, Rebel? He's not. Not at the bottom. Oh, he's there, but he's not there. Yeah, he's in the side deal. Or he he's in the he's in the oh no he's there he's just not available. He's uh busy fixing something. Looks like we got gun websites and sixty seven rebel SST amps. There he is here. Uh oh. Twenty four point seven. Let's see if we can. Get you to come up a little bit there. Is my sound pretty good with this uh, webcam where it is? Yeah. Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you a little more quiet than uh, Echo. You said a little louder? You hear me a little louder than Echo? Echo's loud. He's the loudest. Should I turn myself down? I don't know. I think he, he turned Jim up a little bit so I could barely hear him. It must be my iPad mic. I don't know where the damn thing is. Well, the StreamYard likes to auto-tune your, uh, your mic, mic levels. Yeah, I'll just have to yell at it. I don't know if I want to do a chat tomorrow night. Maybe I'll do it at noon or something. Yeah. Why? You don't want to be up late? I want to watch the UFC. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. There is mega fight. That's a killer card. Yeah, I haven't been keeping up on that. But, yeah, there's a few guys I've seen come up that I need to start looking into again. I kind of stopped watching TV. We uh, we got rid of our cable TV for a little bit. Well, the prelims are going to be good, and the rest is pay-per-view, which I can't watch, but I can kind of snipe tidbits off of YouTube from it. Yeah. But it's a mega card. Yeah, it's a big one. And all the crowd's back. No COVID bullshit. So, it'll probably break records. Awesome. But one guy you should watch is Ryan Hall. Um, he's been injured or had issues with uh, opponents and everything. This guy looks like a regular guy, about 5'10", right? Right. You would never know he's an MMA guy, and he is called... They nicknamed him the Wizard. He is the man when it comes to jujitsu. Huh. And he will just shoot for your ankles and then uh, snap your knee right in two seconds. I mean, you're tapping out in two seconds. And the, oh my God. And this guy's been off for so long. It's so good to see him back again. But he, this guy, I've never seen anyone like this guy. He's like a spider. Anyway, everyone's afraid to, everyone's afraid to fight him because he'll just uh, go for the leg and, and twist. <laughs> it's, it's awesome. And he never, you know, and there's no harm, no foul. He could fight two minutes later, you know. It's yeah. awesome. So I can't, I, you know, it's been so long since that guy's been uh, in there. And he's on the prelim, so he's free on TV. And then Carlos, if, if you remember Carlos Condit, he's yeah. awesome. 
He's on the prelim, so that's all he's three. Of them. Oh, hell yeah. Carlos is on the prelim, and he's free. So, okay. and then you got McGregor Portier. Yeah, you know, McGregor. Yeah, and they, I saw that. They, yeah. I was just fun to watch. I just, I just and then, you, watch and then you got uh, the 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 card before that is Wonder Boy. Okay. Oh, Wonder Boy's on too. Wonder Boy, baby, it's everybody. Dude, you may not see me this weekend either, man. Yeah. So. No, I'll probably be on freaking call anyway, driving out to the damn desert. Yeah, I know. It'll be good to see Wonder Boy and Paul again. Oh my God. I don't know. They were on the on the thing. They were in the kitchen and then laundry room, maybe. Yeah. So anyway, that's good stuff. I might do it early just so I can chill. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in. A, I've been contacted by Burris. They want me to be one of their ambassadors. Awesome. Which is, um, I, I told them I'm not one to, to play lightly with, uh, with reviews. <laughs> yeah, I, I have one of their scopes I don't like. It's too dark. And then oh. I have one I do like, but it's only a one to four tactical scope, you know. Yeah, they're, they're coming out with a crap ton of new optics, which are going to hit the market for a lot cheaper than the Vortexes with better quality. I've seen it first-handed. Cool. Um, there's still a thousand six hundred dollars scope. I mean, for the really top of line stuff, but compared to what's out in the market now, or three thousand dollars, I mean, it's it just gets stupid expensive. Yeah, I have an older. They call it dusk to dawn, right? Yeah. And it's the darkest damn. Thing. It's supposed to be brighter at dusk and dawn. It's the darkest scope I have. You know, it's not an expensive scope, but still, it shouldn't be dark blue when you look through it. Yeah, yeah. They, they had a 1 and 8 power um, LDPO that I was really interested in a long time ago, or a 1 and 10 power, and they, they discontinued it because no one wanted to spend that much money on it. But um, yeah. I don't know. I, I You know me. I don't like being freaking told what to do. If I want to do a review, I'm going to do a review. So. That's right. I'm gonna respect to sex. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah, respectfully decline. <laughs> well the whole thing is it's like, hey, look, if you want me to do a good review, build a good product. Yeah. Yeah. Well and you it, know and I really highlight all the positive stuff on the product. Like honestly the Arden scope is a really good scope for the money. But what gets me is everybody's portraying that scope, you know, like the big you know, Rex, you know, Tyrosaurus Rex and all of them are really showing off that this scope is like, plays in line with like the, uh, the freaking, um, Schmidt and Bender. Schmidt. Yeah, yeah, it's not a Schmidt Bender. I'm sorry. It's not yeah. even a Vortex. Yeah. yeah, the glass is not even near a Vortex. Uh, and then everybody keeps shitting on the Strike Eagle. I'm like, where are they getting that idea that Strike Eagle sucks? Like, because I, I have like five of those freaking scopes. I've purchased about 10 of those scopes. Oh, I'm sorry. And honestly, dude, people would cringe if you see my Strike Eagle right now. I got battle scars and dent on that scope that you would never think that thing still works. You know what it is, Kenny? A lot. I think those Strike Eagles. The, the first focal plane ones, I think that they had a bad batch of them when they first came out because I heard, I heard a bunch of people saying that they went through one, they sent it back, and the second one they got did the same thing, so they got a refund. They didn't even go for the third one, but I heard guys that did go for the third one actually got a scope that was but what they were supposed to get huh. I mean, yeah. I you that. Have just, to. yeah you shouldn't have to do that like, like you're saying so no yeah, i think what you're saying is that they probably did have a uh, a quality issue and all of that kind of hit exactly when covid was hitting and things were going downhill so i don't know well the whole thing was it was a new product line it was it, it was a brand new scope and anytime you have a new product that gets released, nine out of ten times there's some bugs. 
Well, and I, I just I just watched Joe Joe Reyes' video on the uh, Vortex Venom, and dude, I, I love Joe's um, Joe's channel. He's got a great channel, and I, I really respect him. But I almost wanted to call BS with the image quality that he was showing on that uh, that Vortex Venom because I'm like. I know I'm Asian, but I got 2020 vision, and I'm not seeing that. There's no way in hell that they have a fish eye freaking view, because the one that I have, I have a vortex venom right now. It doesn't look anywhere near that kind of glass quality. I don't have that fish eye effect. It isn't. I could definitely tell if you really zoom into the lens at full power. A 20. You get apparitions. Yeah, it, it's not as clear as a Strike Eagle. It is definitely not anywhere near a PST. So you are you are losing that quality on the yeah. but it's not like that fish eye that he showed on his channel, which I have a feeling he may have had his something off on that one. He got a bad scope. Yeah, because I but that's that's the thing. See when I base my reviews, like for instance that Arkin SH four, I've seen I have um I have Idaho's SH four. I had Idaho's SH four four to sixteen for the last three months playing around with it so i know exactly the kind of quality that thing had so when i saw the 6 to 24 i was like dude this thing is horrible as far as um ibox the ibox was just bad for me you know where i guess if you're a, a, you know somebody that just gets behind the rifle and shoots targets all day long or you're just staying still like f class that would work for them but when i tried that at a match out here, I freaking totally sucked because I couldn't find my freaking target. Everything was black in, black in my uh, eye box area. I couldn't find it. I was losing time. I, I noticed myself struggling on trying to adjust the scope to get it parallaxed correctly. Um, yep. <laughs> and the funny part about Strike Eagle was no problem at all. And that's, you know, about, about 200 bucks more. That's why I said pay $200 more to probably get a better scope. My recommendation for an optic that's competition that doesn't break the bank is the uh, Athlon Helos VTR. That, that's actually a pretty good scope for the money. So, I don't know. I base, I base my reviews because I've been playing around with it for a while. People think, oh, you. Oh, you, you just got the scope, or you just you just saying it? I'm like, no, dude. I've been playing around with this thing. Everything that I do, like even the six arc before I went out blasting, that the six arc doesn't work in the six arc, or six arc doesn't work in the AR-15, is because I've been playing around with it for months. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, digging uh, Pat's camera angle. He gave us all the wires. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and then in the side chat, Devil Dog knows what I'm talking about. It's going to be a good card. And Uncle John, Uncle John, his name is Ryan Hall. Just YouTube Ryan Hall, and you will see some jujitsu, baby. <laughs> All right. <Okay>. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't have expensive scopes, so I, I all I know is what crap versus garbage is. <laughs> yeah, so I just judge crap by gar versus garbage. Well, I'm and still I can tell roof, good man. crap against garbage. Yeah, I I have no problem taking my CV life scope out right now and going a thousand yards. You know, all it is, all a good scope is, is nothing but a tool. If you know how to use a tool, then that makes you a better shooter. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a poor craftsman that blames his tools. Here I am using a hundred and ten dollar press, turning out sub MOA range pickup ammo that I paid forty three dollars for five hundred of these Hornady bullets. Right. You gotta get the you gotta get the value pack. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think folks, uh, you know, some folks realize that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on stuff to really go have fun. So. Well, I mean, if you want to spend thousands of dollars, there's there's that, but you don't have to. Yeah. I mean, I I really believe in that buy once, buy once too. But 
realistically, when you have seven rifles or six rifles, you're not going to buy one, try one for all seven rifles. <laughs> yeah, dude. That, that, <laughs> unless, I, I, unless, yeah, unless you're some kind of, uh, you're divorced or you're just got shit ton of money. And uh, that's not me. I was thinking about, you know, what, you know, getting you and Uncle Jim and starting a whorehouse up there uh, out in the, um, and, um, and, uh, where, where's that at right there where Pat's got a house? Um, oh, Vegas. Yeah, in Vegas. Yeah. They have one. It's called the Ranch. Mustang Ranch, I think. No, I couldn't hear No, no. Last what time, was I, went to, last time what? I went to Vegas, we had the bellboy at the room, you know, looking for his tip, and he goes, hey, if you want a good time, and it was the Mustang Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they still call it that, but that was... What I, I, think it, I think they do. I think I want to say they still yeah. do. Yeah, he's trying to give me a tip, and it's like, I already know about that crap. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I got me a bunch of ammo to go shoot tonight. All right. Right now, it's cool enough to shoot. It was miserable. Yeah. I, I shot a five round group in the morning and I said, that's it, I'm done. And then in the <laughs> afternoon, and I said, that's it, I'm done. Yeah. It's just not as enjoyable when you just bring in wet, sweating. Oh, uh, I don't know how yeah. Kenny does it. It's just hot. You're not <laughs> enjoying it yeah. at all. Yeah, my son's out there complaining. I'm like, it's only 105 out here. Dude, if, if I was your son, I would have you build a fucking swimming pool and I would be shooting from one of those bars in the swimming pool with like a virgin um, uh, pina colada and shooting from the pool. He's got a swimming pool. So I almost did a video where I was on my boat and I was going to shoot off my boat into a BLM lamp. I almost did a video on that until I found out that you can't legally do that. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. That would have been an awesome video. I'm just chilling in one of those floaties with a freaking bolt action just shooting into a BLM lamp. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I had a swimming pool, there'd be a lot of videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There'd be all kinds of shit going on. <laughs> well, I was starting to do videos on that, and it kind of, I think, was saving my ass. Luckily, I didn't shoot underwater with that freaking 44 mag. I would have blew my eardrums out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because it, it destroyed my GoPro. The, the microphone on the GoPro is on my first, on one of 10 GoPros that I had that I shot, completely destroyed the microphone on it. <laughs> so, hence the reason why I made a uh, target cam or was pursuing a target cam because I kept shooting my GoPros. <laughs> so, big thanks to Pat on that one for helping out. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, yeah. I, I shot a group the other day that was so bad. I never posted the video, but. It was a shotgun pattern, and I'm like, I'm glad the camera's not out there. And so <laughs> I regrouped and did some better loads, and I called it a shotgun pattern with a choke. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it, was a, it was a little better, but it was a shotgun with a choke. Oh, oh shoot. my gosh. I still can't figure out what the hell happened. Yeah. Um, I got an, an, another uh, another M22 Rock Island nine millimeter bolt gun to build now. Uh, oh, you right got now. you found one in stock. I, well, it's someone someone built. They sent it to me to do it. Oh, okay. Is it a wood stock or the? the no, no, it's uh, the tactical stock like you have. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when they come back in stock, I'm gonna order those things. 
Yeah, I got to do a video on that, uh, dissecting it, showing everything about it. It's just yeah. too hot. I was going to do it because yeah, yeah, I was going to do it because it was hot out. But then I was like, oh, my my bench is a mess. I can't do it here. Yeah. So you know, I got I got a brass notification today, Jim, and I forgot all about you. They got Lapua nine millimeter. Oh shoot. <laughs> I, I, I bought that um that was an SG Armory the one you sent me there, Pat. I, I got a box coming. Oh, and I got I got more um here. Hold on a second. I got more pistol brass. A pistol. Wait, brass wait brass. a minute. Lapua nine millimeter brass. That's nice. Nine millimeter Ruger Lapua brass. Lapua match nine millimeter. That's got to be crazy price. Anything that has Lapua on it has got to be expensive. Oh, my God. Why even bother doing 9mm? Oh, my God. Because you could get it. Yeah, yeah but... If, if you've got a max bolt action 9mm, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> okay, I see what you're saying, but no. 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 no I'm looking it up right now. Hold on. Where was it? Yeah. No, nine millimeter. It's all mixed brass, oh, progressive. Check it out there. Yeah. Okay, for a thousand pieces, it's only two eighty nine ninety five. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where? How much was it? You guys are bad influence. I got freaking a case of this stuff now. Oh yeah, baby. I got five of these things that come right now. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. How much was it for a thousand pieces of brass? Two eighty nine. So basically, what you pay for Winchester ammunition loaded? Yeah, but it's just a four on the bottom. <laughs> Two eighty nine, almost three hundred bucks for a thousand. Oh my god. Yep. Here you go, Pat. Right. I want some more for you. Hey, you can shoot a one-inch group at at 25 yards. Everybody's hey, like Winchester standard small primers. All right. Yeah. So, Kenny, how do you like to smell a G96? I love it. It's way better than freaking Ballastol. I know you'd love it. It's awesome stuff, man. 296. G96. Yeah, you're totally bubblegum. Yeah, to me it smells like eggnog, but everyone else is bubble gum. Well, it's, it, it's, it does. I can see what the eggnog smells like because it's very close. Yeah. Isn't isn't 296 H110? No, no. We're talking G96 gun cleaner. You oh, G90. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah. Now I, yeah. That shit's I, the bomb. I made, I made Amazon go out of stock, dude. I, I bought all five of it. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, people were buying it off uh, Amazon because of my video. I think it was... Me, you have been pumping that product. And literally, Uncle Jim, and I was mentioning it and in one of my videos after you brought it up. Then you brought it up again. And yeah. each time I checked Amazon and each time the number of cans they had in stock would withdraw by about nine bottles <laughs> and i was like holy shit we're wiping them out of g96 yeah i know i got a lot of replies that people ordered it on amazon Dude, they should that stuff works great man I, I got rid of using using hoppies um clp that stuff's awesome yeah no the uh, echo knows the g96 is awesome stuff yeah it's yeah. just great well, what's cool out here, like you're saying, it leaves a very fine fill um, of oil. Yeah. But, you, you know, say you take your pistol apart, spray it, brush it, whatever, wipe it off. Anything you missed is lubed and protected. I love that. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And it's so easy. It doesn't stink. You can do it in the house. It's just great stuff. I can't live with that. That's one thing I can't live without, cleaning-wise. Yep. I would have to second that. 
yeah anything else i can adjust but that we can change really, yeah but that really bugs me if i don't have g96 yeah I gotta get off a six mil bandwagon. I got freaking ass loads of six mil cards or bullets. I keep buying it. I keep forgetting I have five hundred of this, five hundred. <laughs> so, well, you you buying all this six millimeter and you're shooting six arc, but yeah, what else are you shooting that six millimeter? Well, I got a six by forty seven that I haven't shown on the channel yet, and then I have a six okay. three one. Oh, six Creed more the other one that everybody's talking about. Okay. Well, the six Creed more, uh, the six by forty-seven, and then I I'm I want to get into a twenty. Well, I'm building a guy right now a twenty-five Creed more, our, a Ruger RPR. So that's gonna be a pretty interesting little little cartridge. Okay, AAB says that uh, Winchester two ninety-six. Does better for them in longer barrels than H110. I actually prefer the 296, but yeah. my batches are older. But they they do a little better than the H110, even though it's supposed to be the same. Yeah, I do like the 296. So if I if I saw both of them on the shelf next to each other, I would get the 296. Uh, I need a, uh, do you have a 300 blackout load, Jim, for a 135 grain bullet or 150 grain cast lead? Oh, I'm sure I do, yeah. Wait, it's going to be an wait. H110 296 load. Is there one for 1680 or no, or 1680 for subsonic? I'm sure you could get away with 1680, but I wait until they're uh, over 150 grain, you know. Okay. You know, I, li I like the 1680. I, I, you know, uh, for the heavier bullets or suppress, but uh, um, H110 and other, you know, there's. But yeah, you should be able to quick load it. I could probably walk down and look at my scrap notes somewhere. Well, I bought a shit ton of 1680 for the. Wait, uh, wait a minute. 135 grain. You sent me some bullets, and I know I shot it with H110. Okay. So I, I probably have some scrap paper written somewhere. Yeah. Well, I did. My uh, my 135 load for cast lead is 18 grains. And it's a pretty hot charge, but it's pretty freaking accurate with the cast lead. Okay, like a 155 is kind of like a 16 grain, I think, so. Okay. Okay. That, that kind of makes sense. Another one is uh, 300 uh, BLK, or what do they call it? Um, black, you know, the powder. Yeah, it's like, a CFE black. CFE black. That one you can just, you know that. You could load it to the base of the bullet, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, I know that powder is really good because you can't hit pressures with that. You could have that thing all the way full and friggin'. Yeah, you could you could almost trail bust it to the base of the bullet and you never blow up. <laughs> right, right. On 300 blackout. Yeah. So, I got a crap ton of uh, 1680. I, I only have a pound left of 296. I need to build 300 blackout bullets so I can go have fun full auto. Well, I, I shot your 135s with H110 or 296. I'm sure I got something scribbled down down there. Okay. But right now I'm upstairs and I'm laying down. <laughs> yeah. We shall see. Well, okay, let's see. James Puller said he used 18 grains with a cast 137. Yeah, that's about right. That's about right. Because the heavier 155s are more like 16. So that's right. That okay. sounds right. Okay, 19.4. Okay, that's what he's saying. Um, I see. Yeah, AABs. Well, I'm shooting that, uh, that HGC bullet. I, I even have these ones. 
these are the spiral point plain base. Okay. And uh, these are a uh, 150 grain, I believe. Yeah, uh, that looks bigger. So that would be more like 16 grains. Yeah, 156. Bullets. These are one 156 bullets, plain okay. base. Yeah, so that'd be 15 to 16 grains of H110, 296. So around uh, yeah. there. I just need a load of crap ton to go have fun. So what's going on is we have a feral hog or a javelina javelin infestation. And oh, they want to nice. they want to bring me along with a couple of other FFL SOT threes up nice. in a up in a helicopter with automatics. Oh, uh, that'd be sweet. That's that's like a joy job. <laughs> so I figured if I could get you know me and Hyder's of Heat, they, they got like asked for the drum mags, the D60 drum mags. So we'll, we'll load up all the D60 drum mags. Uh, I'll shoot a 300 blackout um, and use a Thunder, P, Thunder B suppressor. And let's go to town with a crap ton of the ca cast lead bullets. Oh. Oh. No. I think that'll be a pretty cool, cool little video. Yeah, it'd be fun and quiet. Yeah. They, um, so, <laughs> so Sean, the owner of High Desert Heat, he wanted to bring up an M249 or M60. <laughs> they, they said, no, too big of a gun. This is one of those little small speed choppers. <laughs> so they, they told him no. So then he brought out a top <laughs> gun. <laughs> so he's bringing yeah. a top gun up there, which is going to be pretty hilarious. Uh, huh. I don't know what a Tommy gun's gonna do to a feral hog. It's only nine mil. Oh, it's gonna knock the sh what what is it, nine mil? Nine mil. <laughs> uh yeah. Oh, it'll yeah, kill him. It's just not gonna knock him down. Well it's it's either either that or he has a uh he has a flipping grenade launcher, but the one of those drum one drum mag ones that are converted yeah. to shotgun shells. He can shoot shotgun shells out of it too. Man, I'd be using my big two forty grainers. Uh, that would penetrate all the way through the shoulders. And it what your uh, your your forty five AR? No, it's three hundred blackout. Okay. Subsonics. They penetrate. They keep going. They don't. I I've gone through. I don't even have enough milk jugs to hold them. They keep going. They'll penetrate both sides, probably tumble. Uh, I don't know about a helicopter, though, how far that is. And well, so. from from what I was told, what they do is they they round them in. They have a ground crew that's going to be chasing them inward and getting the uh, the hog, the, the family of hogs that run in a certain direction. And then the helicopter will chase them and then pan sideways for me to shoot and go sideways about 30 to 40 feet above ground. Oh, so that's so, close. Yeah, 30 so you're, you're really yards, close. Thirty to forty yeah. yards. I'd, yeah, I'd say within fifty yards, fifty to seventy-five okay. yards. We're going to be right on top of these things. Yeah, I'd, I'd so, be using the big two forty-grain subs on them. Two forty-grain subs, okay. Because they they don't. Yeah, they just yeah. keep going through stuff because they're going slow. Yeah. But they're heavy, and when they tumble and hit stuff, they just keep going. Well, I, I gotta I try it out. Um, I gotta do some some testing on the loads to make sure I don't have any jams or something when I'm in the helicopter, obviously. So, I, you know, I'm bringing two. Uh, I'm bringing the uh, post sample M16 that I have, and then I have an auto sear um, AR that I'll bring. So I have two two guns, one for backup. So. Wow, that sounds like fun. Yeah, it's a it's a four man chopper, so it'll be basically one other person with me. I'm thinking of bringing my friend David um, to do the filming and help me out. Uh, he he can shoot too, but it's only one person shooting at a time. So whatever the, the chopper pans over to is uh mm. shooting, you know. And um, I'm afraid of helicopters, dude. I, I'm freaking dead scared of helicopters, to be honest. Really, I don't, like, I don't like them the way they. Yeah, when they go up like this or they come down, I, it, it gets me, dude. I don't like it at all. Yeah, they're supposed to be safer than a plane when they come down. You know. I don't know. 
I've been in a lot of problems. It, this it all time. depends on who's got the auto rotation, uh, the uh, the collective, and the yoke in their hands, and the pedals on their feet. Yeah, but if if it craps out, they're supposed to kind of slow down as they hit. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You can auto. That's what they call auto rotate. The the blade starts spinning backwards by itself, and you get one time to pull up on the collective, and it will slow you down. And you usually kiss the ground pretty hard, but yeah. it's survivable. Now, Kenny, you're going to be in an R44, I bet, and that's got a real problem with uh, the rotor blades hitting the tail. So, yeah. just be careful. You know, that's funny, A.B., I'm actually thinking about building a 6.5 Grendel, too, just to have, because I have a craft set of the 125s. Huh. You know what sucks, though, Jim, is that uh, we can shoot them, but we can't, we can't have any of them. We can't eat them. Well, you're probably better off that way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. The freaking javelinas out here are really yummy. Uh, I had a couple of them out there. They're good. I, I don't know. I thought they were pretty gamey, the javelinas. Yeah. So that's 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 a, one of the reasons why they're getting rid of them. They're actually a rabbit. A lot of them are rabbit or have some kind of disease. I'd, I'd probably use an AK on them. AK for yep. you, baby. Take an AK and that'll get her done. Bunch of cheap ass steel case ammo. Yeah, it'll go right through them and keep on pulling the trigger. Well, I'm just trying to make a cast, but the cast lead bullet look good. I've done it at the match here with the cast lead 40 cal, so trying to make a 300 blackout shine. Man, we don't have any hogs around here. Otherwise, I'd be shooting them. Yeah. No vermin around here. I got. Is this even a 223 case? Jesus, this thing's so full of powder. That was like full. What the hell? Is this a 204? Yeah, just don't shoot the hogs with the two two three. That ain't gonna do it. I've seen so many of them shot like nine times, and they're still running and and whining and squealing. Yeah, that's not right. No, it ain't right. You want a heavy bullet? Well, I wish I could build a four fifty bomb like like that has. I use that and make it look a lot of. <laughs> uh, you want you want to buy the upper? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't want to destroy your bolt here. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to go full auto, we could always try your 450 SOCOM and go try it. I think yeah. the martini would do quite well on a hug. Uh, <laughs> 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 you know, that would be automatic martini, Henry. That would be the best ever. That would be so funny in a helicopter. It just doesn't oh, yeah. it. it doesn't go together. Yeah. No. And I almost are. think. I almost think I could go a lever gun or a pump action martini Henry. It's it's like it's begging to be one. The the freakiest video would be you're wearing a mullet with a martini Henry in a helicopter shooting at hogs. Oh yeah. <laughs> it don't get freakier. <laughs> I think you gave me an idea. You gave me an idea, Pat. If I can make a martini Henry shoot out of a shotgun with a rifle a rifle chambered. I might work because it is it is a shotgun shell. <clears throat> yeah, but nobody makes a twenty four gauge shotgun shell. Oh, I, I didn't hear him. He said, it's, but he said, but nobody makes a twenty eight gauge shotgun shell. It's twenty four gauge. Twenty four gauge. Oh, well, there's twenty four gauge shotguns, right? Well, nobody makes a twenty four gauge anymore. No. Yeah. If I can find a 24 gauge shotgun and make a barrel for it, that might work. Well, no, I, I tell you what, Kenny. I'll loan you a couple of my team handlers and 500 rounds of ammo. If you'll shoot kids in your helicopter, 
and just alternate while they heat up. You get about 10 good shots, and then you're going to have to swap. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know. If you want me to, I'll bring it. <laughs> I'll bully ball some of these pigs for you. <laughs> <laughs> Man, if you're, if you're shooting into a crowd, a 12-gauge slugs would be awesome. You know, if it's in a crowd. You're going to know you hit one when you see one of those pigs go, doo -doo -doo, that way. Starts making noises like from uh, Donkey Kong yeah. when you hit them. Yeah. Shoot. That'd be pretty freaking interesting. Well, there are, there are requirements up in Colorado. So if I show up there with a freaking Martini Henry, <laughs> big ass, big ass rock, rock. Dude, be better yet, Kenny, show up and have one of those Daniel Boone, uh, uh, um, what are they called? Um, the, what the fuck? Is, raccoon, a raccoon hat. Oh. And, yeah. And have a flintlock Kentucky rifle with like the, you know the barrels like thirty six inches. <laughs> what, or I, I know for sure I could cut because my friend here, um, one of the older guys here, he used to be a, like an African. Uh, uh, he went to Africa to do a lot of the hunting, so I could show up there like the Jungle Book, the hunter from the Jungle Book. With that crazy friggin' the hat, the hunker suit, and everything, and the high boots all tied up with a Martini Henry. The show up there looking like that, dude. dude like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. No, they, 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 they probably say, nope, we can't, we can't take you in a helicopter with a freaking black powder rifle. <laughs> 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 they're going to laugh their ass off, though. I would laugh. Yeah. Uh, man, I wish I could. Until they until you bagged one. Yeah. Well they want annihilation. That'll do it. Not in numbers. <laughs> That'll annihilate a few pigs pretty bad. <laughs> I think a foul in full auto would be perfect the way they came. Yeah, yep. yeah, the way they came, it'd be perfect, easy mag changes. Oh yeah. Well, they didn't. They didn't want the M60 because they didn't want the links flying around the uh, floorboard. Yeah. That's why they said no. We don't want to deal with the links. I guess there's electronics or something on on the floorboard that it, that it could fall into. I don't know something they're saying about that. I can see that. You don't want the pilot getting crap under its uh, foot pedals or whatever they use. Yeah, you don't want any kind of shit flying in, in, in the disintegrating links. If you're firing at a certain angle, they can hit the gauges and the electronic equipment on the uh, dashboard. Yeah. Well, I know there's one other system i think it's the 249 that has the belt that doesn't have it has it's a, a kevlar belt or something like that that you can use instead but uh, i'm just going to follow the rules they prefer m16s style really? rifle. yeah they want those instead because we have three a, or five five six really yeah that's what i said ah they just squeal when you hit them with those yeah, well, that's why I said a clear up blackout would be ideal. Now, yeah. if I show up there with a pilot or with a 50 bail wolf, that might kind of question your. 458, 458 was made for that, what yeah. you're trying to do. Right. I don't know, Pat, if you want to, I'll, if I destroy a barrel, I guess I'll buy a new one. But I always wanted to try a whole lot of 458 so far. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah, it's a shoulder a breaker. And I got about, I don't know right now, about 150 rounds or so load up, loaded up with uh, 300 grain hollow points. I could probably get some some brass to load up pretty fast. No, 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 no. That brass is expensive, and now it's super expensive. So don't, don't sweat that. Unless it all falls about the helicopter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 
He's a so brass guy. We're not going to get a brass back, a brass back unless they use a brass catcher, which that's what I plan on doing anyway. Yeah. All right, so no trouble. I'll have it waiting for you on the 17th. And if you need any uh, 1680 for your for your green or blackout, I got eight pounds in the garage. Bring a sugar cup. Yeah, I have. I got another 1680. I just need to come up with powder charge that works for it. So. Um, I don't know. Promise, yeah, bolt, bolt and bear is still going strong. Yeah, Tromix is the way to get out. I actually have a few of their barrel extensions. I think it's superior. Their barrel extensions are awesome. Yeah, Tromix makes some good shit. Tony over there, he's a friend of mine. He right. built some good quality stuff. Yep, it's a Tromix barrel and bolt. So, yeah, shoot it for a while. You can't, don't worry about it. Nobody wants to shoot that gun more than 10 times anyway. <laughs> no. There's no way I can, I can use this for unless you're up there with me. That'd be the only way, man. Because no, it's, be it's got a hollow sun on it. It's perfect. Go wipe out some pigs and send me some video. Okay. Dude, that that gun is not going to hurt. That gun, you're not going to shoot a thousand rounds out of it. It's going to be fine. His barrels are built really well for stainless barrels. Yeah they're they're good it's good stuff I, I wouldn't worry about it you're not gonna hurt it it's only thirty six thousand psi you're not gonna burn the barrel just go for it <laughs> i'm gonna come back all my shoulders are gonna be like all dislocated i'm like i shot your rounds. <laughs> he's like i didn't burn the barrel up but i was shooting so much that i fell out of the helicopter and landed on the gun broke it <laughs> I think I got the right thread locker. It's a Loctite 266. That's the one for the barrel extension, right? 266? Yeah, I have 266. Hold on, let me see. It's been a while since I've looked at them. Let me, I've got them all right here. Oh. I, knew, I knew something's up because they, they sent it in like a freaking pint. I have a pint. Yeah. Pint. Yeah, these are expensive. Look at these things. This is how I get them, too. This big, the big jars. Yeah, that's what I get them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, this is 242, 609, and 609. The it's 609. What, what are you using? It's 266 in orange. Yeah, that's what replaced 609. Okay. That's the newer version of it. Because I, I, I was trying to get 609 recently, and they didn't have any more of it. And I finally had to call. They, they kept sending me other bottles of 609 or uh, of uh, what you bought, that number. And I kept sending them back. And finally, one of the guys was like, hey, dumbass, they changed the number on it. I was like, well, they could have said that in the description. Well. I tell you what, I try to get this barrel extension off <laughs> after I set it in there with that 266. It ain't coming off, dude. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, you, you, you'll break the threads before you get them off. Yeah. Unless you use heat. Well, the reason why I wanted to get it off is if you look at the chamfer inside, I, I did the wrong angle. Okay. Oh. It the, looks good, actually. If you, you look at the feed ramp, it goes it's perfect, right? But supposedly, look at on the, the specs. That's a, that's the wrong angle. That's a uh, that's a twenty-two uh, degree angle that I put in there. It's supposed to be a eleven degree. Uh, oh, that's quite a bit of difference. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be a problem when I chamber this thing, but we'll see. Just be careful. Well, that's, a, that's oh. an AR, not an uh, AR-10, just an AR-15, right? Yeah, this is a 308. Yeah, oh, it's 308? I, I just, I won't, I won't give it to Willie. 
<laughs> is he still watching? <laughs> I don't think True Blue works at 308. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give him crap if he's all here. Yeah, so th this is the same barrel extension. Um, I don't know which one you got, Pat, but it looks exactly the same. So that's, that's the ones that we're going to be using on your 358 Winchester. All right. So I got the barrel ready to go. Gas box ready to go on there. So I just got to put the barrel extension on, and this will be good to go. I don't know what I'm going to do in the front yet. I might, I might put threads on there. I wanted to, I wanted to try it out on a, on a 308 barrel because I got two other 308 barrels sitting here. Just in case I mess that one up, I don't, I don't mess up my only 35 cal barrel I have. So, so these guys, where, where's, where are you shooting pigs out of a helicopter in Texas? No, not in Texas. It's over here. It's in Mojave County. Oh, okay. Wow. That's cool. Yeah, so we get the, uh, I guess it, it's going to, we ended up working out a deal with the, uh, the, um, the tribe over here. So the Navajo tribe, they're letting us go on their land because they're having a problem with those pigs too. So we get to be on their land for like a month. That's the one I told um, uh, Preacher's Day off about. Oh, uh, okay. So I'm going to try to see if you find him to see if he wants to do it. <laughs> what about the, uh, oh, the other caliber that's very popular? Uh, gosh darn it. Jerry has them. A lot of people have them. Gosh darn it. What is it? Oh, the 350 legend? No, I went brain dead. 45 Colt? No, AR platform. 50 Bay Wolf? Uh, no, smaller, smaller, smaller. Um, 300 Black, 6.8, 6.5, Grendel. Grendel. Okay. Oh, Grendel? Yeah, the Grendel would be good. That's, that's what I was just on AAB. If I, I, could, I could make an AR out of that. I got the cases. Obviously, six six arc and six five Grendel the same thing. Yeah, Grendel would do better than two two three. Yeah. You just got to worry about what I, I forget. There's two different versions, generations of Grendel. There's the first one that Alexander built, that Bill Alexander from Alexander Arms manufactured, and then they came out with one where they changed it to a Gen 2, and I can't remember for the life of me if 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 it's the Gen 1 that works, the barrel, like they've got some goofy thing, like the Gen 1 bolt works with the Gen 2 or Gen 1 barrel, but it's, it, it the Gen 1 bolt basically has a deeper face on it. And they found out that shooting extended strings of fire caused the bolt face to chip that ring around. Because with the bigger size bolts that they use, they use the same size bolt as a 7.62 by 39. And those bolt faces are susceptible to cracks and fractures. So oh, they I change. I'll be right back. So I got a phone call. You should quote A B's uh, A Ab. I, I I always call him A A B. Is it A Ab? Anyway, he was saying Christopher Columbus dumped some pigs here, and that's how we got them. And then uh, Devil Dog saying Gen 2 is more material left. Okay.
Yeah, so the uh, six five or the Grendel probably would work good. How you doing, son Pat? Of a bitch. What's that, Pat? I said, son of a bitch, I'm, a, I'm an idiot. Uh, I think I beat you to it. <laughs> Tin Man showed up. Ah. Still going is... after I get home from work. He just got home. Yeah. Man, I tell you what, it's what eleven forty here, and it's still hot in the house. Ah, oh, Jesus, man. We got fans running. I can't sleep without a fan. So, yeah, I remember uh, shooting 6.8s when they first came out, and they were pleasant to shoot. That'd be another good one for the pigs. Yeah. Over there, where it's under the AC vent, it's 86. Over here, it's it's cooking. Why is tap tap 99? But I know it's harder than that. Oh yeah. What is he doing? AC. I thought you had a urinal over there or something. Jeez. Oh, it feels good. I got AC right on my... Get, get rid of the creek crack. Get rid of that creek crack. There you go. Hot, man. I know. I wish we had AC so bad. Whatever Tim Man's still going on, this guy doesn't even jump on live chats anymore. Was that? Tim Man? Yeah, he was on just last night or the night before. He just works a whole hell of a lot of hours and he's got that baby. And man, let me tell you, when you got a little one like that, it's 24 7 balls out. Working, chain, taking care of the little one, taking care of the missus. It's just like an, it's 18 years of hell that you wouldn't trade for anything else on the world, in the world. Yeah. That's, well, that I don't know, but my, that's what my dad, when he was alive, he told me. Well, they bumped it up to 25 years of hell now. <laughs> I can't have anything nice, so everything I have nice always gets destroyed. Oh yeah, my dad. I, that was a, that was like a reoccurring event, like a reoccurring uh, nightmare for my dad with tools. Uh, I came home one day, dude. I saw freaking five sockets snap on, sitting in the middle of the sun baking. Oh, I thought it lost my shit, man. Yeah, that's well, the only the only reason why they're doing it is because they're trying to be more like you. So, 
it's like one of those things where you're like pissed, but how mad can you be? Well, when you find one of your snap-on uh, wrenches and stuff, which, the ones that are ratcheting wrenches, yeah, like ninety bucks each. Yeah, out there, they rust out. Actually, rusting. So in Arizona, things don't rust. When you find one of those out there rusted, that's been out there for a while. Freaking pissed me off, dude. 90 yeah. Bucks I uh, listen to what I did. I got you beat. Um. I was probably eight years old, maybe nine. Didn't know my ass from a hole in the ground. Was helping my dad wash his Honda 350 motorcycle. Oh, man. I had a 360. Yeah. Yeah. He had a little 350, and I stuck the the wash hose, the sprinkler hose, into the exhaust pipe. (laughs) And filled yeah. the entire motor full of water. My dad didn't notice. He comes out, puts the key in it, cranks it over, and bends the entire valve train. Oops. I learned at a very early age never to put water inside of an, a gasoline engine. <laughs> and... It, 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 it's it, dude believe it or not I was a young boy I found that out the hard way my dad rebuilt the motorcycle it wasn't a big deal to him um, my buddy however never learned that lesson was driving through the woods in his brand new uh, Sonoma pickup truck that his dad had bought him And he decides to go through this big puddle. And I tell him, go to the right. Go to the right. Keep your right tires up on the embankment on the side of the road so you have traction. What's he do? He floors it and heads right through the middle. Sucks up water into the intake. Poo. Pukes a brand new V6 Sonoma engine. Yeah, baby. And left us out in the middle of the fucking woods where we had no cell service for two days in the thick of mosquito season. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, it's the frosting on the cake. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> I've, I've done some stuff like that. But the, the worst thing I've done was Letting my boys watch Radio Flyer. Because I had a good lawnmower at one time when I had grass back in California. And that was gone within the first six six hours of them watching that movie. <laughs> uh, luckily I don't got I don't got grass out here. Damn it. Alrighty, I gotta. I don't know if uh, Echo is willing to risk uh, some live live ammunition fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it don't matter. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> if I'm bullied, I can sue. Nice. So. Yeah. Let him. I'll be the first one. I don't care. Damn it. I guarantee my governor's just waiting for a chance. Yeah, you guys got to, that. Uh, you got the new that new policy now. They can't do that. You guys, see you guys, big tech, right? Yep. Yeah, he's awesome. And seven more states are drawing up their own version of it. It's spreading. There's going to be more states adopting that policy. And so that's going to be a plus. Yeah. Yeah. I hope he runs for president in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Echo for president. Hell yeah. (laughs) I think he will too. He might. 
if he wants to put up with the bull crap. Yeah, isn't Trump doing all of the uh, social media and crap for for blasphemy and all that crap? Or he's suing them. He's he's suing uh, Facebook and all the others, Twitter and everything. And and he'll probably collect too. And here's the beautiful thing. See, people don't know this usually, but uh, California has a really messed up law. Other states don't have this law, but really? this is where no, 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 no. This, this, this law that 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 fucks California. What happens in California? Okay, say, say me, Jim, C.W. Longshot. And Kenny want to sue YouTube because they have bullied us and taken away our channels. Under this law, we can sue them for up to $100,000. The state attorney can then sue for $250,000 compounded daily. So basically... Every single person that brings a charge against YouTube, Google, uh, uh, Instagram, whatever the hell it is, in the state of California where all these companies are registered, they demand you if you if you're a huge corporation and you get sued civilly by an independent citizen, you have to. Um, hire an independent lawyer for each lawsuit that is brought against your company. And they did this so that companies couldn't do class action lawsuits and everybody get a dollar at the end of the day instead of getting a hundred thousand dollars where you actually get your some some reimbursement. So because California is like this, if they screw over 20,000 people, 20,000 lawyers have to be hired by Google to represent those 20,000 cases. They cannot class action any of it. So even though they have a long list of attorneys, it can easily start to outrun their money. Because you're talking millions upon millions upon millions of dollars that can start adding up in a matter of a few months. And you're going to start just stomping them. And that, and if you get more than a few states doing the same thing, they're done. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Did you hear about... Let's do uh, it. What, did you hear about New York and concealed permits? I think it's Tally. Yes. Republican. She's suing or uh, doing a lawsuit. And yep. The, the law goes way back to 1930s or some crap. And it was discriminating, uh, you know, against minorities, against minorities and everything. Yes. And it has a huge substance to it and they might overturn the uh, not, not being able you know not passing out concealed permits to everyone in downtown New York exactly because they're gonna claim that they're being r racial uh, racist yeah yeah yes because the cost of it is cost preventative for poor people and basically that's discrimination against an entire class of people because they're not wealthy enough to enjoy their second amendment yes and the old law goes way back to where minorities can defend themselves and that's a great you know you got to go after all these things to yeah to get them to get them out uh you know off get them expose them yeah, 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 yeah. I think if go to the Supreme Court, I think. Yeah, well, Como and everybody hates Como. That guy, his own brother that works for CNN or yeah, CNN doesn't yeah. like him. No, they're idiots. Yeah, they're both idiots. And 
it, the law is there for that to happen. So, so all these states you wouldn't think have a chance. They actually do because these laws, like you said, you can pick them out and say, hey, put this up against a good court and see what happens. See, and the whole thing is California is scared because they only have, the only thing California has going for them is the fact that they're tyrannical and that they've got the Ninth Circuit Court. If the Ninth Circuit Court, which is starting to take heat over all of this anti-gun legislation that they've been passing for the last 25 years, now they're starting to catch some shit in Hawaii. Um, I heard th their, their um, lawsuits are springing up in Hawaii um, while people can't get concealed weapon permits. And there's only been three issued, and all three of them were uh, cops. Pat, I just read your text. That's funnier than crap. Get some G96. Uh, that's so funny. That's probably all it needs. Just a little G96. Uh, hilarious. I'm going to send Bloomberg a can of G96. Right now, my car smells like a bad can of anchovies. <laughs> Hell yeah. <clears throat> oh. Well, guys, I, I'm going to crash. I'm going to. You go going to bed, bed, Uncle Jim? I'm going to sit in front of a fan and try and go to bed. Yeah. Get your hair wet. And. Yeah. And yeah, bro, you know, comb it wet, and then sit there with the fan, and that'll keep your your, oh, your yeah. cool your face hey, and head down. I got I got better than that. I take paper towels and wet them with water and wipe my armpits. Jim would oh, really yeah. hate it out here. Oh yeah, the armpit trick. If you haven't tried it, it works. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try that. And right under your man boobs too. Oh yeah. Ah. Uh -huh. Wet paper towel, baby, every time. <laughs> Dude, next next live chat you have, I'm going to be on there shirtless with paper towels on my man boobs. <laughs> uh, I'm be like, I'm burning up. Jim, it's Florida heat. It's hot. <laughs> yeah. It's bearable after a while. You just get acclimated. You just turn a little bit more red. You start sweating a little more, that's all. Actually, you know what? After a while, you just stop sweating. I mean... Yeah, because the dehydration, it, it, Kenny, it's not that you stop sweating. It's that you have no more water in your body to sweat out. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, but then you're good. <laughs> He's like, I stopped peeing three days ago, but I'm good. Yeah. Everything's fine. Uh, it's only a hundred and hundred and ten in here. <laughs> it went down a degree. He's like he's out there. He he's gonna start building rifles, buck naked. Dude, it, it, I've done it. it. I, I was right there, standing right there with just chonies and a freaking battle belt, dude. Cool. <laughs> Your son comes ho home out there with one of his friends. You're out there freaking on the lathe, machining stuff, and, and the metal filings are sticking to the sweat on your body, and you're just like, I'm knocking out a couple barrels. And, and the, your son's like, Dad, you don't have any clothes on. And I'm and you're like, damn right I don't. It's hot in here. Yeah. Well, I'm not, I'm not machining any more barrels and crocs. I'll tell you that right now. One of those freaking metal file shavings went right inside your crock, dude. That thing burns the shit out of you. So, 
I'll stand there with with, with Tony's on and boots. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be a video. Man, man boob, man boob machine. <laughs> oh, damn it. I should have made a business that man boob machine. There you go. Yeah, Tin Man, a little air conditioner that goes out the window, it'd be nice, but it's only a couple months. Usually at night it gets cooler, but right now it's not doing that. So we yeah. deal with it. Anyway, guys, I'll, I'll catch you guys later. And, uh, yeah, enjoyed it. Yeah, fun chat. You guys take care. Stay cool. Yeah, and let, let us know what you're going to do for tomorrow night. Uh, yeah, I might do it early. I might do okay. it early. You know, everyone's going to be out doing stuff. but I'm Well, that's okay. It. If you want to watch your show later, you know, hell. Yeah, I might do a, a noon chat instead of a night chat. Yeah, do it, do, it, do it in the morning. Yeah, I'll do it at 11 or 12 or noon or whatever my time, yeah. I've been we'll testing see. Tim to see what time he wakes up, so I call like 50 minutes early every other day. Just <laughs> <laughs> wakes up, uh, <laughs> It varies, man. Sometimes they get up at 5, sometimes they get up at 11. I don't know. Yep. I uh, mean, I'm the same day. way. Yeah, there's no schedule. Well, yeah, we don't have a job to go to anymore. So ever since I didn't have to worry about getting up for work tomorrow, it yeah. doesn't really matter anymore. Yeah. Well, That's true. I, I caught Jim in a free coffee mood. That was awesome. <laughs> free coffee mood? <laughs> yeah, free, free coffee chat. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Free coffee phone call. It's like, wait, let me get a cup down me. Yeah. Yeah, well, we'll make the winter time happen. I, I really want to make that trip. We haven't went snowboarding in three or two years now, so Park City is right around the corner from you. Yeah, you could make a trip where you can go on a ski trip and then visit. Yeah, you would yeah, love that. Yeah, Park City is only, uh, I think it's only two hours from here, or close to two hours. Yeah, so that'll be cool. The freeways are always uh, done, so you don't have to worry about that. Well, they're doing a lot of construction now, expanding the road or something. Uh, north, they might be. They're all on the 15. Well, uh, yeah, they're always doing something. All right, yeah, guys, good night. Yes, Stay sir. Care. And Take care, right. Uncle Jim. Thanks yeah, for coming I'll in. You, I'll catch you guys tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> yeah, okay, brother. All right. Have a good one, guys. You too. All right. Good night. Hey, Jim. Yeah. Hey, Jim. So what are you know. doing over there? I hear you working on something. More, more six art. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I shoot like, um, I don't know. Maybe I just don't do a lot of videos of it, but. I mean, I, I really backed off showing the whole reloading process. I got tired of all the damn critics. So. I the, all the show. what? The critics. Are you Internet. serious? He, well, I, 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 must, I must not just have that many people. Well, I don't know. I just, I'm like, I don't care anymore. You know, people always say, well, what I, what I did is I averaged it out. You know, the good positive feedback versus the negative, and I always get a hell of a lot more negative feedback on the reloading side of doing things on my channel, which honestly, it doesn't bother me. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel sad or anything. It actually makes me laugh, but I want to help people out. So if folks are getting or seeing all those negative feedbacks and seeing all the other people's comments of you should do this, you should do that, they're not getting the information out, or I'm not getting the information to the guys that want to learn. They're going to read those comments and say otherwise. And you need to erase. Post. Yeah, the, the thing is to be able to stay on top of everything and erase all that shit. Yeah. Well, my main thing is, okay, well, folks want to see me, you know, legitimate, uh, uh, you know, legitimize uh, routine or legit, you know, me going to these matches, I guess, helps out. That Ray was telling me that we were talking about it. He's like, well, dude. I know you know what you're doing. You're obviously showing it, and I've seen it, you know, firsthand. But it's like, 
unless you you have something behind your belt or you can prove that you have been doing it for X amount of years, here's what I want. People will then start listening or wondering what I'm doing. Because <laughs> I almost did the video to show folks, but if you actually look at the video of my match footage, you'll see me cocking that bolt down. I'm not bumping my brass back. My brass, that whole match was all set to zero headspace. So this is what I believed in, and it shoots well on my rifle. Even in the damn elements, everybody was saying, if you don't bump the brass back, you're going to have bad issues where you're locking your bolt down and all this other crap. Dude, I fell in a freaking sand or a mud pit. Rain was pouring down. I had all of that issues that you could think of. My my whole rifle was literally so caked full of, full of mud that I had to pressure wash it at, at the car. <laughs> <laughs> I got a video of that. I was pressure watching my rifle. So, um, the whole theory of you needing your bumping your brass back or whatever it is, it's like, dude, do you, boo, but I don't need to do that. And you can obviously tell it doesn't, all that theory crap that people are saying, it's not true. At least from my experience, I don't have those issues at all. Yeah, I think it's, I think these guys they do something that they think that is working so they got to they got to prove it to themselves because they've spent all this money to 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 have the best rifle the best everything and then some guy with a little bit of skill comes out and builds a rifle for a quarter of the price and smokes them at their own game. It makes them look stupid. It makes them look like they spent all that money and they suck because, just like they say, you can't buy talent. Yeah. Well, and I tell folks, like, look, dude, I'm doing it for a reason. The way I reload is I reload for a reason because my Savage Rifle is a free floating bolt. Now, if it was like a bat action or silver action, even my Remington 700 here, like right here, I tried it on this one. This one runs runs well both ways. Now, my Savage likes it not being bumped back. That's just what the rifle likes. So that's why I do what I do, because of that rifle. But honestly, was it my... Um, my Mossberg uh, 308, I next size that brass. I don't even bump anything. I next size that, that case. I in a full length size every third reload. But that's just yeah. something that my rifle likes. So it's just I don't think folks realize that all the methods of reloading all pertain to certain aspects of the rifle. I mean the characteristics of that rifle. It's yeah, and that's why you know, I tell yeah. people. You, you, you might find a load that works good in one rifle out of the same lot, and it doesn't out of the next one in the same lot. Right. So I, I try to tell folks, I kind of, <laughs> when I did that video, it's like people, what it is is just, for one, of a mockery, if you look at the video title, two, it's learning other tools, other ways of how to reload, is putting it in your toolbox. So you know how to operate certain ways. When, so when you're, when you're trying to figure out a load for your rifle and it just isn't working, you can say, well, hey, I know another way to reload. Let's try this. Oh, this didn't work. Oh, I know how to reload this way. Let's try that. Oh, shoot. I got I got my goal. I met my goal doing it this way. This rifle likes being reloaded this way. This brass likes being reloaded this way. The bullet, this is the bullet in life. This is what it likes to do. So it's characteristics of a rifle that makes you a better reloader and you understanding those methods are what makes you a better reloader and to be able to adapt and change right you know because that's what i've been telling that same guy eric cortina this whole time is like look dude not everybody's got a six seven thousand dollar rifle yeah maybe that works for you but it doesn't work for everyone if it did everyone would do it the same way yeah and, and i i built a couple of rifles i think it was uh what the hell is it it's a weird the f class action 
it starts, it starts with a beat. It's not a bat action. It's um, specifically designed for. It's got a weird to record a lot. It sits like in the middle of the action. In, anyways, I, I built a rifle like that, and I built that in a uh, 284 shot hand. Um, and I was going to do a video on that. And that thing shot phenomenal. And it's exactly, you know, we had a reamer specced out to the uh, to what he wanted. So the reamer was specced out. Then we bought a sizing reamer that matched the chamber reamer. And I made a reloading die for that, that gun. And all of those little small details adds up on money, first of all. I mean, we spent probably close to $8,000 just in the rifle and the reloading and, and the, uh, you know, the reamers and all that. And that rifle will put out a five inch group consistently at a thousand yards, which was phenomenal to see. <laughs> so I then, you know, bust out my six arc and put out a one inch group at a thousand yards a week later. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? You know, so here we are. I'm having experience behind these high end rifles and I see what they could do. Obviously, you know, the guy wants to reload a certain way and he's really angled up doing it and it works. But it's, I don't know, sometimes you get one of those freak rifles that you build for less than a thousand bucks and it just works too. So I don't know, man. It's all experience on the, of what you do. So. And, you know, people ask me all, oh, What's your best rifle? I'm like, well, first for one, you don't see me with a custom action. My best rifle is a savage. I don't have a custom action. I want to, but every time I build one, someone someone has it. Or someone, you know, I build it for someone else. I mean, this would be considered my best rifle if someone were to say, but this is just a factory rifle. It's factory. There's nothing, nothing upgraded on this. Oh yeah, maybe maybe the uh, maybe the bolts because Remington doesn't know how to freaking solder their bolt handles on. So I actually had to machine a one-piece billet bolt. I remember that. I remember yeah. your bolt handle breaking. Yeah, so that's the only upgrade that this rifle has, and uh, this thing shoots like crap. <laughs> this six pre more is not accurate at all. It isn't. No, it's not consistent. I mean, I, I can put out a half inch group, but after about eight rounds, if they're all warming up, it starts to walk all over. Yeah, it don't like the heat. No. Nope. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's got, it's got a nice trigger in it. The Trigger Tech, uh, Trigger Tech Diamond Series in it, so. Yeah. Really nice and crisp. Obviously, I added a folder stock to it, so it's high-end build, a high-end add-on, but that's about it. It's light. This would have worked out at that match, to be honest. This thing only weighs, I think, 13 pounds or less than that. It's super light. So what, what, what's your, when's your next match? Um, there's one in Vegas, the week of the 17th. Or it's, it's the, the 16th, there's an actorized AR match, and that's why I'm trying to get the six arc going. And then they have the 17th, which will be a PRS match, which I'm going to go to. Um, I'm just trying to, it's the Peoria, like the one I go to, Cowtown, is three hours away. Um, and, you know, the cost of driving, the whole family out there and the hotel, that, uh, so I'm going to try the one at Vegas, so it'd be a lot cheaper for me. But, uh, I've been doing all right. I've been holding top 10, top five uh, local matches. So if I keep, if I continue this, I'll be eligible for one of the big PRS matches. So anything new on the build to build? On the what? 
to build? Are you going to be building anything new? Cool. Yeah. Um, besides the AR, I, I want to show the, I, I might switch a rifle that the TC compass over to a 2547. So right now that's a six by 47. I've been playing around with that caliber and that rifle. So I'm going to try, I'm going to try a, a 2547. I think that might be a happy medium. Um, the 25 caliber, dude, I've been really surprised with the 131 blackjacks. Those bullets are working freaking phenomenal in the way. It's, it's basically taking a 6.5 Creedmoor and combining it with a 308 as far as loading, how easy it is to reload, and then the recoil of the 6 Creedmoor. So it's, it's, pretty, it's really nice. And uh, what, what I'm using is just typical Lapua brass. The focus is. So, all in the neck, neck down the 25 cal. That sounds like that ought to get out there. Where, where are you, where, what are you shooting, 1,400 yards? Yeah, dude, I, it does a mile like it's nothing. <laughs> so that's what surprised me that it holds up in transonic. Um, I don't know what it is. Maybe the blackjack bullets are just that much better. But I was able to lay out of 10 shots once I got on target or found the dope. I was able to get t eight out of 10 shots at a mile with the 25 free four. No. Uh, a very interesting cartridge. Um, like I said, it bucks the wind pretty good. It's got more recoil, obviously, than, uh, than a 6 arc, but it's not bad at all. Let's see here. What about you? Uh, did you figure out your 308 or you stopped doing that or? What are you doing no, I've, I've been messing with it. I'm going to, um, I need to straighten the stock on it because when Ruger put the stock on there and sent it back to me, they got it on there crooked. So I got to do that. I got to mount the scope and then I, I, I'm just waiting to get an annealing machine so that I can anneal my brass. And once I get that done, then I can start, um, um basically getting it uh set up for neck sizing that's just what i'm i'm buying an annealese machine yeah and i'm gonna start doing that so that i can get my brass to s stop work hardening yeah well yeah that annealing is a, a huge factor get a uh, consistent um, resizing for sure yeah you know about a 4.2 second anneal yeah uh, do, do you have to anneal your brass uh, on your martini henry or anything God, i forgot to ask you that one day <clears throat> um, you do when you're forming it and then uh uh, you don't afterwards because when the brass finally splits on you, it splits halfway down the case. Oh, wow. It's a, okay. It's a vertical split halfway down the case when it finally goes. Uh, I don't have any neck issues or shoulder issues with it. I haven't had to anneal. Whenever I've got a filled piece of brass, it's been below the shoulder. Okay. Huh. But I only shoot black powder. Yeah. I, I don't know, I guess for me, I, I got in the habit of annealing every time I fire the case after the third reload. Um, I, I'm going to do it every single time. I think it yeah. I think it makes a huge difference. Yeah, well, like I said, after the, you know, it would be the first fire, the second fire, get your case measurements, reload, third fire, then I start annealing every time. Yep. And then honestly, I don't even clean my brass anymore. I mean, you can see how dirty it is. Just black. Well, I just wipe it off with a, a microfiber. Steel wool. Yeah, oh, steel wool. okay. 
alcohol takes care of the carbon and I probably will clean it after eight reloads. So that saves you time right there. Uh, I clean it before I throw it to the folding sides and die. I just give a good little wipe on the uh, rubbing alcohol and paper to get rid of the carbon. But that's about it, man. So what are you doing right now, Kenny? Uh, transferring the brass. How did Nemo brass work out, Kenny? That 308 any good? That 308 is working really good, yeah. Um, so I went out there with shooting uh, CA uh, with that Mossberg, and I built in that truck axle Howard 1500 that's got like a 32-inch barrel that's like 1.2-inch straight. I don't know if you've seen that picture of that thing. It's literally a truck axle. And uh, he was shooting really good with that rifle, and I brought my Mossberg out there. Uh, we attempted to shoot 1,500 yards. I couldn't land an impact. He couldn't land an impact. And then friggin' plus five Reagan comes out there with a 20-inch little friggin' stupid AR, or AR, 20-inch um, uh, uh, bolt action and starts laying out impacts at 1,500 yards with his door on the <laughs> He's only doing like 2480 or 2500 feet a second or something stupid like that. We're like, what the hell? <laughs> Laying them in there like freaking bricks. Yeah, I'm like, dude, get out of here. You're stupid. It was like 110 out here. Actually, I need to do that video. We had a lot of we had a lot of fun out here. So, I I forgot to do that video. I just I was packing up, ready to go for the match, and I just totally forgot to do it. <laughs> so you guys rented an RV and you drove out there. Yeah. And now after renting an RV and driving it, what would be your recommendations for next time? Uh, make sure the person you're renting it from is freaking knows what he's doing with his RV. Make it, like as far as mechanic wise. <laughs> Because that was a freaking disaster. You bought a shit shack? Yeah, I was a you shit shack. It. It made it my problem. The first one, so this is what happened. The first RV that we had, and I and I knew this was a, I was like, dude, I should have went with my instinct. First of all, there's a big blue oval in the front of the damn thing. And there's a blue oval sitting in the front of the steering wheel that says Ford on it, right? I'm like, well, I'm going to roll the dice. And the second biggest thing that I saw on there is said Triton V10. And from my experience, the oh, yeah. are not a good motor. motor. Not yeah, a good not motor. a good motor. You would have been I, so much better off with a 7.3 Turbo International Harvester. Yeah. No, this was a Triton V10. So, okay, so the first one we got, I made it about, I'd say, uh, just outside of Vegas. And, and it overheated. Started, no, well, <laughs> It started slipping gears on me, you know, going up the hill and pop out of gear. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. I know. So I called the dude. I was like, dude, we are turning around right now. I am not risking this freaking thing, especially up going up these hills. So we ended up having to change it. The check engine light came on. I, I already knew it. I called it. I'm like, dude, it's your shift solenoid C. It's common on these freaking Triton motors. They're just complete garbage. He's like, I never had a problem with this thing. There's nothing ever wrong with this. He's like, you must be driving it really hard. I'm like, dude, I'm doing 45 up this hill. This thing's barely making it up the freaking hill. <laughs> so, I'm like, I'm not even pushing it at all. So it slipped out of gear um, because I don't think you ever changed out your, your transmission fluid or did any kind of service on it. So got it back. It shifted hard one time super hard that it cracked the front windshield. I mean, it was chirping tires. <laughs> it's the... This thing was chirping tires, dude. So it'll rev up and never shifts. So you go to like 4,000 RPM. I'm doing like 20 miles an hour. And it freaking drops the gear, dude, and it fucks the whole thing. So I'm like, this is, yeah, we ain't doing this. So uh, we switched it out. He gave us the other one. It's a newer model. Same thing. Big blue oval, V10. I'm like, okay, here we go. <laughs> so... We made it all the way up there and had all the problems coming back. So, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm going to say, if, uh, I, honestly, those things drive like crap. So if you're going to get an RV, it's got to be a diesel pusher. 
You want air suspension and air brakes. Yep. Uh, those uh, gas-powered RVs are complete horrible. Shit. Bad. Yeah. I, I, if you would have talked to me, I would have told you. I, I, I used to tow for a bunch of those places that rented and leased RVs in Orlando. Yeah. And I would have told you exactly what to buy, what to lease and what not to. Cause dude, I have had to tow so many of those things. People just think that an RV is just like something everybody was born able to do. Yeah. And <laughs> it's not the case. You know, I think the only thing going going for this guy is that I'm used to like work trucks breaking down on me all the time, or the work trucks that give me breaking down to me in the middle of the desert. So I'm pretty resourceful, so resourceful. So yeah. uh, when that happened, I knew exactly what to do. Just you know, kind of feather the gas, make sure tr try to get it to rev up, let go of the gas, and let it drop down into the gear if it if it likes to shift. I'd like to get it to the pop over. Try to help it. Yeah. yeah. So, it, you know, I babied it all the way back. Um, the wheelbarrow going out was scary, though. Because uh, going down a big-ass hill, doing 55 miles an hour, making a left turn, the right wheelbarrow goes out, and the freaking thing starts pulling you to the shoulder. <laughs> that was scary, dude. So, yeah, I... Uh, so, how did, you, how, how, did you, how did you hear about these guys? Yeah. I just saw it on a uh, our neighborhood app. One of the guys were it was advertising on there. Because I, I called around, dude. Here's another problem. So I called around. There's a lot of private party guys that that have RVs for rent, but they won't let you take it anywhere past 100 miles. I'm like, what the hell are you guys doing? What they're doing is just we're in a vacation spot. They're just letting the rent to get out for a day or a weekend. And like letting folks from California come over and use it for the weekend, you know? Asleep there basically, yep, and they're banking it, dude. They're making like a thousand dollars a freaking weekend. Oh, uh, yeah, dude. And they're in there, they've got some old, worn out shit boxes. Oh, yeah, horrible, dude. So, you know, you, there's like no nobody wanted to rent a, 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 a travel tra or an RV motorhome to go out of state. Everybody out here just didn't want to do it. So, I, I this was the only guy that I knew. Um, the biggest reason why I chose to do this is because of uh, flying with the kids and the face mask policy. If some Karen jumps on my ass about not having a face mask, I probably will punch the shit out of them in the, in the plane. Yeah. I'm not dealing with that kind of bull crap. You know, trying to make my, my daughter wear a mask or something. So it was it was either that or, or drive with a tow a tow bull. We were gonna do a, a tow behind an RV, but the kids won't won't last more than yeah. five hours in the car. Yeah. Uh, the motorhome was the way to go for traveling. Yeah, you just need a diesel with a Perkins pusher. Yep. Perkins diesel pusher, and you won't have no problems. Yeah. Oh, that was another thing too. I didn't know those travel trailers. There's like no rear air or anything. You have to have the generator running. Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta have yeah. You it, it'll start like a sweat. La it'll, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, it's freaking. Uh, it's yeah, it, it's hot. Yeah. It, yeah, the AC didn't work good, and then the generator stopped working on us. I had a, I had a jump or bypass the oil sensor level. It went out while I was driving, so I had to go over there. I pulled my wife's freaking hairpin, you know, I, I, and I carried a, see, I carried a voltmeter, I carried a uh, OBD2 sensor reader, I get, you know, basic tools and stuff just for stuff like that. Yeah. And yeah, the... Well, you're glad <laughs> you oil, did. Yeah. Find out the oil level sensor freaking uh, opened up and shorted, or not shorted up, but opened up and made the generator stop running. So that was another thing I had to do. <laughs> So basically, your your trip turned into a job. Yeah, it, it, it was definitely a chore the whole time. The front AC unit didn't work. So when we stayed in Salt Lake City the first night, we were sweating our ass off. It was like 100 degrees out there. All of us like dog piled into the master bedroom. 
kids were on the floor. The freaking my baby was <laughs> baby's in the bed. The kids are on the floor. We have the room closed, and the whole RV you can feel it like trying to lift off the front, dude, because we're, we're all in the back of it. <laughs> oh, which was another thing too. The the leveling jacks didn't even work. The guy oh. unplugged it. So I'm like, should I really risk plugging this thing back in? Probably oh, not, because uh, there's yeah. probably a reason why they've been unplugged. Yeah. So here I am. I'm like, it's ten o'clock at night time. Freaking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. So I plug it in. Within a second, dude, I started smelling a freaking hydraulic fire underneath, was <laughs> underneath the belt like that. I look underneath, I see this glowing red solenoid and freaking hydraulic fluid spilling everywhere. I'm like, oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> so, and then we had a, we had a pretty big windstorm. So here I am. We got the pop outs out. We got, we got the, <laughs> the master bedroom. We feel like we're in a pirate ship, dude. The whole thing is just rocking. <laughs> so, uh, I got I got seasick that night a little bit. Oh my god! Yeah, you asking you ask, you, ask it, you ask your wife. Do you have any Dramamine? She's like, what? Yeah, yeah. She uh, she actually had a fun time. I mean, despite all the crap that we dealt with, we we like I said we just <laughs> we laughed. Each other for a while. Well, yeah, dude, yeah. it just laugh, you know. Yeah, we'll make we'll make it better. You know, we're not yelling at each other. It's no one's fault. <laughs> so. Yeah, dude, and the and the funny thing is, you remember of those you remember those movies with um Robin Williams when he rented that fucking big shit box RV. Oh yeah, yeah. You remember? <laughs> yeah. Well, dude, the funny part is, so we cause we had a tire blowout on us too, so the, the shed came off. Um. And dude, everybody's passing by. One of the guys actually turned around to so congratulate me because he saw my nine-year-old son. He asked me, "How old's your boy?" He's, like, He's nine years old. He's out there with a freaking impact gun, taking the big ass semi truck truck tire off <laughs> like it's nothing. <laughs> and change, we're changing out the tire in the middle of the road, and he's sitting there rolling off the spare tires to me. He was like almost the size of him, and then he's like, "He's only nine, man." So, you know. You, I could say that you don't see many uh, many kids his age know how to do any of that, or even want to do that. They would have been exactly. like inside bitching that it's hot. And can yeah. you please turn the air conditioner on? Oh yeah, no, he was out there with me. So my my little boy, my uh, second youngest son, he's something. He's a ladies' man. He don't want none of that crap. So, <laughs> uh, that's why he gets the hand me downs. <laughs> Yeah, I always laugh because I'm always really hard on my oldest son. Like I'm hard on him for a reason because he's the freaking smartest one we have. The smartest one. You better do something that takes care of your your stupid brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife says, "Oh, your brother's gonna be fine. He's gonna find a freaking sugar mama or something stupid." A sugar mama. I love it. I kid you not, dude. Um, we were staying in Peoria, the resort out there. I give you the story. And uh, you think got this big ass ginormous pool. So everybody's having an awesome pool party. We're like, where the hell is Noah? You know, we've been calling him, calling him. And then we see him in the corner of our eye in one of those cabana, cabanas that you got to pay. It's like a minimum of $400. Some like bachelorette party or something like that going on. And he's out there with all the girls out there. Freaking dude comes back. We're starving, dude. First of all, that place was like stupid expensive. A margarita was like twenty six bucks, right? Well, me and, my wife and he's got all market. this free food. Yeah, he comes back with a freaking cheese platter, dude, with like salami and crap, and has like Sierra, like Sierra um, club soda, and he's not stupid. You, 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 dumbasses are. You're standing around with yeah. with your with your Dixie cups of water, and he's over yeah. there getting full on food. Yeah, dude. I'm like, we can do with being treated like Caesar over there. <laughs> so, mm. They're feeding him grapes and shit, and you're fucking yeah. over there like, what the hell? I can't even get in the pool. It says. Yeah, and, and me, me and my wife are sharing like a subway sandwich that we bought for like twenty bucks. <laughs> he, he's coming back with like salami trays of uh, freaking grapes and shit. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then uh, obviously, 
He's got all the, the bachelorette number girls all over him. I'm like, wow. So. They, um, basically, my wife, she's going with her father and her girlfriend to back to Cancun, Mexico this year. And basically they're going down there just to, just to, you know, vacation. And she's like, do you want to go? And I'm like, hell no. I've been to Mexico quite a few times. Cozumel surf there. I'm like, no, I'm going to stay here with the cat. I'm going to stay yeah. here. I'm going to reload. I'm going to go shooting. That's yeah. what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. Hey, Kenny, uh, the 17th is a Tuesday. You sure it's the 17th? The, the what? Uh, 17th of August is a Tuesday. The 17th of uh, July. Oh, of July. I mean, yeah. Uh, let's see. There's, what, what is this? What's today? The 9th, yeah. The ninth. Okay, you just might have to deal with Sylvia, that's all. Uh, I, uh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know if it's me, it's all awful. Like, I'm on the uh, TV, that's why. Let me see. What, what do you say, Echo? Oh, I didn't say a thing. No, what, what did uh, Pat say? Um, he was talking. You might have to deal with Sylvia. She's oh, on vacation right now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no biggies. I mean, I know it's short notice, but she kind of just threw this on me. I wasn't gonna give you a call today, but I was like, I don't know, it's too too short of a notice. I told her. <laughs> well, if not, like I said, we'll just go find a, you know, we'll just find a hotel. I mean, they're probably cheap right now anyway. No, it's no problem. What are you doing over in uh, Vegas, Kenny? Are yeah. you vacationing or are you doing some shooting? They got a rifle match out there on the 17th. Oh, okay. Yeah, James, I'll sponsor you. Dude, you want me to build your badass rifle? I mean, I always tell folks that the, our community, which are, are awesome, if you want to just buy the parts, I'll hook it up. I'll do the labor. Little favor I could do, at least for the folks here. The minimum I could do, at least build a rifle for somebody. Yeah. And all I ask is just spread the word, word of mouth. If you think it works good. Oh, hell yeah. There's nothing wrong with word of mouth. That's the best, the best advertising possible. Yeah. I'll be honest. A lot of my uh, clientele that I've been getting is, uh, is out there in South Carolina and Georgia area. There's a, a hell of a lot more PRS shooters out there than anything. Well, isn't that where you uh, were uh, doing that gay competition rifle building? Contest. The game. The competition. <laughs> Could you imagine? He's like, he's like, no, 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 no. You've heard of what? What? What's that? I'm like, he's like, you've heard of Ipsing, right? This no. is dingling. This, this is dingling. This is an Ipsing. This is dingling. Basically, what I do is I go out here and I sell these rifles. And these guys shoot these competitions. They're a bunch of fruitcakes, but I make millions. That's, that's that's your new sales pitch. You're just like I just make millions. I build gay guys rifles because they got more money than the straight guys. <laughs> Thunder Valley sounds. Uh, Thunder Valley. Uh, I think so. I think I've seen him before. I've seen an ad on there before. I'm not too familiar with it there, James. Though, but I don't know who they are. I, I've seen them before. So what are you working on tonight, Kenny? Just uh, some more six hour work I got. I'm gonna load. Uh, up, uh, I'm loading up all this ammo that I have because I I gotta build like three rifles this weekend to catch up. So 
one of them is a 308 and the other two a six arc and uh i think that's kind of what separates me from the other gun manufacturers is that i actually will take the rifle and actually shoot it and if it, if it ain't shooting the way i want to if it's shooting if it's shooting like friggin you know over over half inch I, dude I, I start changing barrels out i'll change the action out i'll do what i can to make sure i can shoot because i know what this cartridge is capable of doing right so, even a six Creedmoor, even my six Creedmoor that I built, a six GTs, um, 30, 34.2 grains of hard get. I got a load that seems to work with every single six GT, or well, at least specifically designed for the Creamer. So the chamber that comes out is always matched up to, you know, the ones I've done in the past. I chamber everything right, right at Sammy minimum for these high barrel burners. And I think a lot of folks don't realize that these gun manufacturers, they're just going to, they're going to, it out they're, they're all about production making money doing as fast as they can everything that i do is all handmade i mean you can see a whiteboard up there full of measurements and that's what i go by uh, you know, i'll take a i'll take an action like this and something that most manufacturers don't use a freaking indicator and start getting some measurements off the action and that's what i built for you ah yeah. Uh, yeah that makes good sense well you know a lot of folks don't realize that dude yeah you could you could buy all these defined actions of bighorn actions there's a deviation of up to eight thousands of head yep. so regardless of what name brand you choose bad action stiller i'm finding variation of five to eight thousands of difference which if you give a perspective a go and no go gauge the measurement in between those two is four thousandths. So, yep. are you really getting a rifle that's headspace correctly? There's a high chance or not. Hey guys, I got to hit the road. If you're still on in an hour, I'll see you back here. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, so yeah, when I when I build these rifles, I, I actually I headspace everything right at minimum. For all these six millimeter cartridges that gives you at least i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a rough, a rough estimate of 600 to 800 more rounds because you have two to three thousandths more throat that you could actually wear out to, to chase your accuracy so right okay. um i don't know and then another thing another benefit too is that you know when i when i run the reamer through i got a barrel through flush system so i'm using Hang Sippers 46 with a specific uh, fluid that is designed for reaming applications. It's like 120 bucks a gallon. I have to run 10 gallons of my lathe. So imagine that. I got over 1,600 bucks just in cutting fluid. I'm not joking around. I'm trying to make this thing the best chamber possible. And uh, everything's hand fed. If, just like you're digging a hole in the ground, there's hard spots and soft spots in the metal. In a, in a bore of a rifle so you can feel that on a reamer so if i get to a, a, a spot on the on the actual barrel itself which feels really soft i'll feel it really push in and i can slow down the feed rate the same my so it doesn't chatter it doesn't chatter so and if folks actually ever get one of my rifles dude look look down it with a with a with a bore cam and you'll see that there's no tooling marks at all if there's any tooling marks it's it's barely very minimal so, the, a lot of a lot of tricks that I've learned. I, I learned a lot of um, a lot of tools of the trade. Uh, with you know, Gordy Gritters, I read, I read a lot of his books. I, I read a lot of his techniques. I spoke with Fred Zegan. You know, um, he's over there for the Rumor Rental, so I'm getting good contact with him. There's guys like Anthony Ward from Crown Ridge, which has been doing it for over 30 years. Uh, the, the gunsmith here, two gunsmiths here that have 40 plus years experience i have the same lathe as the gunsmith that i've actually learned from so this is why i bought this lathe because he knows his lathe he knows that lathe in and out it's a cheaper lathe and he taught me on it so i figured okay well you know if he swears by it and he's getting the performance that he's been getting he's been building and this is the, this is the same guy i was talking to you about that he's been building uh precision ars for years and f-class rifles for years um his, his name is mark manson which should give you a cue there he's actually the cousin brother of dave manson reamers 
So, uh, you know, very knowledgeable person. He taught me um, basically how to operate that lathe, little tips, uh, tips and tricks out of it. And I'm still implementing new, new, new tools that are out in the market. I've tried, you know, quite a few tools out there to see what works and what improves. So, one thing that I can say is that something that's been done for 40 years. It's something, somebody that's been building rifles that's been win, winning national matches. Um, the method really hasn't changed much. There's nothing really out there that's brand new that's going to get you that better of a performance. So, right. So, Just perfecting kind of technique. technique. Yeah. Everything's hand, hand fed. So taking my experience in the machine and tool industry or, or the, the tool and die industry working in my uncle's machine shop in San Jose, or things were getting down to 110 thousandths of an inch of clearance, that's a critical area of what we're machining to with the wire EDMs and sinker EDMs. I know about tool deflection. I know what tools do, what metals, what kind of metals work, what kind of metals start to bend. Uh, the heat range, like for instance, 416R steel, you don't want to get above 100 degrees or 100, uh, no, 120 degrees cutting which is pretty damn close right now with it being 110 degrees in here right now. So what I like to do is I cut the chamber right in the morning when everything's around 80 degrees. And I watch yeah. that. I watch the chamber. I have an IR thermometer that I watch that barrel um, warm up. If it goes over 100, I stop the lathe and uh, I let it cool down. So little things like that all help out. So I was going to, I don't know if folks are interested in watching videos like that, but you know, that's something I've been kind of debating about doing some investment videos that way. I think like people like that stuff. I think some of the old timers that were doing some videos, the that that guy, the real gunsmith. Yeah, yeah he, he does a lot of old school stuff. Like uh, he does old style. Um, yeah. he's, he's, he's not. A, uh, yeah, he's using a he's, steady rest of chamber, which. I don't agree with that, but hey, he's getting the he's getting the performance. What people are saying. Because yeah, but well, he's been doing it for forty fucking years. <laughs> yeah. You do something long enough, you're gonna get it right. Right. So he he's got it working good. I don't use a steady rest at all. Um, I'm kind of. You, you see what I use? I got a. Yeah. There it is, right here. The best tool right here for building a barrel. Yeah. Four, four gauge. Yeah, four gauge copper wire. This, yep. is, what, this is what my uh my fault four jaw chuck cl uh, clamps around. It creates a pivot point. It uh few things that it does, and I know this because of my tool and die industry. When we're, we're we have Termex CNCs out there, when you want something to run true and not cause deflection in the metal high pressure points where things start to bend and all that and cause constriction because if, if you don't know those, those four jaw chucks could actually really clamp down and actually constrict the bore and make your bore actually smaller yeah so what, what that does is it, i create a little little ring the four jaw chucks clamp on that and there's only that little bit of uh, space on the bore or the barrel that is, that's putting that exerting that pressure but it makes a pivot point so the whole bore itself will run true as it is, as it's from the manufacturer, and you can you can dial in your uh, your run out from there. So it's by far I think the best method. Um, you know, everybody thinks that a, a bore of a rifle is actually pretty straight. <laughs> You'd be surprised how how much of a bow that bore is on a rifle. Oh yeah. And, uh, the, the well, a barrel, a barrel whips when it's yeah, fired. Exactly. And a lot of, and that's another thing too. These, these, uh, like for instance, short action customs, they'll say straight jacket armory. Um, you know, there's, there's uh, other barrel manufacturers out there. They're running everything on a CNC for production. They're not going to take the time to clock the barrel. And which I mean by that is a true bench press rifle times it. It's going to take. It's going to time your the curvature of the bore. They'll take the curvature. Yes. If, you're, if you're a long range shooter, they're going to make the curvature go up. So they're going to time the bore of that barrel right at 12 o'clock. That way, you're only fighting gravity. If that bore is situated at a three, the nine o'clock, or anything in between, that's where you're going to get your striations and, and variations of barrel whip, and you're going to
you're going to see that downrange on your group size when your barrel warms up you're going to start seeing your groups open up a, a certain way or going to start stringing left and right well, i can guarantee you because i've built barrels lately to test that and if your bore is off center or not going up and down at either at six o'clock or twelve o'clock and when that barrel warms up after 10 rounds you start seeing stringing horizontally and that's exactly yeah what's going on is that freaking bore is doing this and it's heating up and making different whips so um i don't know what it is but when you get it timed at 12 o'clock or six o'clock it 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 just narrows that that cone of accuracy and you're only focusing on vertical striation yeah harmonic and the vertical harmonic is easier to tune out than it is horizontal yes Yeah, so there's, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, things that I've read. I mean, I, I'm trying it, too. I'm, I'm testing the theories out. I'm not going to, this is something that somebody wrote. No, one's el no one else has talked about. I haven't seen anything demonstrated this way. You could talk to some of these old gunsmiths, and, and they know about it, but they don't believe in it. And I'm like, okay, well, <clears throat> do I believe them, or do I believe this? Well, the only way to find out, let's try it. So... Let's do some tests on it. So I'm a, I guess I'm a shop scientist, <laughs> so to say. <laughs> so I got my own ways of doing things and what I believe works. Um, so far, I mean, I think I've, I've put out a pretty good product. You know, there's folks are, are able to achieve quarter inch groups at a thousand yards and stuff. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy. And, and I thought I was a good shooter. I'm like, dude, I'm, from seeing the rifles that I've built and seen what they come back and showing their group sizes. I'm like, dude, there's a hell of a lot of good shooters out there. And folks kind of really just, uh, you know, they don't really realize, or I guess they, they kind of just um, self-criticize themselves for being not a good shooter. When I'm looking at what they're doing, I'm like, dude, you're shooting better than I am. <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. But, uh, yeah, one guy, uh, Came back the other day and showed his 300 blackout. I mean, this is a pistol, the bolt action uh, out of a Howard Mini 300 blackout uh, with a 12 inch barrel. Freaking dude shot a three inch group at 500 yards with a 300 blackout. And then he, I'm like, okay, cool. He comes back the next day and does a thousand yard group with a 12 inch uh, 300 blackout. And it looked like a, it was a 12 inch or about a 10 inch group at a thousand yards with a blackout. God damn! Like, what the hell? <laughs> so, and uh, I was gonna. Yeah, I have a lot of those pictures on my website too. But oh, man, know. that's that's pretty exciting. The building all that stuff at your house. That's cool. Yeah, it is. It, it, it really is. I guess the, the biggest benefit is I get to see what works. I mean, obviously, I already told you guys I'm a, I'm a cheap ass and poor. So I get to play around with all the high end stuff. And then one day when I could finally sit down and build me a rifle, I'll, I'll know exactly what works and what doesn't. Yep. Yeah. And then, uh, I could also bring that to the table with the other folks because what I try to do is when I build a rifle, I'm not. I'm not just listening or just, you know, when someone says, I need this rifle to do this, I want this part, I want this part, this part. I give my input based off my experience. So when someone says, you know, I need a one and eight twist, I want your, you want, I want the six arc and a one and eight or a one, a one and nine twist. One guy asked me, I want a one and nine twist because I want to shoot, I want to shoot nothing um, heavier than a one, you know, the 105. <clears throat> so I was able to give him my experience that a one on nine twist won't even shoot the 58 grain bullet accurately. You know, but a regular a regular rifle manufacturer is going to be like, okay, we'll build you a barrel. We don't care. You take your money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, for instance, another guy asked me, well, I, I love the rifles that you built. I want you to build the, the one that, you know, that you built at or, or uh, is your six covered? I'm like, okay, well, my first question is, what's your intentions on what, what do you want to do? What's that what's guy's that name? Guy? What's that fellow's what's name? That is your six covered? Yeah. yeah. Rick? Yeah. Skittles? Yeah. That's what, wait, hold on. Skittles. <laughs> That's his rifle's name. Oh. Uh. So, 
the guy asked me to build a rifle just like that, and I come to find out that he wants to take it hunting. So I'm like, um, dude, that rifle weighs 21 pounds. And, and you know, I, you know, we were that we were that close to building that rifle and giving pulling pulling the okay until I found out just sitting down talking to him and say, hey, yeah, he's gonna go hunting with it. I'm like, well, shit, dude, that's not gonna work for you. You're gonna really hate that rifle hunting. So I was able to. Um, switch over the chassis system to something similar using the XLR Element 4. We built an Element 4 uh, rifle, uh, got the rifle weight down to 13 pounds, still an MTU contour. Um, Freaking thing shot phenomenal and meets the meets the weight range that he likes. So, you know, I, I try to really sit down with these guys and, and really talk about what, what you're trying to do. Um, you know, one of the guys wanted to build a 6.5 PRC, and I asked him, well, what do you really want to do? He's like, I, I want to shoot accurately. I'm like, okay, well, then how far can you shoot? He's like, only 500 yards. I says, well, do you ever plan on doing 1,000 yards? He's like, I don't see any time in the near future. But if I'm going to do 1,000 yards, it'd be very rare. I said, well, the 6.5 PRC is kind of overkill for what you're trying to do. Um, he called me the other day. He said, I'm glad I didn't go with the 6.5 PRC because I can't find any ammunition. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? that's a specific animal and yeah. people that shoot long range buy that brass in bulk. You never yeah. find that stuff just laying around. Exactly. So, you know, that, that, that's some of the questions I ask. I'm like, are you a hand loader? Do you plan on hand loading the cartridge? Um, when they, you know, some of the folks that I've talked to, they said, no, they don't, they don't hand load. They want to shoot back for the ammo. Um, so they, you know, I bring from my experience what I know works. So factory ammunition, I know the six creed more. You could get if you can find the factory ELD bullets. So they always shoot about half inch on a good barrel, and uh, that's that's kind of you know what I talk about. But yeah, I mean that's uh, just, you know, been been blessed to do what I'm doing now as a hobby. It's People keep saying I'm doing it for money. I'm I'm really not. I I do it just because I love doing it. I I make a little bit of money enough to buy bullets, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm I'm buying bullets to shoot in other people's rifles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I don't have high end optics. I mean, I have that Burst XTR three, and they're trying to give that to me for being an ambassador. But I told them I'm, I'm going to buy that off of them. That's about it. No. Yeah, don't take nothing from those people. No. Because then they'll expect something back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not that way. They, they should know that with the reviews I do. I'm not loyal to anybody. <laughs> well, it's fine being loyal to a product if the product is what you say it is. Right, yeah. It, but, that's what I mean. Like, if, if you, you bring know. out a product... For one, I'm going to try not to do a review on it unless it's something that needs to be said. Because it just, it just bothered me that day. Everybody else keeps portraying a certain product to be a certain way when I know it's not. That That's when I do a video. <laughs> so. Well, that's when you should. Right. And it, what it is, is I'm just trying to... Well, I don't know if my opinion even matters, but as a, as a person that can relate to a lot of the shooters out there, because I'm just like you guys, I'm, I'm not going to spend a thousand six hundred dollars on an optic. I'm not. I can't really afford that. I'm looking for optics at eight hundred dollar range. I'm looking for optics at four hundred bucks that work well. But when someone bullshits out there and says, "Hey, this is a four hundred dollar optic that could do all of this and keep up with spitting vendors," and I know for sure because I have experience behind those optics. I'm going to call bullshit. Yeah. Or if a six arc is saying you shoot a half inch group at with an AR, when here I am with 27 of these freaking barrels that I've tested, not one of them has put a consistent half inch group. Um, so the arc is just not what it's supposed to be because of the way they designed the chamber. Yeah. And uh, it's too much freeboard. It's a very jump sensitive cartridge. So basically. Yeah. They saw what happened to the 350 Legend, and they decided to overdo the free bore so that they wouldn't have any type of problems like that. Yep. Yeah. 
This is a uh, 105 grain hybrid. And the overall length of this cartridge is 2.373. And I got a Sammy Spec Reamer. This is what puts out a quarter inch group out of the bolt gun with a Sammy Spec chamber. I put this cartridge on a couple of my AR barrels and get about a half inch group or just under half inch group. But I'm single feeding them. If I push that bullet in to 2.2 or 2.9 or 2.290, which is my max mag length, it will shoot about MOA, if not a little less or a little more than that. <coughs> it's a very, very jump sensitive cartridge. So I've, uh, I don't have Facebook, and a lot of folks keep saying that the six arc Facebook group are showing results. I had my sister-in-law go on there and look at it and kind of give me a snapshot and folks that are showing groups are either one running the uinta precision ar bolt action two are showing groups using bar get or extruded powder but then i know for sure those velocities are about 2500 to 2560 feet a second so super slow um and then that's about it you know if anybody shows groups at the Three shot group. It's only one group, and that one time that AR shot that. <laughs> That's shitty. So basically. That's just another cartridge they came out with to make money off of. Um, I really think they kind of shot themselves in the foot. I mean, they had the right concept to try to build the cartridge around. The 108 ELD and the 105 Volta Hollow. That was going to be their their cartridge to to, to satisfy the uh, military requirements of having a AR a 308 performance out of an AR-15. But what they what they couldn't get around was a 243 LBC. Now that's a, success, a very successful cartridge Wildcat on the AR-15. Um, but the, I don't know if there's patents involved or something involved where they couldn't take that design. So they had to do something different. And that's where they shot themselves with the foot. They should have took the 243 LBC, the exact same dimensions of that, get shorter or something just so you could run the 108s and made that a Sammy spec cartridge. Because I have a 243 LBC and that freaking thing shoots lights up on an AR-15. That, that will put a, with a 90 grain, um, Soft point, that will put out a half inch group all day long. So what do you think is going to be your next project? Well, de definitely the AR. You know, I, I, I don't like um, taking failure for granted. So I know, I know what the fix is. So make it happen, right? Right. Now, my biggest thing is, okay, <laughs> I show on my channel that definitely here's a fix and here's what you could get out, the true performance out of a 6 arc, out of an AR-15. This is what it's supposed to do, and I'm achieving this. The next thing I'm going to get bombarded with is, well, make me a barrel. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm trying to play it right to where I'm working with Anthony Ward from Crown Ridge to see if he's willing to make AR barrel blanks or AR barrels. I could send him the reamer once we get it all figured out and have him to bust out a bunch of these uh bunch a bunch of these uh rifle barrels. Because he is one of the only guys that I, I could say knows what he's doing behind a CNC lathe. Uh, that guy will put out some pretty good impressive barrels out of his shop for a pretty good price. And uh, he uses Excalibur barrels so that's another good place. If you guys are looking for a pre-fit barrel, definitely check out uh, Crown Ridge Barrels um, over there in Washington. Uh, I, I work with them quite often. But, uh, yeah, get the AR working. Um, I need to build an ELR rifle. So I'm, I need to get. I need to fix the seven SOM. I have a, a, a Savage 12 target action that Taco gave me to play around with. What's Taco been up to? I haven't talked to him in forever. 
dude's busy, dude. He's freaking super busy. He's kind of lost motivation to do videos because of all the channel strikes. But uh, I think he'll come back. Channel strikes? What's he getting channel strikes for? The casting? Something, yeah. He got a couple videos deleted recently and all that. Oh, fuck. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. But uh, I can kind of tell that, that whole side of the community, I guess, the, the guys clinging on to TRN and all that, they kind of just, uh, <laughs> they kind of shun me out of the group. Uh, I, I can see, a, I can feel a different vibe when I go into GSC chats and all that. What are you talking about? Hold on. <laughs> the, oh, the Reloaders uh, Network? Well, the guys that are clinging on to the whole that whole place. Um, I guess the folks that we, you know, we grew up on, well, I grew up on learning about reloading. We, I can tell they don't watch my channel. They don't want to do anything involved. They kind of just shun me out a little bit. And it sucks, you know, because... Who's you know, all this? Who's all these people? I don't want to put names out there, but you can tell when you go to, you know, they don't watch my channel, first of all. Second of all, they, you know, they kind of really short with me on the answers. I don't know what I do to piss them off. I consider them friends, but it's pretty sad. To See, I don't know who you're talking about. I, I mean, uh, uh, I know yeah, you and Will, uh, you and Willie had an issue that one time because he blew uh, his gun up. But yeah, I I, I, I don't know. I, I I try not to get all involved in people's stuff yeah, like that. Because I, I think a lot of it's because I, I kind of I don't do a lot of casting stuff. Um, and the funny part is, is actually I shoot a lot of pistol. I shoot a shit ton of pistol. I just, I don't do videos on it because I'm actually out there to actually practice. So I, maybe I should, but I think it's kind of boring. You know, I, I, I did a couple pistol videos to test that out, but people don't want to see it. You know, they'll see, I, I'll have like 200 or 300 views. So I'm like, eh, I won't do any pistol stuff, but all my casting stuff that I do is just um, lately has been full automatic for the 300 blackout and um, pistol. <laughs> so, excuse me. I think a lot of folks uh, on that side don't really watch their channel anymore because of that. Because of what? Uh, not not in not uh, doing a lot of casting stuff. Oh. Uh. Well, I mean, everybody's getting kicked off of YouTube for casting, so. <laughs> right. Um, and I, dude, I don't know. I don't care. I, I've gotten strikes uh, a month ago. I had two strikes again. So that's why I stopped posting for about two weeks. And then I have one. Yeah, I, rem I remember you stopped for a while. I was like, I didn't know what was going on if you were sick or something was going on. Yeah, I, I was getting channel strikes, but. It, it kicked me off YouTube. I really don't care, to be honest. I mean, I only do it just because it, it's something to upload, and hopefully it sticks around so my son can come back and view it all, you know? I mean, that's, that's my own, honestly one of my only motivations for doing the videos that I do. It's one to help spread the knowledge of reloading because it's a very – it's a dying art. You don't see anybody my age really doing what I'm doing or doing what we're doing now. It's very, yeah. very – to see folks my age even do that so that's why i'm like uh i'm really against channels that are trying to say oh I, you know support me on patreon and i'm going to show you how to do this i mean that's bullshit do you not know that the second amendment and what we do all entails folks like you sharing how to do things and if you exactly want to, that's you want to, that's yeah. why that's why listen okay, okay. That guy, Alaskan Ballistics. Yeah. I told, I was talking to him. I was like, yeah, I've been building ARs for a couple years. Yeah. And he's like, a couple years, how long? And I'm like, since 84. He's like, that's more than a couple years. I'm like, well, yeah, but it's just a couple years. And he's like, he's like, oh, I wanted you to help me do this uh, 22250 AR-10 barrel. Right. and make it work and i'm like well you realize that ain't gonna be cheap right i'm like people have tried you're not the first person to do this i'm like people have done this back in the 90s 
and they failed and they were a big company. So I can help you do it. Is it going to be a hundred percent reliable? Probably not. Yeah. Um, and it's just the way it is because that cartridge was never intended to be functioned in a direct impingement gun, semi-automatic gun. You know, it just doesn't have the weight of the bullet or the charge weight to move the action. Right. And, you know, so there's that. And, but I was going to work on it for him. Then he had me on. He's like, oh, I want to I have you on a live stream. So I, I go on a live stream with him. And he's like, turn your camera on, turn your camera on. And I didn't want to tell him, you know, my face is all fucked up because I've been having an allergic reaction to medication. You know, I've been sick lately. I've been in the hospital and shit. So I didn't say anything to him. I just went on and he starts looking at me like I'm like the missing link. And he's talking down to me and shit on the show didn't no. i mean just a complete prick dude yeah, he's like right. yeah that ain't right dude i was trying to help him out i wasn't trying to do anything you know and he's just like and then i send him a text after he gets re monetized and i'm like are you going to be interested in continuing on with that 250 22 250 barrel now that you're re monetized and he was like, no, I've got too many hospital bills for my wife. And I'm just like, okay, well, thanks for wasting my time. You know, that, that's what gets me, these guys that are on YouTube, and they're bitching and complaining about monetization, YouTube taking their videos for monetization. I'm like, you know, someone needs to say out, straight out say, in order for you to make a decent amount of money, your videos on average have to hit 25,000 to 50,000 views. And that's to make like, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest. It's going to make, it's going to make you about 300 bucks. Yep. Three to 500 bucks. Yep. Yep. You're going to get about that. Um, maybe if you're a lucky. Thousand, yeah. If you're lucky, if, if you have high traffic and you get a hundred thousand views a few times, you'll make close to a thousand a month. Most of these channels that are bitching and complaining about freaking monetization, they want Patreon, they want support, all this other crap. You're they're not getting they're getting pennies. And folks don't realize, oh, I hate YouTube and you know they're they're leftists and all that, but oh go support me on Patreon. Patreon is the biggest freaking leftist company out Oh yeah. There. Big time anti gun. They donate yeah. to anti gun. But you look like a stupid hypocrite if you actually know how to do your own research. Um, yeah. You know, well, no one ever kicks you off Patreon. Well, duh, because Patreon is making money off of you. But if you want to be true to your word and say you don't want to support leftist companies, why are you on freaking Patreon? So that's what gets me as a second. And then, not to mention, not to mention, Patreon. <laughs> listen to this shit. I had a friend who had a bigger channel, like your size. He went on Patreon. And he thought that was the next thing to do. He's like, you know, um, I was used to having a little extra money coming in. Now YouTube kicked it off. So I'm going to try this other thing and see if what it's about. Well, he hooks up on it. He starts doing his videos. And he's still doing videos over on YouTube. He gets this fucking thing in the mail, dude. And it's a fucking lawsuit. <laughs> Patreon was suing him for putting what it considered its material up on YouTube. Because the, the paperwork he had filled out, he didn't realize that he had signed a disclosure agreement that anything that he puts up on on um on uh, what is it called um fucking yeah anything that he puts up on there is partially owned by them because they are promoting it 
So if you're going to promote the same video that you put up on Patreon on YouTube, you have to pay Patreon for their loss of funds. Yeah, there was this big thing with that, and everybody was like wanting to sue Patreon because... And, you know, that I don't understand why folks are gravitating towards that. Obviously, there's probably a new, a new like, platform out there. But yeah. In my opinion, if you got something to talk about and you know for sure you have a good following, why would you want you to put, or why would you want a third-party company taking 10% or whatever it is that you take out, out of your, uh, you know, out, out of your, of your cut? Yeah. Wouldn't it be smarter to LLC your freaking YouTube, which then you have tax write-offs, anything you buy related to your channel, video equipment, reloading components, um, guns, yeah. parts, whatever, all of that's tax write-off. Then open up a website, another tax write-off. You have a website. You have your parts, your products, your freaking T-shirts, whatever it is, merch that you want. You own the website. Yeah, you pay 20 bucks a month. Then you can write your articles. You can have private membership there for folks looking at private videos that you upload on your website. All of that you retain 100% profit. Right? Right. So if you have a good following and you know you have loyal viewers, why are folks using something like that? It, it, I'll, it really I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Not a problem on sites like yours where you have people coming and going freely saying what they want doing what they want exchanging information with whoever they want but when you start making rules and regulations that make you a tyrannical website and yeah. this is what this is what uh, happened with loads of bacon. What happened to me? And yeah, life, yeah, life, yes, life. yes. It happened to you, and it happened with loads of bacon. And you see how everybody turned on him. It's because the bottom line was he has about ten guys over there on that website that worship the ground he walks on. I know. Yeah. And. Yeah. Everybody else could give a fuck if that website comes or goes. They really could. They could be like, you know what? If it went tomorrow, I could care less. Because the reason being is every time you go on that website, it's the same seven or ten guys leaving the same type of comments. And it gets old and there's never anything on there new very limited stuff. Some people you can follow their videos on there, which is nice. But right. for the most for the most part, you've got YouTube without the amount of exposure and without the amount of membership. So you have actually less exposure, but you're able to say what you want to say yeah so there's just like there's like constant trade-offs yeah you may not be able to say what you want to say on youtube but people are going to see what you do produce it's right. not going to be you know lost and everybody i know that's tried a website has failed like like um uh high boy and the reason why he failed, simple. He talks like he's this big Second Amendment supporter and, and, and in the Constitution and all this shit. Then he opens a website and he makes it frowned upon if you use incorrect English. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that was my biggest, one, one of the biggest things. Same thing. Yeah, yeah, dude. It, it, it's like yeah. it's it's like, dude. He was coming in, and he was correcting people's spelling. He would come in, and he would have 
everyone that was a moderate moderator come on there and fix everyone's imperfect English and spelling. Yeah. And he asked me to do that. And I told him, I said, Hey, look, I don't see real well. I don't have a computer. I have a phone. You've got me as a moderator. You want me to read dozens, you know, hundreds of pages of text on a cell phone. I'm like, I'm, I'm blind. You know that I'm blind, right? And I'm like, I'm not doing that. And then he's like, well, maybe you could help make sure the guys are, you know, using correct English. And I'm like, I was not a school teacher. I was a yeah. repo agent. I don't have anything to do with correcting people's bad English because my English isn't that good to begin with. Right. And that's not what I want to do here. If somebody wants to know how to build an AR-15 or load for one, I'll help them. Other than that, that's your job. You're running the bulletin board. And he didn't like that. So me and him had a kind of a parting of ways. And I was just like, I was just like, dude, you can't be a Nazi. You got to have people, let people be free to talk to each other. Right. And I'm like, and if they want to discuss load data, you just put a disclaimer on the damn website. Right. Any, any load data that is presented here is not part of the website. And each person is to, you know, act accordingly and use caution when using these right. sites or these, these, uh, these things, these, these, uh, information. And he didn't do that. And then he wondered why everybody stopped paying him for the, his site because he was like, I'll do the site, but everybody's got to pay for it. I never told him I'd pay him a dollar. I just said, I'll come on there. But I'm not paying for it because, once again, I'm disabled. I don't work. Well, and that's that's kind of where I bumped heads with, obviously, the TRN and I boy as well. Because there's a few times when I remember a couple live chats when he was saying he has all his credit card debt and all that stuff. So I don't know if it's just me or my business-minded personality that I have. I suggested, well, shit, you have all of these dealer presses. Phenomenal, dude. Phenomenal freaking reloading equipment you have there. You have a nice shop. It looks like you have a nice place of, of, of where you can operate a reloading class. You obviously love doing these little um, reloading chats on wherever it is on YouTube and all that. How about reaching out locally to your FFLs in the community and have folks come over and actually work on your work on learning how to reload? I said, dude, you could charge a shit ton of money. People pay hundreds of dollars to learn what you know. Um, and I was shunned off by him and his wife like it was the stupidest idea ever. I'm like, dude, you got all that equipment for free. You either make tutorials that aren't like two hours of, or four weeks long about one subject. You make it simple. Learn how to actually get to the damn subject, first of all. Um, yeah. Now, you know, and that was one of the biggest things. He goes off on these tangents. Um Learn about one aspect of that machine. Make it short. Make it five, six minutes. And do little tutorials, and you could, you know, put on your website for folks to be members of and, and do that. Or better yet, like I mentioned, have folks come over and do reloading classes. Now, I do this once a month, actually for free. And it's because I, I'm trying to share the community and share the reloading aspect of how to do things. Folks are brand new shooters. People are looking to make ammunition. I want folks to know how to operate their firearm and also make safe ammunition. That's my biggest goal. So I do it for free. He could do it because he has a lot of equipment and he has not a lot of experience and he's obviously oh, at yeah. the time hurting for money. Now, where I bump heads is exactly what you're saying. I saw it on those forums. It is manipulating your articles and posts, taking affiliated links, changing it to benefit yourself. Um, if you change anything on someone's post about their spelling, their grammar, and all of that, it's very demeaning, regardless of your intentions. 
Doesn't yes, it, you, you, yeah, what is the word condescending? It's uh, very condescending, yeah. Yes. Dude, I am not the best grammar person. I have a lot of college education. I actually, you know, I got certificates, I got degrees, I got a, I have an AAS, AAS degree, and I got a master's in science. English was not my freaking best subject. Yeah. I, I have, I learned two languages. English is my second language, so there we go. If you're going to change my post, and just because I didn't add a freaking comma here, or I didn't put quotes or reference something, condescending is as hell. Second of all, where I was bumping heads is, well, shit, dude, I got products, I got ideas, I have suggestions. But you got folks on your website that are just putting a, putting a video out there. No, and I try to say, it can be as nice as possible. They're being lazy. If you want to be an author, what's an author to you? An author is to be on there and actually write a description about what you're talking about. Something that not only references the videos, but also goes down in details of what you're trying to explain in your video. You know, um, a lot of folks not only want to watch the video, or <laughs> if you look at the watch time, you can take your five-minute average video, and you're going to know that your audience retention is two and a half minutes. Always half of that. Yep. But just statistically-wise, that just people just don't have the time anymore. But books will sit down and read, because I do this. This is something I do. I'll, I like reading. I'll read everything and go over all of that, because that's something I visually can just realize in my head. So folks that aren't doing that on the website, I think really failed on that. And then second of all, I had all these ideas to put out, like not just products, but things that help. So taking control of that aspect of it where, oh, I'll pay you this, um, you know, when you know you, you sell X amount of these products or whatever, or if you decide to put your target cams on there, um, you know, I don't know how many is going to sell. That's the problem. It's like everything was dictated, you know, by a freaking dictator. And people didn't realize that that's what that guy was doing. Nothing against his personality. It's just he is a controlled person. And I know this because he's in the same branch in the military I came from. And I could tell those kind of freaking, uh, you know, officers. I'm like, dude, you're the kind of person I want to freaking take to the back and beat the shit out of because I know your personality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what got me. It's like you're very controlling. Um, and you can't, you can't have freedom to talk about reloading. And, uh, and not be condescending and, and let folks do their own thing. You're going to have a failed website. Um, and then yeah. you're going on there saying, oh, you're being negative about a certain person. It's like, no, it's not about being negative. It's not about calling anybody out. It's about having an arg a, a, a destructive argument where folks can learn off each other. Okay, I see that this is what you're saying, but this is not the results that I'm getting. Can you further explain or whatever it is? That you can argue about uh, reloading. Everybody's going to have a different opinion how to do things. It's nothing disrespectful. Um, people just take it up the ass because they're just softies nowadays. So that's just the problem. You know. But I don't know. Um, I mean, I, I wish the best, but like you're saying, I don't see the traffic on the website. It, it was very childish of him to ban me off the Discord and the freaking website. Um, what? What? Yeah, I was banned off Discord and the website. So, oh know, my gosh! And people don't realize that it's like, what did I do? I, I just basically called it like it is. Dude, freaking stole products. He stole things off Thingiverse and tried to say it's his own, but that is, it wasn't his own his own idea. Um, you know, taking James Cobra really put me over the edge because I'm like, dude, for one, give credit to the guy that designed the fucking product. First of all, if anything, you could do that. Say, hey man, here's a design from uh, Jim. I'm like, it's common practice and just courtesy to do that of a person. It's nothing you've thought of. Just because he made it a 3D printed your product and you know it's stolen, he did it on purpose, in my opinion. It's like, it's just kind of a backstab move. And that's the kind of crap that I don't put up with. So people want to think all this, you know, this is Angel and nothing wrong with this that he did. They didn't see all the things he did to me personally because obviously I kept it secret or. Just had no need to talk about it, like changing my post affiliate links, changing my articles left and right. Um, yeah, no, he he's yeah. run off a couple of guys. He ran me off. He ran you off. Yeah, I was like, and I, I I was just like, I was just like, this is way too much shit for what I'm getting out of this. 
yeah. I was like, I'm I'm here to express my freedom of what I want to talk about. Isn't that what you what you said is what it's all about? It's about having a different platform to express your, your Second Amendment, what you love to do without the restrictions of YouTube. We are more freaking restrictive than dictator than the damn YouTube to begin with. So, uh, and then the then he made the website a, a, a gosh damn billboard. You want? I had every one of my friends that check out the website, and they're like, "What the shit?" What is all these ads popping up on my computer? They're old. I mean, these are older gentlemen, and they're they're getting on the website. And the first thing you see is, "Oh, Lee, buy this." "Oh, we're a Brownell, buy this." "Oh, go here, buy this." It's like it doesn't yeah. look like a professional. It looks like dog trash because I kept trying to give him my, you know, my. I said the same thing. He had way too many fucking, dude. You go to a website. You need like eight different areas to talk in he had 35 or 40 different areas to to talk in you know what i'm talking about yeah i I got literally i got lost (laughs) on the website where i had to reboot my phone because i couldn't get my phone out Dude, I had to turn off my phone, yeah. and that was the last time I ever was on there. I was like, he's got this so much more harder than it needs to be. Why doesn't he have welcome to the site, reloading, um, presses, or equipment, and, yeah. and, 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 and have like, like eight different choices once you get on the website to choose from yeah. I, there's yeah. like 30 and then once you get in those there's ones that you can't even see that are like even more I'm just like this is well, laid out where it goes in 70 different directions at once yeah exactly man it was a really piss poor layout you know in the last straw I think some folks know about this but the last straw and actually I thank him for this because this is what actually uh, motivating me to start my business was I couldn't go to SHOT Show uh, when I asked to go to SHOT Show. I've never been. I always wanted to go to SHOT Show for, you know, just to be there in general. And I, yeah. I I was able to go there under a media as an author because I was part of the Reloaders Network. So I tried asking him a few times. Like five times in a row I asked him, hey, man, if I write up a letter saying that you're, you're letting me go to SHOT Show as an author to represent your company, um, this will get me in as a, as a media. I'm like, I'll write the freaking letter. All you got to do is you can edit it the way you want to, like you're always going to do anyway. Um, and I just want my, my me and my wife to go. Uh, I asked numerous times, freaking was shunned away so many times. I was like, that was it. I'm like, dude, I did all this freaking work for you and your stupid website and, and the community. And the last, the least thing that I was asking you to do was just let me go to SHOT Show under your company name which would have been nothing but, oh, let me sign this letter for you. It was a control thing, and that's what really got under my skin. So I, I got in, but I couldn't get my wife in. And my wife really wanted to go, and that freaking really pissed me off. And I was like, screw it. Screw you. I'll make my own freaking company. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I was there for that. I was like, just make your own. So I'm like, okay, go online real quick. Oh, 400 bucks, LLC, send it. Boom. Two days later, <laughs> started my business. I guess I'm gonna be a good bit. <laughs> so, but it all went for a good cause, you know. But it all helped me out. Um, just pushed me, motivated me more to become better and provide provide to our community, not just education wise on how to reload, but an actual product that would help out. Um, and the rifles or my talent, I could I could at least help out and get my talent to building rifles, if you so call it a talent. So, I don't know, man. Just uh, I know ever right. since all that happened, I I've lost a lot of friends. Well, what I consider friends, um, they looked at me a different way, but they never really seen both sides of the story. Uh, it's uh, it is hurtful. I mean, I, I'm a pretty tough person, tough skinned person, but no one. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, that. yeah. Cause yeah, I know exactly yeah. what you. I've had my feelings hurt on youtube quite a few times because i didn't grow up with computers i grew up with real people and i treat people like i would want to be treated because 
in the real world you treat somebody like some of these guys do you get your fucking ass handed to you you know it's not a keyboard that you're hiding behind there someone would pull you out of your car and work your ass oh yeah yeah same thing with yeah me. I, I come back it's like it's like having your book published and all of a sudden you find out that whatever you had on there was changed and you're freaking there's links and stuff to go make money off of you <laughs> yeah I'll piss anybody off. So, um, I'm like, well, cool, man. I guess he needed it that bad, but uh, I, you know, donated money. I did all kinds of stuff to help out. But it's like, you know. Yeah, every everybody has for him, dude. The yeah. you know, the shit that people have done for that guy. You know, I, I I don't know him personally. He's never given me you know any kind of chance to even know him so it, it's no big deal to me you know he's just you know loads of bacon um but i was friends with uh with um who's the other fellow that lives in utah who um logan um, no the, is, is that what, what the fellow no 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 not not not, not wet desert um uh, full lead taco. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. He always seemed like he was a pretty nice guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, he's he's generally a very giving person. Um, it, but that's that's kind of a, a way he grew up. You know, same thing with me. He's he's got that he got that instilled in him. Uh, I don't know if you know, but he is Japanese. Yeah. So it's kind of. I don't want to say a culture thing or be racist or anything, but it's it's just something that you're growing up that's part of your culture. Kind of, kind of my same thing with us. Where if you come to my house, you're going to get shoved food down your mouth. Filipino food. That's how Filipinos are. We're always going to be hospital to give you food. So he's kind of that. Oh yeah, I had a friend in high school, and she was Filipino, and me and my girlfriend and all of our friends, we would go to her house and hang out. And it was the first time I ever saw a rice machine with a hundred pounds of rice in it. Yes. And my and my stupid ass friend Eric, he was checking it out and broke the little thing on it, and Bryce started going everywhere. And she's like, "Oh my God, you broke the spout!" And like, it was funny. It, it was it was comical. But yeah, see, I didn't even know that you were Asian. Yeah. I didn't know because I just I. Uh, my my uh, brother-in-law is Chinese. He speaks Mandarin and Cantonese. He, he grew up in China. And basically, he's a really nice kid, very smart with computers. And he owns a couple houses. So he's doing really good for himself. Um, but I just never really, you know, look at people like that and say, oh, you're this, you're that. I just, I, I just said, oh, you're into guns, you know, that kind of thing. Right, man. Yeah, I just—he's uh, a very nice person. I'm glad to have met him, and um, I know he's kind of standoff, or sometimes he's hard to get a hold of. People kind of think he's like standoffish, but he just—I know he's super busy. He's got like a crap ton of uh, computer work that he does. Oh, he God. was the first guy that gave me load data on YouTube for 458 SOCOM. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I need to build one one day. Dude, uh, why in the hell haven't you built that cartridge? I'm like... I don't know, dude. ARs, I, I just kind of gravitated not using the AR much. Um, for one, I just... I don't know, dude. Uh, I started off with the AR and kind of really... Went towards the bolt actions. I don't know why. I, mean, I have no problem against using an AR. <laughs> we just see some of the comments I had in the last video. They're like, well, you should learn how to use an AR. I'm like, well, I wouldn't say it that bad. Because <laughs> the fundamentals of shooting a bolt action can kind of transfer over to an AR. And they bring yeah. up all the recoil, the recoil impulse and all that. I'm like, dude, all of that crap you're talking about is everything you felt after the bullet leaves your damn bullet, your, your, your barrel, right? So yeah. whatever you do to make sure that that bullet goes straight as possible, it's 
all the same. It's fundamentally the, fundamentally the same as a freaking bolt action if you're target shooting. If you're looking at trying to follow up your shots, yeah, maybe there's something to do with recoiling the fundamentals on the AR. It's different than a bolt action. But if you're talking about precision shooting behind a rifle prone for accuracy, it's you can be learn same. on yeah. a $30 Marlin single shot, 22 short. Yeah. Everything that you can <laughs> run on an AR-15 or a seven, eight thousand dollar precision rifle, they yeah. all do the exact same things. You got to learn uh, the basics. Everybody's saying, "Oh, you're 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 a trigger slapper." I'm like, "Huh?" A trigger oh. slapper. I was like, what are you and I'd be like, and, and you know what you are? You're a fucking parrot because you just heard that word on the last website you were watching. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm looking at like, okay. Am I a trigger slapper? Maybe, you know, I sort of question myself. I know for sure I'm not because everything, every time I, how I break my shots, I just know this is I surprise myself every single time. That's just what I do for doing precision shots. I keep pulling back until it just goes off. Um, I don't know when it goes off, it just does. So I know I'm not a trigger slapper because of that. Second, I'm like, okay, what is he looking at? So I look at my video and what he's seeing is that I'm very quick off the trigger right away. So it looks like I'm slapping the trigger. Like, I'm, you know, pull back, it goes off. Ah, uh, yeah. He's seeing uh, the he, other movement, and he's yeah, thinking. So, yeah, <laughs> it's like. If you slow it down, you'll see where it goes clunk, and my finger stays still, then I'm off the trigger. So it's like, like watching uh, a wheel on a motorcycle go around in a circle, and it looks like it's going backwards. Yeah. So I'm and, like, oh, yeah. that's what I'm seeing. But he's like, he's got to be seeing that. It's not like a You're an optical like, illusion. Like, just yeah. an optical illusion. And then they, they say, oh, you, you keep shooting off a wobbly-ass table. I'm like, really? Because the last time I checked, that freaking annihilated that three-egg ch- or six-egg challenge off the table. <laughs> so, I'm like, and you can see in that video, because I got the trigger cam set up behind the rifle, the table ain't, a, ain't an issue at all. That table sits freaking steady as it can be. You know, as long as there's no wind. If there's, if there's wind, obviously anything's going to sway you around on the table. So right. Thing, I can sit on that freaking table all day long and put out mile long shots. There's nothing wrong with shooting off a freaking table. So. No, as a matter of fact, if you have a chance to stabilize your shot with anything, right. you do it. It makes the shot easier. Yeah. Right. Like, That's oh, like. Well, you should shoot prone. Like, yeah, yeah, I would love to shoot prone and not sit on a freaking anthill once in a while. But, uh, I guess you don't know about that because <laughs> you're not here school with me. <laughs> I'm like, you know, oh, they'll say, they'll reference, are you shooting you just, off a wobbly, wobbly truck? I'm like, dude. It's- yeah, I love those. I'm like, dude. At yeah. least I'm shooting. I go to your I go to your channel and you have t- 38 subscribers and not one video. Yeah, and that's another thing. I'm like, okay, so you want to blame all of these fundamentals? And say, oh, ARs could do this, and I'm like, okay, so I, I get it. As an AR shooter, you're inexperienced, and you want to blame everybody else's fundamentals to give you the excuse to why you're you're that you're supposedly not bad on the AR, or you kind of just suck in general. The truth is, you suck at shooting an AR because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these military guys that come out of here, like, oh, I, I qualify marksman. I'm like, oh yeah, cool, you did, huh? Like, oh yeah, yeah they I'll can't hit a broadside of a barn. Yeah, I'm like, oh, you qualify marksman? Oh, yeah, so did everybody, every other freaking person I know. <laughs> like, what do you mean by that? I'm like, what do I mean? It's a participation yeah. trophy. Yeah. I'm like, is it, I said, do you really want to get humbled right now? You like, you know, I have a guy out here. It's like, oh, I was a marksman. And I was a you know, qualified ranger and all this stuff. I was like, first of all, a lot of folks that say they're rangers, and this would be another topic. Are not flipping rangers because there's two ways of being a ranger from what I found out. You could go to ranger training and tab out, what they call it, considered tab training, which is a four week course. And yep. you have ranger courses, and you're not a ranger though, you're a ranger qualified. Then you go back, yeah. to the, you, go, you come back to your squad, and you're able to supposedly leave your squad because you have ranger training. That doesn't mean you're a ranger. A lot of folks freaking. And this is what gets under my skin, stolen valor of this, but there's a few folks in our community, which I don't want to say names, are out there saying uh, they're and they're not. Yeah. 
Yeah, I already know who you're. I already know who you're talking about, and I agree so, with you. I, I, I straight up want to call him out one day because it's such a huge disgrace, especially in my own family, my brother being a Green Beret, losing his freaking life because of his because he earned what he had to do. That guy has changed his personality to do what he had to do, sacrifice his life because he was an actual Green Beret because of, of, of the job he had to do. Regardless of the other, I guess another tantrum. So yeah, this guy out here is saying he's a ranger, ranger qualified. I'm like, cool. Let me go bring out a brand new PRS shooter. So I go, I, my, my friend David comes out. And I'm like, cool, man. Um, he's gonna shoot offhand at a thousand yards. You go ahead, do what you gotta do for a thousand yards. <laughs> and he's like, Let, let's do let's do a little little challenge. Ten shots. How many impacts can you get at a thousand yards? He, he shoots 10 shots. Dude was, was all over the freaking target, right? He's got a designate, designate a marksman 308 and all this stuff. And my friend David, offhand, nails two impacts. <laughs> offhand. I'm like, there's a difference. Here's a humble experience. You could be qualified marksman, but this day and age, it doesn't mean crap because the, the, the competitive shooter nowadays in the civilian life will outshoot the shit out of you. Any day yes, because they shoot more. <laughs> yes, because they're actually out here in the fundamentals, actually training. So, um, I said, well, if you really want to learn, <laughs> for, for one, you got to humble yourself. <laughs> so, get rid of your qualification status and let's go over some fundamentals how to shoot out these damn heat out here. <laughs> so, but yeah. Uh, I guess uh, enough ranting tonight. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to go pretty. I want to. I want to go pretty deep in that one because, for one, you don't lose your damn DD two one fours. There's only ten years that 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 happened. I think back in what the nineteen nineties when supposedly the uh, the military uh, had a fire or something and lost X amount of people with DD two one fours. Yeah. So. Yeah, the DD two fourteens. Yeah, two fourteens. Yeah. Yeah, those. You, all you have to do to get another one of those. Oh, I know. I, I can call listen, right now. He, he's yeah, my my, my when my when my dad died. <laughs> um, I had he he was um a um Air Force fella. And he had a dual MOS. His his four older brothers were in the military as well during the Vietnam War, and they were um, fighting active combat. So he took a second MOS as a driver in Southern California on a Air Force base yeah. until one of his brothers got out of his tour of duty. And then my dad went to Vietnam and was a load master on a C-130 Hercules yeah, awesome. and, yeah, so and flew during the Tet Offensive. Okay. And his, his personal C-130, he was a load master in the back, took over 123 small arms uh, hits. And every time they landed he took on over 10 gallons of hydraulic fuel fluid because the entire bay was covered in hydraulic fuel because it was leaking so bad yeah. and they were dropping beans and bullets to the um marines that were fighting in the city of way during the tet offensive so that's some crazy shit, isn't it yeah absolutely that hydraulic problems were a common issue on those either that the hoses that are on there, fittings are really busted loose or getting shot off. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, wow. and there's there just you, you, if you're one of those type of guys, and I've met those guys, they don't act like these guys do. No, no, the, the guys that I know for sure. I mean, uh, yeah, you probably have seen him on YouTube. He, he's been around uh, plus five. He's an actually He's been. He's a yeah. Ranger, yeah. So. Came over here they, the, those out. guys never talk about what they did because yeah. they're very that's their information their life their deal yeah. and basically they don't want to talk about that shit well, I, well 
you know, because they had, they had to mind. kill people. Yeah, they had to and kill people. Just, you know, yeah, I guess he, he, he doesn't really talk about it. No one really That's because nobody really wants. I mean, oh, yeah. that's private type of. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's something yeah. that that it's it's not polite to ask someone about something like that. I, I just I never asked my dad about it. He he talked about it a couple times, and I listened, and then that was about it. Cause right, I I, I didn't know what it was about. You know, I just wanted to. I was, just, I was curious in the training, but I'm like, I kind of. I, I reason why I want to know is because I want to know what my brother went through. I mean, he he talked about a little bit. Obviously, Green Beret training is a little bit different. Um, but their qualifications of being able to go through that kind of training for one, <laughs> you gotta know how to spell. Two, um, you, you're pretty educated. The guys that are into that kind of training actually have you can tell the way they carry themselves are actually very intelligent folks. Yes. One, they plan off. They plan adapt and overcome pretty quick. They have that kind of personality. Uh, you know, two, they're quick to, to talk or think out of their feet. So. They got quips, basically. So if you come up with something to go get some, I mean, they're man, they're gonna come right back at you really quick. So there's little things I noticed. Of why well, you could definitely tell the person's uh, my personal personality. But um, like I said, I, I see it a lot on you know. It's sad to say our own community, it's just but it, it really gets to me because of me losing my brother. I guess you know. Yeah. But, I don't know. It's just, uh, yeah, but whatever. I just, I don't care. If they want to, their lives must suck that bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's me. Dude, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm not going to call them out. Somebody's got all they got. But um, I guess the main thing to focus on is <laughs> the, the military training um, doesn't make you a better shooter in the civilian world. It, it probably gets you some of your fundamentals, but... There's a lot of fundamentals that they trained as well that just don't work on PRS or F class shooting or any of that. There's a, you know, with yeah. getting, behind, getting behind a rifle and having your knee up just so you can have that extra room to breathe. I've tried that method. It does not give you a solid recoil platform. Uh, you, the way the rifle, rifle recoils, at least for me, it jumps because you're not solid behind the damn rifle. Yeah, so I, I tried that method. I tried a lot of things. I tried slings. Slings work, but to say that using a sling versus a bi over a bipod, a slings better. That's that's, that's, yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah. I had that said. So I mean, but the thing is, is I'm not I'm not just calling BS. I'm not. I'm like, okay, well, well, shoot, maybe this guy's got a valid point. Let me go try it. Yep, and then you're like, nope, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thought so. <laughs> Damn, yeah. there's fucks on a sling. This is bull crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what always happens, usually. Because, I mean, everybody's trying to be like, oh, okay, this guy does it a little different. Maybe there's something to it. Then you try <laughs> it, and you're like, yeah, nope, there's nothing to this. Right. This guy yeah, sucks. Thing yeah, it looks like the sky pile. I'm like, okay, man. Why the hell would I spend seven hundred dollars on a bipod? This thing better work for me. I freaking hate. I, I'm in like a toxic relationship with that bipod. I freaking love it sometimes because it helps me out, and then I hate it. It literally has folded over one time, extended, and made me fall straight on my ass because it, it snagged a barricade because it extended all the way and flopped over and cost me a damn uh, a stage. So. And then, then I think to myself, why the hell did I spend seven hundred dollars on this? <laughs> so and every, it, it's funny because you, you go to these matches and like ninety percent of folks that are competing are using skypods. Um, I mean, maybe it's just I, I haven't perfected the way it works, but I sure as hell know it's damn flaws. I've experienced flaws more than more than I want to admit. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the biggest flaw that it happens to me all the time is a uh, skypod that pivots in well, I'm off and it pivots on me when I'm on a stage. So I'm here prone behind a rifle with a bipod that's sitting 90 degrees on me. 
I'm like son of a bitch. Then, uh, Small pistol for Magnum. What is this? I got small pistol for Magnum. What are these primers? These are 500 OEM small pistol. CCI. These are small pistol Magnum. And what are these? Small pistol Magnum. These are large rifle primers Magnum. Okay, I got more primers than I thought I had. This, that's ridiculous. That's a shitload of primers. Yeah. What the hell is all this? Oh, I know what that is. I'm a fucking moron. Anyways, I'm trying to put things up. Get ready for, uh... What time is it? Yeah, I'm gonna say it's getting late. I, I, gotta, I got my reloading done, so thank, thank you very much. <laughs> Ain't no problem. I I did some two twenty three. There we go. We got, even got extra cartridges on there. Little little pretty soldiers, man. Check that out. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. All of that's gonna be shot on a brand new rifle. Badass, dude. Yeah. So. Yeah. Damn, we yeah. still have four people watching. Or they fell asleep. Yeah, they that's probably what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I think uh, Pat. Yeah. You'll be surprised. Folks will come back on these uh, chats and if they pick up anything besides my bitching. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's worth it. One, if one viewer does. But, um, dude, uh, yeah, if you want to, man, we can always uh, use my channel. I think, um, I think I'm okay with uh, getting back into showing some reloading stuff. You know, I, I kind of been trying things new. Honestly, nothing has changed in my end, so uh, as much. You know, there's a couple tools that I've implemented, but my process is still about the same. We can kind of talk about that and what I'm sh what I'm showing. Um, oh yeah, dude. I know one yeah. one thing that I could say my nemesis, I guess so to say, Burkina, has gotten correct was finding jam point. Well, basically getting a bullet, jamming it into your lands, and popping it off and getting that cartridge overall length and going 20 thousandths has got, gotten me to the accuracy node more than I wanted to admit. It's, it's been, that actually has helped me out get there on the uh, bullet jump right away. What, him <laughs> just telling you to run it into the lands? Yeah, basically, basically you, you get a, a size case, you know, pull a size of case. Yeah, uh, yeah. And throw a bullet in there, put some lube in there, and then ram it into, this is what the bolt action, ram it into the lands popping really fast and then if the bullet does sometimes the bullet sticks into the land but you can see the mark on the actual bullet so you just right see the bullet to where exactly kind of where it is by eyeball and then back it off twenty thousandths. So that, that has that has gotten me to the accuracy node more often than i want to admit so it, it does work. yeah I, I do the same thing with the bonanza gauge but i drill uh a uh a uh uh, sh uh, fire form piece of brass. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I, I just. Bought, I finally bought that that Hornady uh, case overall length gauge. Yeah. Uh, I finally have that coming. I've been against that tool for the longest time, but I figured I'd give it a try to see what the difference is. As so long I, as, I, as long as you use fire formed brass, right. it's dead nuts. And if you try if you try to take a piece of brass that they sell you that is tapered and and or is uh drilled and uh tapped yeah. for the, the tool it's just like sticking a brand new piece of starline brass in there or hornady brass in there it wobbles around inside the chamber it gives you thousands of incorrect length because the right. brass does not slide in there tight. It gets in there, and when you extend the bullet into the lands, it makes that case jump sideways, and it, it'll give you three or four thousandths of uh, extra reading of length that isn't really there. Right, exactly. Yeah, so 
I got that tool really to kind of, when I started doing the video on uh, building the AR barrel on the 6th arc, I was going to show all of the different bullet jumps on all the barrels that I have. So I got that uh, the one that's bent. Yeah, so I've got that one too. Yeah, so that way I can show that, okay, here's all the barrels that I have. Here's a proof barrel, here's a Liger barrel, here's a Shaw barrel. Uh, here's a uh, friggin' uh, carbon research, or uh, yeah, another proof research here with Faxon or whatever I have. I can share it everybody. Here's a modified case that I made. Here's all the max overall length cartridges. And they're going to see that all of these barrels are putting that frickin' bullet at 2.3 something, which is 100 thousandths off mag length. So when I build the barrel and push the, the freeboard back and show that, oh shit, this thing does group, now it groups and this is the freeboard. I think that will really open up a lot of eyes because I don't think people are really kind of understanding the free bore and what free bore is. <coughs> so, I don't know. Um, I've always been against that tool because I, I always find different methods of, um, of finding overall length without buying a $50 tool. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the funny thing is they had that tool on sale on Amazon for fourteen dollars. What? If I you look, I know. Um, if you go to my my channel, okay. go to videos, and go down the videos to the near the bottom, and you look, there is a Hornady gauge with a link for fourteen dollars. <laughs> Uh, all right, I didn't even want to look at that. Mad. Oh, well, that's, that's 30 bucks. It's okay. It, you, you're probably paying more because of it right now. Yeah. Well, I, I paid $47, I think, shipped. I, God I get, damn. Yeah. And I don't get taxed on Amazon or anything. So, Brownells, all of that, all tax free. Yeah, same here. Yeah. The way to go i'm a yeah. dealer at brownells too that's awesome well they uh midway usa stopped holding my my hazmat shippings now they won't do that for me anymore they're, they're being bungholed so when i when i buy primers they're shipping it right away i'm paying hazmat on every single freaking hazmat order that i that, I, that purchase oh, okay yeah. unless unless i get everything within the first hour oh that's stupid yeah, I'm not real happy with what Midway's been doing. No, no, they, dude, they've been raping on price. I told them right away. It's like your chart. I was, dude, how much are these 41 primers right now? I looked at it. It's it, my cost without tax. I said 114 dollars for one brick. Yep, yeah, and, and you could only get one brick. The only one brick. And I'm like, you guys are ass raping without lube. Your freaking Second Amendment of clientele here. Like, you guys are taking advantage of the situation. And I know you guys got a, a crap ton of stock because I know who delivered your freaking primers. Because I, we work. I said I work for the train department, and I know what's. I know the manifest on those trains. I know what those things are going to. So, like, I know I was, I was, I was actually following a freight that I knew as, um, hazmat, and I could see the hazmat symbol for explosive, explosive. Right. And I saw where I was going, the address, and I'm like, oh, that's freaking primers and powder, man. <laughs> So, you know, look, I look at the weight. I'm like, dude, this is over 10 tons of, of explosive material going there. So I'm like, okay, wait a minute. These guys are getting a huge shipment. So I kind of get the, I kind of have the end to when they will get their shipment in and when they, when they expect it on the website. Yeah. <laughs> but come out with a price like that, I'm like, they're going to get pissed off. I'm like, it, it, but. For me, I thought I had a pretty good stockpile, and I don't. I'm, I'm running low on small rifle primers, but I could pick up a brick at least once a month. I'm happy. Yeah, it's like everybody is is just trying to get something. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm actually using it. I'm I'm actually legitimately using it to, to build rifles and shoot, you know? Yeah. The competition stuff is maybe out of that... A brick of primers is 200 primers for me. But, uh, 
So, did you you were saying you were seeing Varga? Yeah, yeah. Varga came in stock last week at Powder Valley. Um, Brown oh. Elk had it in Midway, and Powder Valley had the eight pounder jugs. Uh, do you, do you need more Varga? Yeah, I'm gonna need some. Keep an eye out. Let's see what I got. I got one eight pound jug here. I can, I can send you. Can you get replacements for yourself? Yeah, I'm not using, I'm not shooting Varget right now. Okay. I got, shooter, I got Shooter's World powder that I'm using for uh, for uh, my six GTs rifles that I built. So I'll send that over. I think I have a couple pounds of Varget in the back somewhere. Send those over. I uh, I got the hazmat um licensing for FedEx so for shipping I can ship hazmat now oh that's awesome yep. um, did that cost you a fortune uh 45 bucks in an eight hour class I think that we did on zoom which was a shit show <laughs> <laughs> we're on zoom dude freaking kids are flying around on the background of the people <laughs> zoom that work one dude forgot to get his mic in this rip. One dude, a fat huge fart. Uh, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> you can see his face, dude. It was super red when everybody stopped and was like, what was that? <laughs> 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 epic fail, dude. Zoom, Zoom meetings with, your, with Rhett with, as a class are just like, uh, just grab a popcorn and a freaking video camera, man. It's just hilarious. The thing that <laughs> Dude's wife walked in there with just a bikini on or, or just, just her top on, dude. It was freaking hilarious. He's all pissed off. <laughs> I'm like, dude, get out of your house. Go to your car. Do something to get away from your freaking family because everything's going to embarrass you right now. You're in, a, you're in a professional Zoom meeting with clientele and clients you, or people you have never seen before. <laughs> Yeah, the big, the best one, and I knew it, dude. I knew it was him. Everybody knew it was him because the dude was eating freaking Krispy Kreme the whole time. Sitting there ch chowing down on jelly donuts, dude. He, you can see where he tried to mute his mic. His mic, his, his arm went over on the mouse. You can see him click it, and then you see him go like this. It was freaking rip one. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, the, the instructor or whatever the person hosted in class was like, well, someone has a valid point. <laughs> oh, my God. So I was like, what kind of has it? <laughs> and I typed it because I'm a smart ass. So I go and I type on the chat. What kind of hazmat do you need for that licensing? <laughs> I put on a song of that nature. We have ORDM hazmat right here or something stupid. <laughs> if, if, if we had smell of vision, we'd be choking out right now or something. I, some people are talking about smell of vision. <laughs> it's just not so bad, dude. <laughs> so, I don't know how kids do it in the Zoom meeting. I really don't. Under, I don't know how that's happening or how, how that's working out. Well, yeah, well, if Jim doesn't put a live chat on, I'll, I'll put one on. Yeah, dude. If, yeah, whatever. Or I can. It doesn't matter. If you want to do it, it doesn't matter. We'll all get together and hang out. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I didn't know I was on sub for your channel. I was wondering why I couldn't. I wasn't seeing your video. You said you had a couple of videos out. Yeah. I got that. Uh, YouTube has been at their thing where they kind of like make people disappear yeah i think a lot of it what happens if you don't comment because I, I don't really comment on everybody's videos actually I yeah watch it, it's not at work i just i don't comment because uh for one i got a camera on me on my, on my work truck so i can't sit there freaking texting you know so 
I'm not even supposed right. to watch that video, but I put it right there on my little my little dash. So as I'm driving, I kind of peek down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. It, is it dangerous? Yeah, it, it's it's kind of stupid of me to do that. But hey, man, I got a four hour drive. I got to stay awake somehow. <laughs> But, uh, so, cool, so what time? What are you gonna do tomorrow? Um, I'm probably gonna do a video on probably a, uh, kind of going through the basics of how I use a scope. Like it doesn't matter if it's MOA or mill. Like spotting your impacts at long range, kind of how to use your reticle to kind of dictate what you gotta adjust on your scope to get your impact. Um, I think that might be a good video. You know, using the uh, the the tactic cam down the scope and actually try to shoot a thousand yards and purposely missing and then using the reticle to how to kind of you know compensate your your adjustment you know what you got to use for adjustment so you know my, my goal is uh more hits on steel is you know less wasted reloads you know, save the ammunition so, oh yeah I, I don't know what you think of that you know, there's there's um i noticed a lot of comments on the uh, scope scope reviews that I've done, people are, are trying to say, "Oh, you don't have your parallax adjusted." And you know, from my ex from my experience, what they're saying is, you know, I look behind this optic and the, the reticle is moving around a, a lot when I shift my IP. So I'm like, "Well, I mean, you probably have your parallax adjusted wrong." So when I go to explain how to adjust your parallax, they automatically fire back, or you're wrong. And that's not what I was told. I'm like, "Oh God." Whoa. Uh, he was told by somebody. Yeah. Well, I had a comment. No, parallax is, it helps out uh, adjust the crisp, the crispness of the image. So you're, you're so you can see crisper behind the lens. That's what parallax adjusts for. I'm like, you're 100 percent incorrect. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was like, you know what? 10 percent of that is correct, and it does sharpen the image up. <laughs> so, but everything else is incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and it's like okay then, then it becomes a shit show an argument so yeah it always does where they want to win when they don't know what they're talking about I, I people parrot I shit that. I don't understand why the community that's, that's supposedly second amendment or pro second amendment the first thing want, they want to do is fight uh, is fight. yeah they want to fight and they want to say that they're, you're wrong um or whatever and cause an and argument. I'm right. I'm yeah. right, you're wrong. Like it's there's always no, what it yeah. is. There's no professional freaking argument or things that back up facts or facts that will say, Hey, you may want to check this out. This is where you could go read about this. No one ever has the time to do that anymore. They want to be keyboard warriors and cause a fight without any freaking fuel behind it. Yep. So, that's uh, immaturity. Yeah. It, you know, I'm bread bread from yeah. inexperience with life. I, I think to myself, is, is it me because I'm young? Is it an intimidation that I, here's a 35-year-old person trying to tell you how to, how to do something on a rifle? What kind of, what kind of hair have you grown in his nutsack, right? I mean, uh, I, get it. I, I get it, dude. I, because I, I, would, I, yeah. think, I think that's some of it. But I don't think that's all of it. I think a lot of it just simply has to do with. Oh man, I didn't even tighten this. I, there it goes. I think it's it's tighter. Tighter. <laughs> I, I say the wrong things. I think people are thinking, oh, I'm very um, suggestive. Like, oh, this is what you should do. I'm like, no, I, I don't. If you, if you listen carefully, I'm not saying this is how you should do it. This is something you should try. Try for yourself. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. I'm to, I'm to, I I have definitely changed the way I speak to people. Yeah. I'm like, here's an option in my opinion. Yeah. I've stopped telling this is what you need to do because nobody likes to hear that. It seems like that. People get automatically defensive, man. I'm like, I don't know if it's this day and age and freaking COVID made everybody stupid or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> but... I'm like, dude, I, I'm, I'm on your side, bro. I'm like, why are you fighting me? I'm just trying to make you, I'm, I'm trying to say, hey, man, try this out. This is what I'm, this is, I'm getting this, this, uh, this kind of performance. I'm able to make my impact at a thousand yards within five shots. You know, 
I, this is where I came from. I came from throwing 20 rounds down range and throwing a video out there showing all my damn misses and making one and freaking being proud about it. Now here I am within five shots, within three shots, I'm, I'm or first round impacts. I'm doing first round impacts at 1,000 yards. I can say I have improved, and this is what I saw, and this is what I have done to make those improvements. So I'm like, I'm and I always try to tell folks, I'm like, I'm not here to argue with you. I'm here to share my experience and root for you, and hopefully you can get the same results. <laughs> so, and, uh, and if not, keep trying. Yeah. It's like, dude, if, if you have something to share, it's like, cool, man. If you got something else that works, dude, share about it. But don't say, oh, oh well, you're wrong because of this, and this is what I do. Or, yeah, or, well, here's, here's what I've found <laughs> about people, people like that yeah. is you've got people – who do and people who say they do right and the people who do actually accomplish things the people that say they do are good at basically bullshit stories and that's what i've noticed a lot like a lot of people are lonely in in america Okay, that's what I've come up with. <laughs> you know, and and YouTube is full of a bunch of guys and gals that have no clue what life is about or what they're supposed to be doing in life or what they want to be doing. They have no clue. <laughs> so what ends up happening is they go through and they live these lives that aren't really even theirs. They're like these made up lives. Like and 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 our friends that me and you are talking about. Yeah. When we're talking about people that aren't really rangers. True. Yeah, it's for themselves. Yes. Yeah. Th that is exactly what I'm getting at. This yeah. is where this comes from. They are yeah. so unhappy with their life that they have to make up one that doesn't suck yeah i wish that would change for them but it is what it is I, I guess what gets to me is here i am looking at the statistics like okay who views my channels and it's like 10 percent is 18 to 21 year old you know 13 percent is 31 to 45, 70% yeah, is 50 to 70, and I'm like, wait a minute, 70% of people are over their 50s, I'm getting these childish freaking comments on my videos, and everybody's like arguing, like I have to stoop down to their level to freaking talk to them like they're, like, let me get my box of crayons out, I'm like, that's what I think of myself, wait a minute, the guy behind there arguing with me is freaking arguing with me, he's probably 50 some plus years old, and talking to me like a child. So, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Wow, yeah. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> so yeah. it, just, it baffled me, man. It, because those people are are rejects. These were yeah. the kids in high school that never had friends and didn't fit in. You ever wondered what happened to those people? Well, now you're starting to figure it out. Yeah, they I found did. themselves a little group of guys that don't get along or fit in with anybody else right and it's those f class shooter guys yeah they they that. all are the same kind of guys they all are more proud that they have a patch on their jacket mm -hmm. than that they're actually out there having fun yeah huh. you know yeah, what i'm saying yeah. i don't care if my rifle is a thousand dollars or two hundred dollars when I go, I'm going to have fun if it fucking kills me. Yeah, sort of right. But I, I'm, I'm not going to stand around and compare dick lengths with these people that if we weren't standing here out at this range, I would never even talk to you because you're a moron. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I the only that. thing, yeah, the only thing that they've accomplished is a little bit of fame in shooting rifles with a bunch of old dudes. I'm like, 
I mean, I can't help but make the make the connection. It's almost a little gay in my in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. Because because when you see that the way Eric uh, Cortinez acts around all those other old guys, it's almost like who's gonna start jerking who? Well, that that's why I was laughing at my uh, my neighbor. He he went on the channel a few times commenting. Uh, um, <laughs> He, he's actually Hispanic. That's the funny part. So uh, he went on there. So, you know, every team in the USA, you know, they're consistent of 90% white folks. So everybody needs a puppet. And so he told that to Ricky Cortina. I'll, I'll die, dude. <laughs> everybody needs a mascot. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, it's the it. truth, though. It's the truth, <laughs> though. I was like, I thinking, like, he's like, look, think about it. He's like, yeah. You don't see me on a on a freaking uh, on a professional team. You don't want to know why? He's like, oh my god, this is the racist. Those are true yeah. racists out there. This is the only reason why he's on that freaking team is so they don't look like they're freaking racist. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh it, shit, he's right. I'm like, look at yeah, everybody that's on that freaking team, dude. He comes from straight southern white guys, you know. <laughs> he basically Eric Cortina is their toke is their token nigger. Yeah, it's, like, it's, like, it, it's 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 it, it, that's what that term came from. Yeah, because I mean, it's, it's a shoot. there's no doubt about it. You gotta. Have oh yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but if you, you if if that's all you did all day long was hang out with guys that shoot, chances are you're gonna be able to shoot as well. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that what you're saying isn't true. Right. Because so, those guys. You could tell when they were when he was interviewing them that they were looking at him like you're beneath me too. So why yeah. are you in my face with a camera? Yeah, get that camera away from me. Yeah. I yeah. Tell. I mean, you could tell, but that um, the sad part is, like I mentioned, it growing up with my uncle, I went to a lot of those F class matches and going through the pictures, dude. I'm not joking. I gotta share maybe an album with you guys one day. Is um, dude, I got pictures of me shaking his hand. When I was like five years old, I mean, the, the, and he was, you know, barely, I, I, don't, I don't think he was sponsored at the time. And I'm like, looking at it, and you can see the subcaption on the newspaper that had Eric Cortina. I'm like, holy shit, here I am, five years old. I freaking met that dude. You know, and here I am, you know, thinking he's a badass shooter when I was a little kid and stuff. And I'm like, you know, come to find out, and damn, man, growing up with that kind of, uh, that, that whole F5 scene, you know, I started really getting a power note on it. I did not trip him out. I think one day, one day, if I if I continue on this competition world side of it, I might bump into him on PRS or something. I'm gonna give him that picture. I'm like, hey, dude, you're my idol. Like, legitimately was my idol when I was a kid. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. And it's like, you know what? I come to think about it, I remember my uncle talking about, uh, uh, and I know it's him. He never really, he never really said his name. He said Eric, but there's a couple of Eric's on that. That whole F class is he went to Texas. He went to Texas all the time. Um, in New Mexico was another place that we went to a lot. And he talked about somebody named Eric being very arrogant, and I, I'm pretty sure that was him. <laughs> so, um, it's uh kind of funny. So, you know, maybe one day, you know, he may be cool in person, who knows? But uh, I definitely want to see what I could do with the proper rifle. Like you put one together and say, "Hey, let's go do an F class match." <coughs> but you know, make it a, a gentleman's challenge. <laughs> yeah. Oh, most uh, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I I probably don't have the skill set to keep up with some of those guys, but hey, I'll give it a good shot. I I kind of got a confidence boost that boost after shooting the one inch group at a thousand yards or near a thousand yards. So. And, uh, I could hold a five-inch group if I, if I know for like if I'm on it that day, like I know for sure. Hey man, this is the day I gotta go out shooting. I I can feel it. Like I'm just steady as a rock. I'll go out there and I'm like, dude, I can confidently say I can I can hold close to a five-inch group at a thousand yards. So. Well, that's what you're gonna have to do. Yeah, maybe one of those days lined up, and I'm like, yep, I I laid off the damn coffee this morning. I got my freaking Cheerios. It's am ready to rock and roll. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. 
the Cheerios. Yeah. Yeah, man. We'll see. We'll see what happens with Jim tomorrow if he put the chat on. And, um, yeah, we'll see. If he if he doesn't, me and you hook up and we'll figure something out. Tell yeah, him we'll do it for him. Uh, I have an idea how to make it kind of a cool live chat, not just me out there shooting, but I put up um, a game. I'll figure like a let's play like a Jeopardy game at a thousand yards. I got a big ass poster board I can put up and put a camera down there. Ah. That might be pretty cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Start doing a couple giveaways. I got t-shirts and stuff I can give out. Yeah, that's I why I gotta start giving away some oil and stuff like that too. Right. I got slip two thousand. I've got what else do I have? I got some other shit too. Yeah. What did I do? I got, that's uh, my. Yeah. I got a, I got a few of those LRI send, or LRA sending units. Those are pretty pricey. Give those away. LR8 sending units. The LRA, the, the long range arm, it's the uh, digital, le laser, or digital level. Bubble level. Oh. Uh, all the fancy stancies. Oh, dude, yeah. Fancy, bro. Give it up. There it is on this rifle. Ah. It's another one. A little box right here. Oh, uh, okay. Turn it on. Okay. Right. You make it really bright. So, as you can't your rifle, the blue, green, red. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I got a hold. level. I got yeah, a bubble hold. level. And if you superimpose, if you shoot with both eyes open, that puts it right underneath the reticle how I have it. So it, it's pretty cool. So you, you don't even, you know it's there and you can see it just underneath the reticle. That's cool. The, the LRI, LRA Senate unit, this one's the one that mounts vertically. You have some that mounts uh, horizontal, but that's that's how you want it. You want it pretty flush on your, uh, on the scope and everything. So, and uh, here's that, here's a spur mount that I want. You can see the spur mount that I have now. Oh, yeah. So here's a, Five hundred dollar scope mount. That's on a Jesus on a, Christ, dude. Yeah, five hundred dollar scope mount on a four hundred dollar rifle. <laughs> so, but five hundred dollar scope mount on a three hundred. Yeah, here it is. Yep, that's that's the rifle that uh, I had the cheapest rifle out there, dude. No one else had a Savage. Everybody else had a custom freaking action. I was the only one out there with this cheap ass rifle. And everybody. Everybody's like, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, I can tell the eyeballs that I got. Dude. They're like, dude, there's no way you're shooting. And they're like, what are you shooting? Six arc? What the hell? That doesn't have enough gas. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't have enough gas. I'd be like, yeah, but that's why I brought Eric here. The fat boy. He's yeah. got all the gas. <laughs> Well, it's funny because there's, there's a lot of Dasher shooters out there. I was like, what are you running? Like a Dasher. I'm like, what are you running? A 105? Oh, so you're like, uh, what, 2,940 feet a second? They're like, yeah. So then on zero day, they're, they're seeing me bust out almost 3,000 feet a second. They're like, how's your, what are you shooting? Six art? Yeah. There's no way you're getting close to 3,000 feet a second. I'm like, yeah, I'm getting close to 3,000 feet a second. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, Dude, they're all just baffled. They're just like, well, how many grains? I'm like, 30 grains. They're like, there's no way. You're five grains under a, under a dasher. I'm like, yeah, I know. You guys are running a different powder. <laughs> so. And it's not as, uh, it, it's not, doesn't, it, it burns slow, it faster than mine. Yeah. So, it's, uh, and then, I, then I go to explain what the 6 arc is and all that. And I'm like, dude, I can run this thing on a progressive press and get SDs of four or five. But it, it, it's easy cartridge to load for. The powder sucks. Lever Evolution powder and CFD is the worst fucking powder you can use for cleaning a barrel. It is, it sits up it sits up your barrel like it's nothing. I mean, you carbon file your barrel like it's crazy. But it works good. Yeah. Sometimes you got to put up with the dirty bitches. <laughs> right. And, um, it's the only ball powder that I've had luck with. 
in this cartridge. Or the only ballpark I've had luck with in luck with in a cartridge. Ever. Like, so, ever. Ever. Besides like besides three hundred blackout. But like, I'm talking about like a precision long range cartridge. But, uh, yeah, well, we'll get some sleep, man, and, uh, we'll, uh, see what's up for tomorrow. Yeah, dude. Sounds like a plan. Well, I'm just looking chat. for what? A great chat for sure. Oh, yeah, dude. Had a blast. Yeah. I guess we can go ahead and end it. Yep. <laughs> we, we had, uh,